The story begins with a story about the main character named Sam, who is a professional in computer games and completes any game at the maximum level. His favorite game is Love in 10,000 Worlds, where you have to charm all sorts of girls in different time periods. You can get the location of a girl in different ways, both by physical conquest and by blackmail. Sam has already got the 100 hottest girls in the game, which no other player has been able to do before him. Our hero manages to seduce even the toughest and most belligerent girls, and he considers himself a professional in this matter. Winning over girls is so easy for him that he secretly makes a wish to get into his favorite video game. And then the light flashed in the room. The computer monitor began to make terrible sounds, and it seemed that it would now be pulled right into the computer. The wind in the room increased and had already turned into a hurricane emanating from the center of the monitor. With all his might, the protagonist began to drag right into the screen. And despite the fact that the guy was much wider than the screen, surprisingly, he did not feel pain. There was a loud bang and silence fell in the room, as if a few seconds ago, a person had not been sucked into a computer screen. Sam was falling down. It seemed that he was about to vomit. All the organs were compressed, and the feeling that he was about to break did not leave him. The hero landed softly and immediately sat down. There was no more pain and fear. The place in which he was reminiscent of the character creation screen in his favorite game, Love in 10,000 Worlds. He saw a girl in a short white dress that barely covered her underwear. He recognized her as a fairy of 10,000 worlds. Sam began to ask the girl very emotionally how he could get out of here and whether it was possible to withdraw his desire and get home right now. The girl answered the hero that he himself knows everything very well. He just needs to do what he was best at in the online game. The girl also said that the old game account of our hero no longer exists and he will have to go through everything again with a zero level of skills. The hero was very angry and promised that as soon as he got out of here, he would immediately sue the developers of this game. The girl replied that after signing the license agreement, his life was in the hands of the game developers. The hero asked if he was supposed to have some kind of ability so that he could complete the game faster. Of course, the creator has prepared for you five abilities that correspond to the five attributes in the game. Talent helps you get more abilities to become the strongest. Vicissitude allows you to use shadow abilities and become invisible. Physical strength makes it possible to pump the body. Intelligence contributes to the development of all kinds of spells, with which you can destroy the world with one gesture. Sam asked what the use of charisma could be. The fairy replied that charisma makes him more attractive. He thought that this was not a very good joke and did not want to choose charisma with other options. The hero was about to click on the intellect, when suddenly something pushed him from behind and he did not see where he clicked. Sam opened his eyes and was horrified. He accidentally chose the most, in his opinion, useless skill. He began to swear loudly and shout that he was set up and he was not going to choose this skill. The fairy said that nothing can be changed and you just need to start the game. The girl disappeared. A bright whirlwind spun under the hero's feet, which began to drag him into the beginning of the game. The action is transferred to the first game location, created on the basis of the city of Yunzhou, very picturesque and atmospheric. Before us in all its glory appears the sorceress of the snow shadow named Ciri, a student of the great master who kills evil spirits and protects the peace of the city. The sorceress walked through the marketplace and looked after herself jewelry. Suddenly, a bright beam appeared in the sky, which struck directly into one of the towers where the baths were located. The sorceress saw how the beam broke through the roof of the tower, and something large, the size of a man, flew along this beam. The main character opened his eyes and did not immediately understand where he was. His head was spinning, his arms and legs did not want to obey. The hero heard women's screams around him, looked around and realized that he was in the women's side of the hot springs. Looking at the suddenly appeared gentleman, the girls began to behave very liberated. They called him to swim together without clothes. The hero was not ready for such a rapid development of events, and with all his might, began to run away from the place where the girls were about to attack him in order to drag him to take a bath with them. The palace guards also chased after the hero, since the appearance of men in the women's bath is strictly prohibited by the law of this kingdom. The hero ran away and they shouted after him that he was a pervert and would certainly be punished. Although the girls called the hero a pervert, they did it with admiration and adoration in their voice. They considered him very attractive. The guards continued their search for the unknown pervert. Sam was very angry at the situation that had happened, which he could not influence in any way. The guard noticed the hero, but he decided to open the skill log and saw that he only had an evil smile of defense in his attributes. Sam was angry at what a useless skill he got, 
There is nothing to do. You have to use this skill and come what may. Clumsily, he began to apply this skill. The first time was not entirely successful. After one of the guards saw the smile of protection, he was even more convinced that the main character was a pervert. Sam was just furious. He knew that he needed to try again, because that grimace, which he distorted, was not evil. He began to try again the evil smile of defense skill. And then an incredible thing happened. The guard stopped, became confused, and after a moment he beamed and said to himself that he had fallen in love with a man for the first time. The guard with a smile on his face said that it was love at first sight. Sam picked up a brick from the ground and slammed it into the guard's face. While the guard was falling, the main character told him that he loves girls and is not going to reciprocate the man who a few minutes ago wanted to bring him to execution. Our charismatic hero was put on the wanted list after the attack on the guard. Now he was threatened by even more guards. They opened fire to kill, launched several dozen arrows at the criminal. The hero tried to dodge. It was difficult. One arrow grazed his shoulder, and he saw blood splatter across the ground. Sam realizes that he will not be able to defeat the guards with any skills, and there is only one way out. Run wherever your eyes look, as far as possible. But then by chance, Sam stumbles upon a brothel. He tries to run inside as soon as possible and literally stumbles upon a girl. But the blow did not happen. Something softened the collision. The girl was very surprised at such a swift and unexpected meeting. The hero, not having time to catch his breath, asked the girl if she could help him. The girl, without listening to the end of the request of the visitor, said that for the sake of such a handsome man, she was ready for anything. She turned around and shouted to someone, Girls, meet the guests! The hero saw how four girls of incredible beauty came into the hall in outfits that aroused a desire to get to know them better. By the time the guards ran into the house, the girls surrounded the hero and covered him with themselves. When asked where the criminal was, the main girl replied that there was no stranger here. The commander of the guards did not believe the girl and ordered to search the house to find the hiding criminal. However, the girl said that if he dared to invade her house, she would report the situation to their commander-in-chief, who is a frequent visitor to this establishment. The owner of the business appears and says that there is no need to embarrass the guards because they are doing their job. She allows the guards to search the house and says that they have nothing to hide because they are not doing anything forbidden. At this moment, Sam is under the mistress's long dress. Four beauties took him away while the first eldest distracted the guards. The hero smells the mistress's body. It turns him on very much. After half an hour of searching, the guards returned with a report. The hostess stood motionless in the same place. The head of the guard asked the hostess for forgiveness for the inconvenience caused. The hostess said that they could stay at their establishment as it would soon be opening time, but the guards refused. Sam, who had been on his knees for more than half an hour, was already barely holding on, and in order not to fall, he grabbed the mistress's smooth, tender leg. This was very unexpected, and the hostess cried out. The head of the guard began to suspect something and peered intently into the attire of the hostess of the salon. But fortunately, someone managed to tell the wife of the head of the guard the information that he had been in the brothel for more than half an hour. Her vicious appearance frightened not only the commander of the detachment. The guard's wife, with a deft, sharp movement of her hand, grabbing him by the ear, dragged him home. The hostess breathed a sigh of relief. Everything turned out as she planned. Sam no longer had strength left, his muscles numb. He could not stand in such an uncomfortable position. He began to fall holding onto the legs of the owner of the salon, and they fell together. When they fell, the hero's neck was stuck between the legs of the hostess, and she strangled him. Sam lost consciousness. The girls working in the salon were very scared. The hostess saw that he was wounded and blood was flowing from his shoulder. The hero lay motionless. Drops of sweat were flowing from his forehead. Someone began to call for a doctor. The hostess did not lose her head and tore her dress in order to be able to bandage the wound. After a while, we are transferred to the room where the hero lies with a bandaged shoulder, and above him are three charming girls in vulgar robes who looked after him while he was unconscious. The hostess of the salon enters the room. She has medicinal herbs in her hands, and she is wearing the same dress. If she tore the dress a little higher, then one could see her underwear. The girls are discussing how to give the hero medicinal herbs. One of them offers to give medicine from mouth to mouth. The girls are arguing about who is best suited for this role. The mistress of the brothel enters the game and says that she herself is able to help the victim. The girls leave the room in disappointment and leave the hostess alone with the wounded guy. The hostess drinks medicine from a spoon. Look at the guy with loving eyes. And with the help of a kiss, he gives the medicine to the patient. The hero immediately woke up and quickly found himself on top of the girl without opening his lips in a kiss. 
The hero dreams that he is in the forest, and two slugs attack him and fall on his face. He doesn't understand why he can't tear them away from his face. It turned out that he was imagining it, and he rested his face on the mistress's chest. In delirium, he began to shout loudly that he would kill these slugs. The scream was so loud that all the brothel workers heard it. The hostess was discouraged by this behavior of a stranger and thought that he was really a pervert. The hero received a slap in the face for his behavior. Since Sam came to his senses, he was invited to a tea party. He thanked the girls for their help and apologized for his behavior. The girls offered him several options for the development of events, or he remains in the salon and works for them, or they give him to the palace guards and say that in addition to past crimes, he committed new ones in their salon. The hero has no choice but to pretend that he agrees to their terms. Sam asks what he will need to do to work off the debt for saving him. He thought that he would have to fulfill the love whims of the girls from the salon. However, he was forced to clean up the entire salon. He certainly did not count on such difficult physical work. But everything turned out not so bad. Almost every girl in the salon head was to help the hero. They promised to do the job for him in exchange for him spending the night with them. Each girl considered it her duty to be the first to get Sam's location. The competition for the hero's heart was just beginning. The hero understood that if he charmed as many girls as possible, he could gain more experience points and advance to the next level. Night fell. The hero was in the room provided to him. He was finally able to test his gaming experience and was pleasantly surprised that he managed to score an additional thousand points during this time, which he can exchange for new skills. Sam saw that it was possible to purchase the Book of a Thousand Wishes, which gives the opportunity to multiply experience points if the hero had an intimate relationship with a girl. But there was one big problem. This skill costs a hundred thousand points. The fairy who accompanied Sam to the game decided to help him because she watched how many difficult trials he had to go through. She made an exception and gave him a 99% discount on skill acquisition for 10 minutes. The hero was extremely happy with such a bonus and decided to use it for sure. When buying a skill, the hero rose into the air. He was enveloped in purple swirls. He felt a strong breath of wind. Sam glowed both inside and out and felt an incredible surge of energy. The next morning, leaving the room, he began to stumble upon the insanely languid glances of the girls. They literally undressed him with their eyes. The hero heard the girls say that he became even more attractive than he was yesterday. At this time, there was a visitor in the salon named Stone, who got angry that all the girls stopped paying attention to him and watched the main character. Sam, feeling a clear superiority over the man, answered him with a smirk that there was no one more dazzling than this man in the room. Stone from such a tone became even more angry and threatened him. The man grabbed the hilt of his sword and asked Sam if he knew who he was talking to. At the same second, the mistress of the salon intervened in the quarrel and asked for forgiveness before the master for the new worker. The master realized that the hostess would now be able to make concessions to him and do what he asked, if it did not humiliate her dignity, and then he offered her a glass of wine as a sign of reconciliation. But he thought everything through in advance and in a flurry poured a hot heart powder into a glass of wine, from which any girl wakes up a desire for intimacy. Mistress, suspecting nothing, drank a glass of wine. Stone asked how much it would cost him to spend the night with the owner of the salon because he was madly in love with her. The mistress replied that she did not sell her body and that he would no longer dare to ask her such questions. But the man already knew that the powder would have to work very soon and she would have no choice. After 15 minutes in her bedroom, the lady already felt the heat spreading throughout her body. From the heat, she began to take off her clothes. At that moment, Sam decided to come in with an apology to the mistress for his behavior. The hero from the entrance began to thank the hostess, but then he saw her and his pupils widened. The hostess was only in her underwear, and the hero saw her elastic forms. That hour, the hero ran out of the room at the speed of light, shouting that he had not had time to consider anything. But after a few seconds, a gentle, fragile hand pulled him back into the room. The girl put him on a soft bed, and she bent over him so that her hand was between his knees. She asked him for help. The hero was scared. The girl said that in a glass of wine there was a powder that enhances attraction and desire, and now she cannot think of anything else. She began to untie her bra and threw it on the hero's face. Three times we had to help our hero, the lady, until she felt better and returned to normal. Meanwhile, Stone decided to go to the mistress's room, but the wrong door. As soon as he entered, the door slammed shut and he thought his plan had worked. He saw the sweet lips of the girl at the entrance, but did not expect that this was not the right room. He was greeted by a girl, but she was a little more than he expected. Stone did not expect to meet a girl of this size. He tried to run out of the room. However, he could not open the door to leave. Plaster began to fall from the ceiling. 
The girls working on the floor below couldn't understand what was going on. One of the girls began to guess what caused a small collapse of the ceiling. Loud and rhythmic moans came from the mistress's room. For a long time, the inhabitants of the salon had to listen to these sounds. There was blood on the bed. Sam quickly dressed and tried to run out of the room. He still could not recover. He did not believe that he had succeeded. The hostess said that he should not be nervous because nothing terrible happened. Sam told the landlady that he didn't expect the girl who worked at the brothel to be with a man. The girl on emotions launched a pillow at the hero and began to swear at him. The hero ran away, and the girl looked after him. She did not understand her feelings. Just a few minutes ago, she experienced incredible emotions, and now she felt empty and used. Sam went out onto the balcony of the floor and was surprised how real everything was, and that it hadn't been like a game for a long time. He saw Stone running away and asked what happened to him. The man looked very bad and whispered to himself that he would never forget such a shame. The girls of the salon shied away from him. They thought that he was sick. The hero yelled at the exhausted stone that his plan hadn't worked. While the gentleman with the last of his strength ran through the cabin to the exit, Sam thought that thanks to the man, he had advanced as quickly as possible to the next level. It was a great opportunity to practice the techniques. Now our hero was at the next level where he had a technique. It's called the charm of living beings, and judging by the picture, it is activated with a snap of the fingers. It seems to be clear, but you need to check. And here is the first test subject, come here cat. Fascination of living beings. As expected, it worked perfectly, I will use it. Sam in his head already began to think over new plans for the charm. He went to the marketplace to buy a present for the girl he would need to get his hands on. She was on the square, the same student of the great master Siri. An incredibly beautiful girl in white, whom he saw as soon as he entered this world. The girl asked the seller about the cost of various jewellery, and he promised her a discount for beauty. Siri thought the discount was a very good option. She pointed to the hairpin she wanted to buy. The hero appears and asks the seller how much such a hairpin costs. The seller said that this is a very valuable piece of jewellery because it is made of ice stone and the finest jade which is so rare in this area. Very skillful and expensive work. And she is definitely real, asked our hero. How dare you say that I deceive people? I would really like to believe you, but I think I'm right. The hairpin burst in the hands of the hero. The girl was interested, and the hero said that she needed to be more responsible in choosing jewellery and shops. How dare you try to deceive me, I will not tolerate this attitude. The owner of the jewellery store was very angry with the guy, because he broke the goods and exposed him as a deceiver in front of the student of the great master. The store owner called two guards to deal with the hero and teach him good manners. The sorceress of the snow shadow decided to deal with the ambles herself and was already preparing for battle. But the hero stopped her, he needed to show himself. He said that he was able to deal with these unfriendly guys himself. A third guy came up. He introduced himself as an older brother, said that this battle would not be as easy as he thinks. We are professional fighters who graduated from the martial arts academy. Everyone wanted to show a cool fighting stance. They were confident in their abilities and fighting techniques. Their appearance was supposed to frighten the enemy. The sorceress told the hero that despite the fact that they looked like three pumped clowns, they should still be feared. Don't worry about me. I can handle it. Stay away and don't interfere. How manly and handsome he is, Siri thought. Enough boasting, it's time to move on to the fight. Catch my fist of death. The hero dodged, hit directly in the stomach with the seduction skill of the essence. The older brother caught his breath, his pupils dilated, his pulse quickened. The fighter lay on the ground and said to himself how pleasant and easy it was for him, and his brothers were in a state of incomprehension. What kind of spell did you put on him, evil sorcerer? The brothers asked. If you continue the battle, then the same will happen to you, the hero replied. But they did not believe him, and after a few seconds they were in the same love euphoria as their older brother. They could no longer continue the battle. The spell of love was stronger than the muscle. After a moment, the people in the marketplace tried not to get close to the muscular guys. Siri remarked that she had never come across such a strange yet effective fighting technique before. The hero said something unintelligible and changed the topic. He asked the name of the beautiful girl. The sorceress called herself a student of the great master. Sam said that it was an honor for him to meet her. Siri said that soon there will be a selection of students to prepare for participation in the tournament for the title of the best magician, and he could take part in it. Suddenly, a gentleman from an intimate services salon intervened in the conversation and turned to Siri. He called her sister and said that he had been looking for her for a long time. Most likely they had a strained relationship because Siri replied that she should not report where she was. Sam decided to take advantage of the fact that the relationship between the sorceress and her brother is not the best 
and added fuel to the fire by asking him if he had been in a brothel for a long time. When Siri heard that her brother was going to the brothels, she was a little surprised, or rather, furious. Stone called the hero a mean dog and asked his sister not to believe a single word of his. Sam replied that at first they had fun together in a brothel with girls, and now he calls him a dog. Stone realized that he could not win the verbal fight and could only justify himself to his sister. He promised to take revenge on Sam, but the hero grinned and said that he would certainly wait for the hour of reckoning. They parted in different directions, the blonde sorceress was also not visible, and the hero went to the salon. Today he has a day off. Night fell, the full moon brightly illuminating Rose Street, where the sex parlor was located. The hostess of the salon was standing at the mirror in her room. She was wearing a new bright red dress. Its cut, which reached the waist, said that she did not have underwear. She looked at herself in the mirror and could not understand what was happening to her. For several days, her thoughts were only about the hero. Sam met the hostess and decided to make amends. As a gift, he presented her with a gold hairpin stolen in the market from a fraudulent seller. The girl could not believe her eyes and ears. Our hero expressed his understanding that this gift was very useless, but he wanted to please her and make amends. I like your gift, the girl said with warmth in her voice. Warmth spread like a wave through her body. To be honest, I'm very glad that I could please you, the hero said while Sam was talking. The girl dropped her handkerchief on purpose. Oh, don't worry. I'll help you pick up your handkerchief. The hero bent down at the feet of the hostess to pick up the fallen red handkerchief. He did not have time to sit down. As the girl stretched her slender long legs to the hero's chin, he smelled her skin. This could not leave him indifferent. The hero looked up and saw that the girl had no underwear at all. The smell of her body excited the mind of the guy. He could no longer control himself. But the hero continued his game and said that if she wanted to spend the night with him, then it would cost her dearly. The girl said that she was able to pay any amount for the time with such a gorgeous man. The hero sharply pressed the girl to him. With his right hand, he held her by the waist. With his left, he grabbed her by the neck and kissed her tightly. The girl melted into the arms of the hero. She felt her heart want to jump out of her chest. Sweat came out on her forehead. Her lips were very wet. The hero took off the dress from the girl and laid her on her back. Nothing else restrained the hero. In the languid moans of the girl, there was no longer a business-like and strict tone. She was at the mercy of the guy, and she liked it. The next day came. The hero woke up and did not see anyone nearby. There was a note on the table next to the bed. In the note, the girl said goodbye to the hero and asked him to remember her because she would never forget this best time in her life. The notification system reported that the character's game card was received and added to the achievement section. The hero was happy with the unlocked achievement, but he felt somehow sad. He decided to leave the salon and go on his way. The caretaker found out that the hero wanted to leave the salon and expressed her regret. The hero thanked the girl for her hospitality and help. The girl said that she could not forbid him to leave the salon, but she would not let him go so easily. At the same moment, three more girls ran into the room and began to hug the hero and take off his clothes. The hero has not yet recovered from nightly entertainment with the hostess, so he decided to use improvised means. Groans from the cabin were heard throughout the district for an hour. The hero got a new experience, including the gaming one. The girls were still a little overwhelmed by cramps in the hip area. They lay exhausted. Sam left the room satisfied. He went out into the city and again stumbled upon the brother and sister he already knew. Stone followed his sister, a student of the Great Master, and asked her to go with him to the clan and help prepare for the initiation ceremony of a new generation of students. The girl said that she still had business in the city, and there was no need for her to rush to the clan right now. To make the meeting seem more natural, he made a surprised face when the sorceress looked in his direction. The hero told the girl that he was just looking for her and was very glad to see her. She asked how she could help him. Sam asked her to take him to the clan in order to meet the teacher and start training. Great, Siri noticed. We were just about to form a clan. The girl's brother was confused because she had just said that she was not going to the clan. The man told the hero that he could not get into their clan because this would require flying through the air and only members of the clan have this ability. The girl noticed that it was absolutely not scary and she would help the hero get there. The man shouted something after the departing hero and his sister, but no one listened to him. The girl told the hero to hold on tight to her when they get to the clan's location. Sam replied that if she let him touch her body, then he would not let him go again. They swept with the speed of the wind over the rocks and plains. On their tail hung the girl's brother. They moved at extreme speed, and the girl told the hero to hug her tighter. 
Or maybe she deliberately developed such a speed to make the hero hug her as hard as possible. The hero grabbed her just below the waist. He breathed in the scent of her developing hair, felt her body trembling. Sam decided to say how pleased he was that the girl decided to help him. She was confused. The girl's brother really didn't like watching his sister being hugged by a stranger. The hero understood this and decided to anger the man even more. Stone was furious and decided to root out the problem. I got a box of paralyzing needles. Aimed right at the hero's back. And he released a dozen charged needles to the hero who did not expect anything. The girl heard the sound of needles flying in her direction. She abruptly turned 180 degrees and covered the protagonist with her chest. At that very moment, she was paralyzed. Sweat came down her face. A quiet why, brother, flew from her lips. The man himself did not expect that such a situation could happen. The girl and Sam were in free fall. The hero could not fly. Stone made no attempt to save his sister. He only thought about how he could justify himself to the foreman of the clan. He considered that even if he saved his sister, she would tell everything to the master, and he would not forgive him. And if no one finds out about his act, then he can live in peace. With these thoughts, the man went further across the sky. The girl was drowning. She could not move. The needles immobilized her with poison. She mentally said goodbye to this world, but suddenly... The main character swam up to her, who managed to draw full lungs of air and through a kiss was able to share it with the girl. Siri opened her eyes and regained consciousness. The saber of the sorceress was approaching them, but it flew right into the hand of Sam. Did he also have the abilities of their clan? In that case, I can save us and deliver us to the clan's location. The hero raised his saber up and mentally gave the order to fly. At that moment, there was a splash in the water. The hero held the girl in one hand and the other directed the saber up. They flew at high speed. They could not fly for a long time. The girl needed a rest. She still felt bad. Having settled down in the shade of trees, the guy and the girl considered that the danger had passed. They did not expect that in a moment they would have to face a new enemy. There were a little more enemies than the hero expected. The notification system sent a message about the enemy. It was a bloodthirsty wolf, a second level enemy. There is no choice, you have to fight, because not only the guy's life is at stake, but also his companions. The enemy was not going to give time to think, attacked at the first opportunity. Sam decided to use the points he received to acquire battle skills. A second, and only the skin remained of the bloodthirsty wolf. The hero saw how experience points were credited to his balance for the destruction of the wolf. With the professional movements of a swordsman, the hero scattered the bloodthirsty wolves from side to side, leaving them no chance to profit from the flesh of his companion. The hero swung his blade right and left and the enemies kept coming. He felt tired in his hands. The situation became more complicated. They had to think of something, otherwise they would not get out of the forest. The hero wanted to take the girl and step back, run away. But something huge, of unimaginable size, blocked their way. The animal made a roar that resounded throughout the forest. A huge animal that looked like a grizzly bear with bright red wild eyes, a sharp blade on the skull, stood up on its hind legs and roared with all its might. It was a demon of the forest, a level four enemy animal. How all this is not on time, the hero thought. I urgently need to think of something. The animal lunged at Sam with a wild roar. He applied the art of seduction, but did not know if it would work. Damn, didn't it really work and now death will overtake me. The animal held Sam with its huge paws. A second later, a huge bear, like a friendly dog, licked the hero and wagged his tail. A dozen wolves did not share the mood of the bear and continued to show with all their appearance that the hero was their prey. The bear cub obviously did not like the fact that they wanted to eat his new friend. A blow and part of the wolves flew 200 meters away. A blow and the second part of the evil creatures flew far from the place where Sam was. Those who could still stand on their paws wanted to return to the fight. But the bear let out a roar of such force that they tucked their tails and rushed into the forest with all their might. Night fell. The moon illuminated the rock where the hero and his friends settled down. There was a crackling fire in the cave. The hero thanked the bear for saving his life and providing a place to spend the night. But it was a bear. She did not speak. But with all her strength, she hugged the guy and began to rub her muzzle against him. The hero approached the exhausted companion and said that they should try to remove toxins from her body. It is necessary to remove outer clothing to find the places where the needles hit. The place of the wound was found. The game hit the girl right in the shoulder. The hero began to suck the poison out of the wound. The girl felt good. The poison is very strong, spitting, said the guy. You cannot stop. Otherwise, the poison will continue to spread through the body and lead to death. The hero sucked out the poison, but he saw the girl delirious. She groaned and said incomprehensible phrases. Keep going, don't stop, I feel so good. 
Morning came, the rays of the sun illuminated the cave in which Ciri slept. She woke up, she was cold, she was weak. She looked around and saw that she had no clothes on, and there were drops of blood nearby. She thought that while she was unconscious, Sam had taken advantage of her. Meanwhile, the hero returned to the cave. In his hands, he had forest berries. The girl attacked him with a blade. A tray of berries fell on the ground. The girl said that she would kill him as he took advantage of her helpless state. The hero began to make excuses and say that he did not touch her, but only tried to save her life. The girl aimed the blade at the guy's throat, but the blade resisted. The girl turned to the blade and asked why he was resisting. Was the guy really telling the truth? The hero choked with fear and splashes of red liquid flew out of his mouth. What's wrong with you? The girl asked. The hero replied that while he was sucking the poison out of her wound, he got poisoned as he did it for the first time, and now he is mortally ill. In fact, the hero deceived the girl, and it was not blood, but the juice of red berries, which he did not have time to chew. The girl said that she remembers how the needles flew into her, but also one needle hit him, why he was not hit by poison. Sam said that his friend gave him a jade maple leaf pendant, and the needle went straight into it. Siri thanked the hero and said that she could teach him her clan's technique, which rids the body of toxins. I'm not a member of your clan, the hero remarked. I don't want to steal your secrets. You saved my life and therefore I will repay you by revealing a few secrets, especially after what you did. The head of the clan will agree to take you as his disciple. Thank you very much, ma'am. I won't forget it. It's time to start training. Call me a mentor, Siri said. Sam was glad that his plan had worked for years. Meanwhile, in the cloud-hidden clan, the head of the clan was furious when I heard that his best student had died and Stone could not help her. Stone began to tell how, on the way to the clan, they were attacked by an unknown robber and wanted to steal the secrets of the clan tried to take Ciri's blade away, Stone managed to repulse the attack, but at the last moment the robber dragged his sister underwater. The head of the clan at the same moment called all the wizard fighters and sent in search of his daughter, said not to return without her, alive or dead. The fighters promised to follow the teacher's order and hit the road. Stone asked to be sent in search of the girl and him. Since he understood that the truth could be revealed, he needed to play it safe. I believe you, the teacher said. Go in search of Ciri, you will succeed. Stone was already thinking about how to make sure that the girl was never found. Stone's father, who was the brother of the head of the clan, brought an elixir for the girl in case she was found badly injured. Be sure to give the elixir to the princess to drink. He can save her life. The man left the temple and went on his way. Head, you must stay sane. Stay cool. I understand your concern, but the clan is counting on you. I can't think of anything until I know if my daughter is still alive. Meanwhile, the main character is fishing on the shore of a pond. He does not go out to catch fish. But he does not leave this occupation, because he needs to feed the mentor and the bear. What a pity that I cannot use my charm on fishing. It seems he was wrong, and charisma works for everyone. Almost a hundred fish rushed out of the water to the hero. He did not expect that he could charm even a fish. In a moment, several dozen fish were already lying on the shore. The hero thought that the charisma skill was not so bad as it turned out. You can even get food with it. Sam turned around as he heard the sound of a cut in the air. Men in white cloaks flew across the sky. They flew on swords. The hero immediately understood what clan they were from. So they're looking for Ciri. Very interesting. The hero hurried to the cave to tell about what he saw. At this time, the girl meditated. The chakra thickened around her. The body was cleansed of poison. Quick footsteps echoed through the cave. Finally, you're back. I'm hungry, said the girl. But not the one she expected to see entered the cave. Hello, sister. I see you didn't waste any time, Stone noticed. Siri told her brother that she would report to the head of the clan that he attacked her. I don't know how you survived, but I'll fix it now, sister. You left me no choice. The princess informed her brother that if he dared to attack her, then there would be no way back for him. How dare you, mean girl? Say that to me. The great warrior of light, I will destroy you. The man drank the pill he received in the palace. Now his regeneration power was at its maximum. The medicine also enhanced his magical characteristics. The chakra was burning all around. The girl was frightened. She had never seen the power of the experimental pills that were made in their secret laboratory. So know the strength of the warrior clan of the village hidden in the clouds. The energy emanating from the man seemed to destroy the cave. The princess understood that in her current state, she was no match for stone, full of strength and drinking a pill. The man opened his mouth to say the spell technique when suddenly, got hit in the face by a huge fish. Sam greeted stone and asked if he had hit him hard in the face with a fish. The hero knew that the princess was weak and he would have to cope on his own. The girl warned the hero that her brother had arrived to take both of their lives. Stone said it was great to have a hero here, 
and not have to look for him later to finish what he started. The hero had to borrow a sword to face such a strong opponent. The fight began. The opponents began to quickly approach. The crackle of swords echoed through the cave. No one was going to retreat. The hero managed to dodge, strike back, and injure the man's face. Stone noticed that although Sam is a very good fighter, they are at different levels of combat training. Lightning blade technique. The hero tried to hold back the blow, but it was all in vain. The blast wave threw him back with incredible force. The hero stood on all fours and tried to catch his breath. The man grabbed him by the collar and lifted him into the air with a slight movement and said that no one would stop him from gaining power and becoming one of the leaders of the clan. The hero took his bearings in time and decided to act as best he could. Charisma technique. Seduction. The hero looked at the man. He was motionless. Emptiness was red in his eyes for a split second. The man stood and looked up at the hero with loving eyes. The hero realized that he needed to act right now and summoned the sword, which was already flying at the speed of sound. Blow! Another blow! Stone's torn arm was flying through the air with his sword in slow motion. The hero firmly held the sword in his hands, and behind him, blood was flying from the man's shoulder in all directions. The man shouted something loudly, but the hero did not listen to him anymore. Perhaps Stone would have managed to escape from the cave, if not for one thing. At the exit, they were already waiting for him. He hit his head on something soft. It was a kind for someone not very new girlfriend of our hero. He screamed with all his strength until he lost consciousness. At the direction of the hero, the bear spared the villain. A few hours later, the heroes were able to reach the clan hidden in the clouds. The girl told her father what had happened, how an unscrupulous brother used a hidden poison weapon against her, and how her friend had to save her and risk his life. The head of the clan said that for such an act, any member of the clan would have been overtaken by the death penalty, however. For past merits and due to injury, the offender would be under house arrest and would also be deprived of all titles and ranks. The criminal, who had lost honor and respect, was taken away by his father from the room of the head of the clan. The head of the clan said that he would generously reward the hero for saving his daughter and asked what he wanted. Sam replied that he simply wanted to become a student of the head of the clan and be useful. The head replied that he would be happy to take on a young man with such a good heart, but as a general rule, he would have to pass the test. The girl began to ask her father to allow him not to pass the test and immediately enroll in the ranks of students. However, the hero said that he respects the principles and rules of the clan, but wants to pass the test and join the clan officially. The clan leader was very pleased with the young man's response and praised his aspiration and warm heart. In the meantime, the girl decided to arrange a tour of the clan's possessions for the hero. She showed him the very heart of the clan, a magical tree that gives energy to all living things. The girl said that there was no time to admire and that she needed to undress as quickly as possible. The hero did not understand what she was talking about. He asked if it was too early for her to offer him to undress because they had not yet met properly. The girl became very angry with the hero and said that she brought him here in order to practice the six sun snow melting technique. The technique of melting snow develops the maximum concentration of energy for the subsequent use of any technique, including combat. Mastering this technique is impossible without a mentor so the princess was always there. The hero successfully reached the third level in this technique thanks to the help of the princess. She watched how strong his power and chakra became. The hero incredibly quickly reached almost four of the fourth level of technology. However, this was the first training and the body could not perceive such strong loads. The girl did not understand why the sacred place does not extinguish the fire inside the hero. Is there really no choice and I will have to help him release this burning energy? The girl could not believe that she would have to do this for the first time, and the hero was getting worse. The pangs of conscience did not leave the princess. She could not decide, but she could not leave the hero to die either. She gradually began to move her legs in stockings in the direction of the hero's belt. Closer and closer, ashamed, scared, embarrassed, she had never done this before. She began to massage part of the hero's body with her feet. He began to make strange moans. She was ashamed to hear the groans of a man who does not control himself. Several hours passed. The hero came to his senses and did not understand what had happened. Despite the fact that the sorceress was glad that the hero came to his senses, she felt dirty and disgraced. She said that she had to save him, free his body from the accumulated burning energy. Thank you very much for the rescue, but Why are you so upset and your face is red like you just ran? Sam felt a new strong energy pouring through his body. His power and strength were at a new level. Suddenly, he sensed danger behind him and turned around. I saw an unknown entity flying in their direction. The unknown attacked the hero first and sent a palm full of energy into his body. 
their palms joined and the stranger uttered some kind of spell. There was a cold blue explosion from which they scattered in different directions. The hero for a split second was sure of the weakness of the enemy, but he was wrong. The palm, which had recently repulsed the blow of the enemy, was covered with ice, and the ice continued to encircle the entire arm. Another moment, and the hero turned into an ice statue. The princess wanted to free the hero, but a stranger stood in her way. He was already rushing towards her at speed in an attempt to strike. The girl could not resist the blow of such force. She had not yet recovered after helping the hero. The blow was so strong that the girl was thrown 20 meters away. However, the princess was able to stay on her feet because at the last moment, she recognized the strike technique of the opponent who used her clan's technique. Despite the cold outside, a fire raged inside the hero. He knew that ice technique would not be able to hold back a magician who had mastered the fourth level of solar technique. The ice rapidly turned into water and evaporated, Sam gathering all the free chakra to strike back. He was absolutely not interested in the motive of the enemy, because of which he decided to kill them. Solar gate technique, fourth level. The hero moved as fast as never before and was able to reach the enemy's chest with the first blow. The clothes were torn and he saw a large elastic female breast. The hero was slightly surprised by this turn of events. The girl went on the run. Her level was below the new level of the hero. The princess asked the hero not to pursue the enemy, but to help her patch up her wounds. She said that the enemy used the technique of her clan, and it turns out that they wanted to destroy their own. Are there traitors in the clan? asked the hero. Let's not talk about that. Better look at my wound, it hurts in my chest area, the princess answered. Then you need to take off your clothes, otherwise we will not see your wound, princess. The hero began to help her take off her outer clothing. The girl was very embarrassed, she was hurt, but she wanted to continue. The hero touched the chest of the princess. She received damage from the ice technique and was very cold. It is necessary to rub the affected area using the hot palm technique. The hero said that not only the chest was affected, but also the place below the belt, and he transferred the girl to a horizontal position. An hour later, the hero got down from the princess and said that now her body would never freeze. The princess said that her wounds were healed after half an hour, and she does not understand why the hero did not stop there and used her for another half an hour. Sam said it was to prevent possible side effects. Siri replied that she understood that the hero simply took advantage of her condition, and although he saved her, she would not thank him. The hero asked if they could continue preventive measures tomorrow. The girl wanted to use the strongest technique on the hero, but he said in time that he was joking. How can we figure out the girl who attacked us? The princess asked. Sam replied that during the battle he had injured her and a wound should form on her chest, and Siri needed to start watching the girls from their clan more closely. Meanwhile, in the forest near the location of the clan hidden in the clouds, the girl who attacked the heroes arrived at the meeting place with the customer of the murder. Our plans were thwarted. I couldn't defeat the rookie, the clan assassin said. So we were fooled again. This new one is not so simple. The younger brother of the head of the clan and part-time chief alchemist who developed the pills that increase regeneration noticed. He gave the girl his medicine so that no one in the clan could figure her out by a wound received in battle. The girl was glad that she would not have to leave the clan for fear of being convicted of treason, because the scar could give her away. A few days passed, the day came for the exam for the opportunity to study with the great master. Sam noticed how busy the main square was today. He liked the atmosphere. Siri wished him luck and told him that there was only one way for him, and that was to pass the test. Otherwise, she would kill him with her own hands. The princess's older sister, named Maggie, intervened in the conversation, who expressed interest in Sam, and said that her sister had been talking about him lately. The princess was embarrassed because she did not want the guy to know that she was secretly in love with him. The hero noted that the princess has a very beautiful sister, and he is very glad to meet their whole family. The princess warned the hero not to think of rolling his balls up to her sister. Not only the sisters from the main family were crazy about the hero, but the other girls from the clan did not stop looking at him and languidly sighed after him. The boys from the clan did not like the close attention of all the girls in the village to the newcomer. They planned to get rid of him at the first opportunity. It was time to start the selection. The head of the clan greeted the candidates for students and spectators of the competition. The task of the first test was announced. The participants need to collect 10 flowers of magical grass that grows on the top of the sacred mountain in three hours. Most of the participants considered this test very childish. The head informed the test participants that if someone felt that they did not have enough skills to pass the tests, then it was better to refuse at first. The test begins. The participants took off from their seats, and only the hero was in no hurry to accelerate. 
He stood and watched from the side of what was happening. The princess ran up to him and asked what was the matter. Did he really not want to pass the tests and be closer to her? The hero said that the princess should not worry about him. The girl was surprised. She did not understand what he was up to. Meanwhile, other participants searched actively but not productively. Two applicants walked and discussed what a difficult test really turned out to be, and in a few hours, they found only three flowers. Suddenly, they saw something beautiful and stopped. It was our hero. He went completely naked into the hot springs. Turning around, he used the skill malevolent smile of love. He invited two girls to swim with him. One of the sisters was embarrassed because this is their first meeting. The second was more determined and accepted the invitation of an attractive young man. In a moment, the elder sister without clothes entered the water. Although it was scary, the youngest was not going to give up the guy she liked so easily. Each of the sisters wanted to get to know the hero better and get around the rival in this matter. But the hero replied that he would not be able to pay due attention to them, since he had little strength and he had not yet found a single flower. The sisters replied that if the hero needs flowers, they will definitely get them for him. The hero pretended to be very flattered by their friendly gesture. The girls said that it was a great honor for them to help such a handsome man. The hero stayed at the hot springs to reflect on the charms of the life of a man who sits on the neck of a girl. As soon as he looked at the departing sisters, a girl jumped into the water. She asked what she needed to do for the master so that he could spend a stormy night with her. The hero said that he was glad for such attention, but he felt her chakra. He snatched algae from the water, which had been constricting his leg for several minutes. The girl turned into a water witch. Sam said that he knew that she only wanted to suck the life out of him and refused to spend a stormy night with her. The evil spirits gathered green chakra around themselves and directed it towards the hero. Green algae surrounded Sam from all sides. In a moment, he was already bound by dozens of strong algae. The green monster said that due to the fact that the master is handsome, she will not kill him but simply take away all the energy. The hero looked at her with a languid look and said that she had no chance against him. He used the fourth level burning sun technique. The monster began to scream in pain. The algae were burned. The green evil spirits asked for mercy because she did not have time to harm him and made him a compliment. The young man decided that she could avoid execution, but she must be punished without fail. The girl gave herself to the hero and was all in his power. The groans of evil spirits were heard in the district. The guy praised the skills possessed by evil spirits and wished her correction. The green beauty thanked him and promised to improve if he did such educational work with her at least once more. Cries for help were heard in the forest. Two sisters were trapped by a tree demon who was guarding the flowers they needed. The tree demon was a huge oak tree with slits for the eyes and mouth from which insane chakra oozed. He pointed a sharp-edged branch at his younger sister which flew right at her head. The girl has already said goodbye to life and dreams of spending the night with a handsome man. A moment before the death of the girl, using the technique of the constellation of the dragon, the hero cut a thick oak branch with one movement. The tree swung its branches from side to side in a rage, destroying everything it touched. The hero said that he would not allow anyone to harm his future sisters. There were many more girls in captivity of the evil spirit than the hero immediately noticed, but each of them was immensely glad to him. All attention was focused on the handsome young man who was about to destroy the evil spirit of the forest. The battle began, a dozen branches sharp as spears flew at the hero. With one blow of the blade, the hero smashed into pieces all the branches directed at him. However, the wood chips also proved to be dangerous. The hero began to take the enemy more seriously and follow his every move. The girls were upset, but more so that a scratch had formed on the beautiful, perfect face of the young man. They could not continue to watch how their handsome man was being disfigured, and in a few seconds they were freed from the demonic embrace. The forest watchman was in a state of confusion. The hero watched how the girls dealt with the demon using various techniques. He saw that not far from the battlefield were the very plants, thanks to which he would be able to complete the task. A few minutes later, the demon lay on the ground motionless and looked like an ordinary felled tree. The dying tree was told by the girls that it was a mistake to hurt the most handsome guy. But the young man was no longer there, and he did not know how the outcome of the duel ended. He kept walking but could only find six plants. There was a sound of cutting through the air. Again, someone wanted to kill the hero. His quick reaction allowed him to dodge without taking any damage. Suddenly, there was an understanding that it was not just enemies that attacked him. Four test participants attacked, who found only one plant each and wanted to take away those collected by the hero. Really lucky, Sam thought to himself. Men could not understand why the hero was looking at them with such interest. Fourth level sunstroke technique. In a moment, with broken faces, 
With bruises under their eyes and bumps on their heads, four men stood and held out their flowers to the hero. He thanked them for their generosity and set off. The time allotted for the test was almost over. The area was filled with participants. The head of the clan said that the winner of the first stage could immediately become his disciple. The hero thanked everyone for the opportunity to participate in this test. The princess was very glad to see him not returning empty-handed. The members continued to admire the handsome man and offered him a room in the women's dormitory. The princess realized that not only she fell in love with the hero, she did not understand what feelings she was overcome. She had never experienced jealousy before. Siri retired to a snowy mountain and thought about him. Sam arrived just in time, before she had time to be angry that he did not share the joy of victory with her. She asked why he didn't have fun with other girls. I want to thank you, mentor. Thanks to you, I have reached such heights and become part of the clan. The girl said that today is the night of purification, and everyone who has sinned will certainly come to the Holy Spring, including the girl who attacked them. And when she comes, we can see the scars you left on her body. The hero asked the princess not to risk herself and not try to detain the girl herself. The girls took a bath in a hot spring and said it was a pity that there was no handsome brother nearby. The princess looked around but did not see anyone with a wound on their chest. The hero lay in the room and thought about why the princess has been acting so detached lately. The cotton and trousers of the hero smoked in the groin area. He was frightened. Smoke filled the entire room. The fairy caretaker appeared and said that if he was thinking about the princess, then he needed to ask her what was bothering him. What are you doing here? asked the hero. The fairy replied that as an observer, she could be anywhere, but she could not influence the plot of the game and no one could see her except Sam. The hero said that he would like to follow the advice of the fairy, but he could not go to the women's bath because he would be kicked out of there. The fairy advised him to transform into a girl and go talk. Such a plan aroused distrust. The fairy advised me to contact the system store and acquire the necessary skill. Indeed, there is such a skill in the system, and you can become a girl without surgery. The hero acquired an illusion charm that went well with his pumped charisma. The hero asked why the fairy tells him if she's forbidden to influence the course of the game. The fairy said to consider this a system prompt and enjoy the game. It is very interesting who the hero planned to become. From the initial changes, it was not clear who he was turning into. Long legs, short white dress, white hair, blue eyes, golden bow on her chest. The fairy was very surprised when she saw herself, but not in the mirror. The hero said that he made himself according to the template that was before his eyes. But still something has changed. The chest has made more. He looked, and from her displeased expression he realized that everything had gone well. Of course, what girl will like it if we talk about her small breasts? At this time the princess was observing at the hot springs, but she did not see anyone with a scar. A hero in a female guise came to the reservoir and called the princess. She did not understand what was happening and what the unknown girl wanted from her. Sam revealed his secret and asked the princess to keep her mouth shut. Siri couldn't figure out what was going on or how he did it. The hero explained that he did it for cover and wants to help her catch the criminal. The princess was worried that the hero would see her naked. The elder sister of the princess appeared at the springs. Immediately, she drew attention to the hero in a female form and complimented him, thinking that this was a real girl. The princess had already begun to tell who was hiding under the guise of a stranger as Sam stopped her. He introduced himself as Tsunad, the daughter of the ruler of Hidden Leaf Village. The older sister said she was pleased to meet you. Sam said that there are no people living in these places who do not know the daughters of the main family. Maggie complimented our female hero once more and retired to take a bath. The princess asked why the hero did not let her tell her sister about him, to which Sam replied that she also needed to be checked for scars. The princess said that she would not dare to suspect her sister of plotting against her. Sam noted that he suspected everyone and her sister too, and until he was convinced otherwise, no one needed to know why they were here. What should I do? asked the princess. The hero already had a cunning plan. He climbed onto a stone and began to shout that there was a poisonous snake in the pond. A slight panic began, but the hero still did not see anything. He decided to immediately check on his older sister and pretended that the snake was swimming in her direction. Sam screamed that the snake got under Maggie's towel and he would save her. The towel was torn off. The hero got his way. He began to closely examine the breasts of his older sister. He did not see the cuts and was upset by this. Maggie continued to scream and kick the water, fearing a snake attack. She held the main character by the head, pressed to her chest. His pulse became stronger. A notification came that if aroused, the illusion enchantment would dissipate. The girl stood close to the hero and began to notice something oblong right under the water. She thought she saw a snake and tried to grab it with her hands. And then Maggie caught it. 
but she could not understand why the snake was so hard to the touch. The hero looked at her frightened, and she held his snake in her hand and squeezed it tightly. Because of the steam from the holy springs, no one except Maggie noticed the transformation of the hero from a beautiful girl into a guy. She covered it with her body from the girls and told them to run away quickly, as the snake is very dangerous, cunning, and possibly not alone. The girls decided to listen to their older sister because she was from the main family and they had no reason not to trust her. Maggie asked Sam to explain what was happening here and what kind of tricks he was doing here. Sam replied that he couldn't concentrate on the story while Sister Maggie was standing naked in front of him. A little later, two princesses and Sam were sitting in the gazebo, who explained to the eldest of them that they were trying to find the killer in this way. The detectives were very embarrassed to say that they suspected Maggie of such things. Maggie invited Sam to examine her breasts, feel and check in any other way he wanted. Sam liked the idea, and he was already thinking how he would check the body of his older sister. But at that moment, the younger sister with all her might loaded her fist into his arrogant, contented muzzle. Maggie did not know whether she liked this situation or not. On the one hand, she liked Sam, but on the other hand, her sister also liked him. The younger sister refused the help of the older one and decided to deal with the pervert herself. Maggie said goodbye and said that they needed to deal with the attack as soon as possible and find the killer who attacked them at the sacred place of concentration of energy. Thanking their sister for their participation and excitement, the heroes remained united. Meanwhile, in the laboratory of the brother of the head of the clan, there is a meeting with the killer. It turns out to be Maggie, who says that she is already suspected and will not be able to hide for a long time now. The brother of the head replies that in a few days, he will complete the divine pill and become the strongest man in this mortal world. Maggie says that the divine pill is strictly prohibited by law, and if anyone finds out, then he will face the death penalty. The man replies that he is not afraid of anything and asks Maggie to just delay the heroes so that they do not get in the way. The man says that he now has only one goal, to avenge his son, who was crippled due to the fault of his younger sister and her arrogant friend. Events take us to the area of the Hidden Cloud, where the chief master demonstrates the training of his new student. Sam was demonstrating the scorching sun level 5 skill. He smashed to pieces a huge block of ice standing in the center of the square. The blow was so hot that not even a drop of water remained from the ice block. Everything evaporated in a split second. The master praised the student for mastering the fifth level technique so quickly. Sam noted that he achieved such heights because the princess helped him. But this is not enough for him, and he wants to master the last sixth level of technology. The master replied that the sixth level cannot be reached alone. One needs to merge with a female master who can sacrifice her honor for him. The hero did not believe that in order to master the technique, he needed to copulate during training with a girl. The master said that during the ritual, the girl must lose her innocence with the hero, but will he be able to find such a girl? A dozen girls in the square squealed and shouted that they were ready to part with their innocence for the sake of the hero. The master was shocked by such a development of events embarrassedly turned around and headed towards his palace. Leaving, he replied that he could not help him in this matter and let him figure it out himself. The hero, first of all, offered the princess to help him in mastering a new level of technology, telling about the nuances. The sister was outraged by the proposal, but inside, she understood that she would like to perform the ritual with Sam. Sam said that if she did not help him, then he had no choice and he would have to find another. The hero did not have time to announce the casting for the role of his assistant in the development of technology as the first girls gathered in front of his doors. He asked the girls to be quiet while he was testing them. Those who were waiting could hear strong rhythmic slaps and moans coming from the room. They were delighted at the thought that they would soon be in the place of his girlfriend. The princess was very angry at what the hero arranged and watched from afar what was happening. Sam loudly said that the first girl is not suitable as she will not survive the hard training. The girl left the room exhausted, half-dressed, her dress was torn, and her underwear was missing. Sam said he didn't have much time and asked the girls to get into his room as soon as possible. An hour later, the princess could not stand the jealousy and burst into the room to the main character. In the room, sweaty, half-dressed girls were lying on the floor and breathing very heavily. Princess Siri burst into the room and began to yell at Sam for using the sister's tutors. Sam knew that sooner or later the princess would visit his room. She was taken by surprise by the fact that the hero was expecting her to come. Sam said that he considers Princess Siri to be the teacher with whom he wants to improve his level of scorching sun technique. Siri did not know what to say to the young master and asked what he had been doing here with the tutor sisters for more than an hour. 
Sam said that now he would show her if she was not afraid and help him become a master of the six solar paths. A moment later, Siri was lying on the bed, sighing heavily and clutching the sheets as hard as she could. The moans of the princess spread throughout the floor, but only a small part of the girls understood what was happening in the room. Sam did a magical foot massage to the princess, which made her experience an incredibly violent emotional upsurge. She didn't expect a foot massage to be so enjoyable, she couldn't breathe. She writhed on the bed like a snake. It seemed that she had convulsions, but she did not tell the hero to stop. Sam replied that he liked the reaction of her body the most, and she was able to hold out longer than the others. Maggie was watching what was happening from the street. She understood that if they continued to train together, then even an uncle's pill would not help. Upon learning of the joint training of the princess and the upstart who ruined his son's career, his uncle was confused. He gave Maggie a poison that stops the development of any spiritual techniques and told her to pour it on her opponents. Maggie asked why not just poison them, to which uncle remarked that he wanted to kill them with the most terrible death. The uncle said that he wanted Sam to see how his son married Princess Siri before he died. Princess Maggie was overcome by incomprehensible feelings. She did not know if she was on the right path. Meanwhile, the heroes devoted all their free time to training. The princess stopped and said that Sam should have mastered the sixth level technique by now. She lifted her head, looked at him, and couldn't believe her eyes. The hero's hair turned white and gave off silver. A knock was heard outside the door. The older sister wanted to enter their room. Sam was very wary. He still didn't know who the killer was and Maggie's suspicions remained. The younger sister left the room and asked the older sister why she had come. The eldest replied that she knew how tired they were in training and brought them chicken soup to replenish their strength. Seeing Sam's white and silver hair, Maggie opened her mouth and couldn't believe her eyes. Sister Siri thanked Maggie for her care and the chicken soup, which smelled very nice. Maggie said that the soup should be eaten as quickly as possible before it gets cold. Sam said they couldn't eat the soup because they didn't know if it was poisonous. Maggie pretended to be very upset that Sam still didn't trust her. The hero took out sunglasses, pretended to be a tough guy and said that he knew who attacked them, and this was Maggie's sister. The sister began to make excuses and say that she was checked for the presence of a scar, which she does not have. The younger sister began to stand up for Maggie and say that she had known her all her life and she could not betray her. It is not known how you managed to get rid of the wound, but you still miscalculated when you talked to us. In that conversation, I spoke only about the wound, but did not say a word about where the attack took place. And then Maggie remembered how, as she left, she had said that they needed to deal with the attack as soon as possible and find the killer who attacked them at the sacred place of concentration of energy. It was just my guess. You can't judge me based on that phrase alone. Sam quickly got his bearings and offered Maggie a bowl of her own soup to prove her innocence. Sister Maggie realized that she was taken by surprise and that she needed to drink soup because it only contained powder that dissipated power and not poison. She drank a cup of soup with trembling hands, hoping that she had not been deceived. The hero was a little confused, but still did not believe Maggie. He believed that she had drunk the antidote in advance. Siri, in order not to offend her sister, quickly drank a bowl of soup. Sam did not know what to do because he knew that something was wrong with the soup, he yelled at the princess. But it was too late. The powder was absorbed into the blood. The head was spinning. The body burned from the inside. The elder sister, too, could hardly stand on her feet and cursed her uncle who had deceived her. Meanwhile, the brother of the clan leader was waiting for the powder that burns from the inside to take effect. The man told his son that he was doing everything for him, for his happiness. The traitorous brother had been sitting for weeks now, smiling, delirious, and his father thought he had lost his mind. At this time, a divine pill was being prepared, but to complete the preparation, a guide was needed. The heart of a loved one. The father decided to take the heart of his son, who was now useless, took out a blade to strike. But before he could turn around, dozens of needles with immobilizing poison pierced his back. The man could not believe that he was deceived by his own son because of whom he came up with a plan of revenge. The son admitted that he had been waiting for this moment for a very long time, constantly pretending to be sick and crazy in order to learn more about the pill. The father, lying on the floor, begged for mercy but the son was only interested in the divine pill. The son was insane and did not hear anything. He wanted to rip out his father's heart in order to complete the ritual. Meanwhile, the two sisters of the princess were burning from the inside and only merging with a man could extinguish their fire. The hero understood that what was happening was what he had already seen in the battle against the traitor brother. The girls surrounded Sam and panted. The younger sister asked to save the older one because she was not to blame for being deceived. 
and the eldest asked to save the youngest first of all, since she would not be able to live if she died through her fault. The girls did not wait for the consent of the hero and threw off their dresses, remaining in underwear and stockings. Sam had to save both sisters at the same time. He had never had such an experience, but he liked it. Sam has leveled up and unlocked a new skill, Fascinating Mirage, which can stop high-level opponents. The younger sister thanked the hero for his generosity and salvation. The older sister was very ashamed that he saved her, although she tried to kill him. The hero lay exhausted on the bed, unable to get dressed. Maggie said that she agreed to become her uncle's assistant because she was jealous of Siri, but she is very sorry and asks for forgiveness. Siri said she was ready to forgive Maggie if she promised to improve. Maggie asked that, as punishment for her transgression, Sam use her as his slave for a long time and do whatever he wants. Siri got angry and said that now is not the time for jokes, because the enemy is not asleep. Maggie said that her uncle was perfecting the divine pill, and if he was not stopped, then disaster would happen. Sam began to question the sisters about what the divine pill was. He was told that the pill is a secret, forbidden drug that instantly develops a person's abilities to the limit, but he loses control of himself. Sam said that it was time for him to visit the family of traitors and punish them for what they had done. Siri gave Sam a magic blade, a relic of the Hidden Cloud Clan, which can only be controlled by a warrior who has reached the sixth level of the Burning Sun technique. Sam thanked Siri and taking the blade in his hands felt incredible energy. Before he could leave the bedroom, Sam felt an insane energy approaching the roof of the house. A few seconds later, an explosion of enormous force destroyed the wall and roof of part of the house. Thanks to Sam's new abilities, he was able to create a protective barrier during the explosion. He again saved two sisters who could not feel such a lightning attack. On the roof of the ruined house stood a traitor brother named Gao Gan, unharmed. The princess asked how he got a good hand and the strength to use such powerful techniques. The traitor brother said that his father, whom he sacrificed, perfected the divine pill, and now Gao Gan is invincible. Sam rushed at full speed to Gao Gan to deal him a crushing blow. But Gan, with one hand, stopped the blow of the blade, moving at an incredible speed. He said that now he is at an incredible level of strength and cannot be stopped by an ordinary blade. The hero asked what about the blade called Snow Slayer, which has the power of divine flame. And at that moment, the blade caught fire with a flame of incredible power, and the hero dealt a smashing blow to the traitor on the sore arm. Gaogan's hand was smoking, as if it had just been taken out of an oven. Sam considered that there were a few blows left before defeating the enemy and prepared to attack. Gao, laughing an evil laugh, showed the hero his whole hand and said that he was immortal. At this moment, several magic blades flew into the chest of the self-confident villain. The blades were sent by older sister Maggie, who gathered around her the sister's mentors and hurried to the aid of Sam. It was clear that Maggie's blades had reached their destination, but there was not a single scratch on Gao Gan's body. The hero asked the sisters not to interfere in the battle against the immortal enemy. But Maggie, feeling guilty for herself, could not stand aside and decided that she would do everything possible to delay the enemy. Together with other sisters, she began to collect chakra to use one of the clan's secret techniques. The opponent knew that he was immortal, but he was still afraid to feel the technique of such a high level. The sisters gathered energy and used the demonic blade rain technique. The damage was so strong that it would have destroyed hundreds and thousands of detachments of ordinary opponents. Dozens of blades passed right through Gao Gan. A red liquid oozed from his body, but he continued to stand. The sisters celebrated the victory. It was impossible to think that anyone would survive after such a strong technique. But the enemy raised his head. A trickle of blood flowed from his mouth, but a mocking smile was red on his face. With a powerful energy flow, the enemy shot the blades that pierced his body in the opposite direction. The girls had to defend themselves. No one expected such a turn of events. Maggie tried to rush to her sister's defense, but she couldn't. The immortal brother grabbed her by the throat and did not give her the opportunity to help the sisters. The enemy told Maggie that she had a chance to go over to his side and serve faithfully, but the girl refused the evil brother and called him a coward who could never compare with the main character. Then Gao Dan said that she had left him no choice and she would have to be killed, and after that, her vaunted Sam should be killed. At that very moment, Sam separated the hand of the traitor from his body with a magic blade and freed Maggie. Siri was waiting downstairs, helping her sister land without injury. The enemy was quickly able to grow a new arm and decided to destroy the hero first. Sam tried to play a joke on the opponent and tell him that success with women is about attractiveness and charisma, not strength. Sam combined the power of the magic blade and the six suns snow melting technique and delivered a direct blow to the opponent's chest. 
Gao Gan was sure that an ordinary blow would not be able to harm him, so he did not even try to defend himself. On the face of the hero, it was read that his plan was a success, and the arrogant enemy would soon regret their meeting. Gao Gan did not understand why his wounds did not heal, and vice versa, they became larger. The hero explained that thanks to the magic blade and the achievement of the sixth level of technique, he was able to put the energy of the sun into the opponent's body. After that, to incite solar energy, the hero struck another ten blows with the blade at the enemy. The sun began to burn inside the traitor, his body blazed with fire. And he, like a meteorite, began to fall to the ground, uttering strong cries. The princesses ran to the hero, fearing for his life, because he had spent so much energy. Sam, as usual, did not show it, because he did not want to look weak in the eyes of the sisters. But then, on the face of one of the girls, the hero saw unimaginable fear. Behind Sam, almost out of the ashes, a figure was rising engulfed in flames. It was Gao Gan, the flame burning him and the immortal body became one. The hero, without hesitation and plan, rushed to attack the enemy blazing in the fire. The opponent produced a fiery wave of incredible power with a single movement of his hand. According to the hero's feelings, he fought no less than a demigod, who at the snap of a finger could destroy half the world. It seemed to Sam that every part of his body was torturing, and his internal organs were exploding. The enemy was furious. He asked Princess Siri why she continues to protect the weakling. Sam had a plan. He decided to play on the enemy's jealousy of Princess Siri, and he applied the recently learned technique of a bewitching mirage. Gao Gan kept yelling that normal techniques wouldn't work on him. In the mirage, the hero created a picture in which he and Princess Siri are going to study new techniques together in the same bed. In order to anger the enemy more, Sam added Maggie's older sister to the illusion. The evil brother was simply furious at such impudence. He did not understand that this was still just an illusion. In an artificially created deception, Sam and the girls discussed Gao Gan's inferiority. He couldn't stand it and got even hotter. In an illusion, the princess offered to retire to the hero right in front of the worthless traitor brother. The enemy, who had completely lost his mind, decided that if he did not have eyes, then he would not see what was happening between Siri and Sam. Gaudan tore out his eyes, but the illusion still continued, and he saw what he feared more than anything else. The princess asked why the traitor had torn out his eyes and was not restoring them. Sam replied that he created an illusion for the enemy that the enemy does not want to see. The princess asked what it was, but the hero could not give a clear answer. Gaugan continued to have an unpleasant dream and muttered something about Siri licking some places. The princess guessed what kind of dream she was seeing, a traitor in love with her, and gave the protagonist a beating. Three days have passed and we are shown a prison on the territory of the clan hidden in the clouds. The chained traitor sees all the same vision, despite his lack of eyes. The head of the clan speaks of the unforgivable and terrible betrayal of the clan, whose memory will be the life imprisonment of Gao Gan. The master turns to the main character and says that he is going to give him the reign, as well as his beloved daughter, Siri. The princess looks confused, but is very pleased with her father's words. Sam thanks the master, but says that he will not be able to take over the clan and marry the princess. The girl asks Sam why he doesn't want to stay with them. The hero replies that he has unfinished business and needs to hit the road. Sam went to the room to collect his things, but the master stopped him. He pounced on him to give him a paternal beating as he became attached to his soul because he always wanted to have a son. It was late evening, the stars illuminating the hidden Cloud Clan palace. Siri decided to say goodbye to the hero and went to his bedroom. But before opening the door, she heard the loud voices of Sam and Maggie. Moans were heard from the room. It was not clear what Sam and Maggie were doing. Jealousy ensued. Siri ran into the room and yelled at them indiscriminately. It turned out that they stuffed bulky things into a travel bag. The friends decided to drink tea before the departure of the hero from the clan. Sam drank his tea in one gulp and decided that it was time for him to leave, as the road promised to be long. Big Sister Maggie looked at Sam suspiciously, as if she was up to something. After drinking tea, Sam began to feel very strange. Inside, everything seemed to flare up. The older sister said that she could not resist and added a magic spoonful to the hero's drink. She told her younger sister that they should spend the last night with the Hero 3. The sisters decided that they would not forgive themselves if they did not taste the hero's body before he left the clan. Siri was very shy, but she could not refuse a magical night with the hero. So the hero received an achievement in the conquest of Princess Siri, and also at the same time received a card from Princess Maggie. In the morning, the girls woke up, but did not find Sam in their bed. They were very sorry to part with Sam, because he became the closest person to them. The girls promised themselves that if they met him once again, they would never let him go. Meanwhile, the hero was on the playing field and watched the girls from the side. 
he was a little sad. The game fairy told him not to be upset because this is not the last parting in his game profile. The hero did not admit that he had become attached to the girls, and he was sad to realize that this round was over. The fairy said that he had earned a lot of points and could test the system's new features. She told the hero that the place in which he is located can be equipped according to your desires. Sam replied that he would not spend precious experience points on furnishing a room that he rarely visits. The fairy said that the place can be equipped with forges to improve equipment, a botanical garden for growing useful plants, and other useful things. The hero decided to set up a forge first, also an alchemy workshop to create magic pills that increase abilities. Now the playing space began to look much better, the hero felt a surge of energy. The fairy liked how Sam arranged the home space and she kissed him. The embarrassed hero asked the fairy about how the buildings he built would function. The fairy caretaker promised him to sort everything out and hire workers. Worker dolls instantly appeared, calling Sam the owner and promising to take care of the household. Sam asked when it would be possible to start playing the next level in the game. The fairy informed him that the game would start at any time if he wished, but asked if he would like to learn the achievements first. The hero took out the three level 4 bonus cards he received and thought that it would be great if his girls were around right now. The cards in his hand crackled and began to emit a very bright light, which blinded the hero for a moment. Characters familiar to us appeared on the playing field. The mistress of an intimate salon and two princesses. They were very surprised that they were able to see Sam again. The hostess of the salon was in the same form in which Sam had seen her last time, in a dressing gown over her naked body. The younger sister grabbed the hero by the collar and began to ask him questions about the half-naked girl. The older sister just looked at the hero and could not take her eyes off. The situation was heating up. No one understood what was happening, and Sam did not know how he would justify himself to the girls. Sam asked the fairy about why she did not warn him about the possibility of summoning characters. The younger sister pressed on the hero the most and demanded an explanation. Sam decided to get out on the go and did not come up with anything more interesting than to think that he was not quite human. He decided to introduce himself as an angel descended from heaven to fulfill a very important mission. He came up with a story that he was kicked out of heaven for misconduct, and now in order to return back, he must endure a hundred love disappointments. The younger sister did not quite believe him and decided to punish him for deceit and a dissolute lifestyle. The older sister said that she believed him because she had never received such divine pleasure with anyone. The younger sister and the mistress of the salon thought the same thing, that they had never experienced such emotions with anyone in bed as with a hero. The fairy decided to give each girl a spiritual ring that could transport them to the hero's home play area. Princess Siri stated that she did not want to communicate with a womanizer, and she also became the head of the clan, and she had little time. The elder sister liked the idea with the ring, and she was wondering if it immediately moves to the hero's bedroom. The younger sister did not like Maggie's reasoning, as she was jealous of Sam for all the girls. The hostess of the salon touched the water on the shore of the lake with her legs and reminisced. She recalled the times when the hero was very close to her and missed her. And then, as if by magic, the handsome Sam appeared. He greeted the girl and asked what she did after he left. She said that she traveled and studied the magical musical techniques of seduction. Sam asked her to demonstrate her skills on her favorite musical instrument. The girl picked up a jade flute and said that her playing could cloud the hero's mind. Sam said that his level is too high for the girl to harm him. The girl took the words of the hero as a challenge and decided to show him what she was capable of. The girl began to play. Magic music was heard from the flute. A fire flared up inside the hero. The hero attacked the girl, not letting her finish the game. He could not control himself. Sam said that her magical flute playing had kindled a fire in his heart, and he wanted to let her play his flute. The girl pretended that she was not ready now for a joint orchestra, but she herself really wanted to be in his arms. The girl decided to give herself to the hero and do as he wants, because their desires coincided. The girl played the flute while the hero gave them both pleasure. Three days passed. The game assistants did their best to ennoble the hero's playing space. When the hero had a rest and adjusted his life in the home playing field, he decided to go to the next level. The hero asked the fairy if she could take him to the next level in a different way than the last time, so that he would not run away from the guards. The fairy noted that the landing point and personality of the hero are randomly chosen and wished him good luck. Sam again fell into the maelstrom of playful energy, sucking him to a new level. This time he was imprisoned in a dungeon with slaves waiting for an auction. They were about to be sold. His appearance changed. His nose and ears were sharp. It was not clear what kind of creature he was. Next to him in the cell, he saw beautiful creatures in rags. They had strange sharp ears and some even had horns. 
A girl with yellow eyes and ears like a fox approached the hero and asked if he was all right. The hero did not answer, grabbed the girl by the ears to check if they were real. The girl asked him not to touch other people's ears because they are very sensitive. The hero asked everyone what kind of creatures they are, if their ears are real. The girls replied that they were demi-humans who had been captured and were going to be sold at auction. We are shown the city of Gaia, where humans, demi-humans and demons live together and contribute to the development of the city. 500 years ago, a war broke out between people and demons, and both sides suffered heavy losses, but people eventually won. After that, the Church of the Divine Color proclaimed people the highest race and the demons the lowest, and even later the demons became slaves in the hands of people. The hero realized that he belongs to the demon race and asked why the demi-human girl was also imprisoned. The fox girl replied that people no longer reckon not only with demons, but also with half-humans. Their villages are being captured, and they themselves are being taken prisoner. For the same reason, the rest of the girls from the Uzumaki clan, Horned and Slugs, are here. Sam said that he understands why they can kidnap beautiful girls from demons and demi-humans, but why they kidnapped him, because he is a man. The girl explained that men are considered even more valuable for kidnapping. After all, the richest ladies in the city can buy men and use them for their perverted fantasies. The hero thought that this is a very good plan to get out of prison. You just need to please a rich lady. A girl from the Uzumaki clan said that she had not heard of any of the male slaves finishing well because there is no guarantee that a wealthy perverted man won't buy it. The hero was upset and did not understand how to get out of prison and pass this level successfully. The hour of the auction came. The richest people of the city gathered in the hall. Masked rich men discussed slaves bought at past auctions, fed to dogs or killed in other ways because they misbehaved. The person conducting the auction represented the seventh lot. It was a very beautiful young girl from the cat clan who was wearing a chic dress and fear was in her eyes. The wealthy began holding up signs with their numbers and quoting prices ranging from $3 million to $6 million. One of the oligarchs with a plate number 599 said that one more cat was missing from his collection and offered $9 million. The deal for the cat girl was closed and she entered the disposal of a wealthy gentleman. The master grabbed her hand tightly and was ready to take her to the room for carnal pleasures. He was impatient to try her. The girl attacked the master and bit him very hard on the arm. The girl ran with all her might. It seemed to her that she could escape and no one would find her. But the people who kidnapped her and brought her to the auction had all the unforeseen situations. Someone in the lead pressed a button that would stop anyone who broke the rules. The button was responsible for the detonation of the collar, located around the neck of all the slaves at the auction. There was a strong explosion. Nothing was left of the girl, only charred shreds of the dress scattered around. The hero was shocked by what was happening. He did not understand why it was necessary to kill the girl, because there are other ways of control. The fox said that this was the rule, since any animal that bit a person must be killed. The hero was very angry. He did not perceive what was happening as a game. He wanted to punish people who do this to demi-humans. The host said that everyone will forget this incident when they see a new lot that will impress everyone. He presented a character who looked amazing and carried himself on stage like a master, not a slave. Rich girls could not restrain their emotions. They were ready for anything to get Sam into their slave. Sam said that if someone wants to buy it, then he will have to buy four more demi-human girls standing backstage. The host asked how the slave dared to set his conditions, but the main character told him to shut his dirty mouth. The hero was very serious, and the host could not say anything to him in response. Using the charm technique, Sam said that he was going to serve the master well, who would buy him and his three girlfriends. The start of trading began with $70 million, and in a few seconds reached $85 million. The mustachioed man in the mask made an indignant look, seeing how everyone was cursing over the goods. But then he jumped up abruptly, shouted that from today, he likes men and he is ready to pay $150 million. A rich, beautiful lady in a short skirt intervened and made a $500 million bet. The girls were surprised at such generosity, but upset that they did not have such money to take such a beautiful slave for themselves. The host said that in such a case, all five slaves would become the property of Madame Ginevra. The hero himself was shocked that for a half-human of his race, they were ready to pay such a high price. The lady looked at the hero with loving eyes, and she was already impatient to realize her fantasies with his participation. We are being transferred to Madame Ginevra's domain, late evening has come. The lady's maid asked the hero to take off his old clothes, take a shower and dress in decent clothes. The hero began to ask the maid about Madame Ginevra, about what she was like. 
The girl left the answer and said that the hero himself would soon find out everything from the lips of the hostess herself. The hero decided to go and change clothes in order to look as good as possible in front of the hostess. In the closet, he saw a lot of role-play costumes and thought it would be interesting for him to see Mistress's skills. Ginevra was heading into the room in a beautiful outfit. The smell of her perfume could be heard a mile away. The hero chose a more or less decent men's outfit that emphasized his athletic torso. She entered the room. The hero saw that her level was five stars and she was a very strong character. He called her to him and said that he was ready to deliver her allowance for the entire amount that she had paid for him. The girl liked Sam's self-confidence and she wanted to check him out as soon as possible. The girl threw the hero on the bed, bent down like a cat and put her knee between his legs. She sat astride him and began to take off his shirt to see his athletic body. A moment and he was bound by magical handcuffs. Now he could not move. His arms and legs were tied to the bed and the girl continued to sit on top. Now the girl offered to talk about business and it should soon become clear why she paid such a sum for him. The girl showed the hero her fangs and ears which were exactly like his. The hero was wondering what she was up to and why she needed him. It turned out that all the girls in her castle were the same demons as he was. Ginevra revealed that she was a subordinate of the Demon King, who was sealed away 500 years ago. She bought his life so that he could help destroy the hammer and resurrect the king, who had been sealed away by the seven sages of divine light. The girl has been trying to find a way to destroy this hammer for many years, but nothing comes of it. The hero said that he knew the legend of the hammer, and also knew that any demon who touched the hammer would be dead. Ginevra revealed that she knows a way to break the seal, but only Sam can do it. She said that all seven sages of the Divine Light have long been dead, and there is only one heiress who holds back the seal. This is Irina. If you get rid of Irene, then the seal will be broken, and the heart of the Demon King will be freed. Due to the fact that the members of the Hammer of Light are holy people, if they fall in love with a demon and surrender to him, the seal will be destroyed. The hero said that he would not be able to kill an innocent girl in order to free the main demon. The mistress said that she had foreseen his answer and learned that she did not need the whole hero. The hero, with fear in his eyes, began to ask what these words of hers meant. The girl said that in order to fulfill the mission, only a holy spring is needed, which she can cut off for him and so on to another. The girl swung the knife very hard and wanted to cut off Sam what was so dear to him. Sam managed to yell some kind of spell to try to protect himself. From a blow to the hero's groin, the blade in the hands of Geneva bent and she received a bruise on her arm. She did not expect that getting his magic source would not be so easy. The hero lay calmly. He managed to apply the magic stone spring technique. This gave strength to the whole body. He easily got rid of the handcuffs. The girl realized that the hero is not an ordinary demon, but a wizard who can do more than it seems at first glance. Sam again decided to try the seduction technique, but he had to try since the lady is a fifth level character. The girl asked him to work out 500 million in kind and give her heavenly pleasure. She collapsed onto the bed and relaxed to make the most of their meeting. Sam turned her over on her stomach and told her not to strain if she wanted to fly to heaven. His movements were so gentle and quick that the girl at times fainted in ecstasy. But the hero did not stop there and demonstrated to the hostess all the new techniques of mastering his and her body. The girl called the hero very hardy even for a demon and praised him for his skills. At the groans of the hostess, Sam's passing girlfriends, whom he took with him, turned around. They were sad that they were not in the place of the mistress of Ginevra now, because she was moaning so sweetly. The stormy night has gone and a calm sunny morning has come. Sam woke Ginevra, wished her good morning and asked how she was feeling. The girl said that despite the fact that he is the first man in her life, she is sure that since he does not please anyone, the hero was surprised that for a woman like her, he was only the first partner. The girl asked how the hero did not recognize her as an inexperienced girl. Sam attributed her skills to natural talent and incredible charisma. The girl confessed to Sam about her plans, in which her first man should be the Demon King. Sam reminded her that he was not going to help her in the return of her king and kill to seduce an innocent girl. Ginevra took advantage of the virgin blood and used pure blood chain magic. She said that if the chain broke, they would both die, and she was ready to die for her master. Sam did not expect that he would fall under a spell of such power and his life could be in danger. Ginevra, holding the magic chain in her hands, said that she was asking the hero for the last time to help her return the master. The hero felt pain in his heart and realized that the jokes were over. The girl promised to remove the spell of blood chains and also to reward the hero if he helped her. Sam said that he would definitely cope with all the tasks and defeat the Church of Divine Light. The girl gave the hero a route along which the heiress of the Hammer of Light, Irina, can move. 
Sam asked not to offend his four girlfriends while he was on a mission. Three days later, the hero was already in the distant forests where Irina's path passes. There was a roar and hammer blows with which Irina scattered creatures from the underworld in different directions. The girl looked amazing from the curls of her hair to the shiny armor. Irina heard cries for help coming from nearby in the forest. She did not know what was happening, but hurried to help those in need. Cries for help were issued by our hero, dressed in an eccentric outfit of white and red. He was attacked by underground creatures with huge fangs and a bad smell from their mouths. But Sam was not going to fight. He was waiting for rescue, hoping that Irina would come to his cry. And his plan worked. Very quickly, the same warrior, the heiress of the Seven Saints, was approaching the scene. She struck the ground with such force that the soil left from under the feet of underground creatures. After the blow, none of them could get up. The hero did not check whether they were alive. The hero thanked the savior and introduced himself as a priest from the nearest village. The girl introduced herself as a holy knight from the Church of Divine Light named Irene. Sam replied that the goblins had infiltrated his village and kidnapped one of the villagers, and since the village could not afford to hire a knight, he went to rescue her. Irina said that despite his courage, he was not strong enough to deal with the goblins. The hero replied that he believed in the divine light, which in any case would bring justice, even at the cost of his life. The warrior did not understand why her heart began to beat faster. She looked at the hero with admiration. Irina offered the hero to go on a journey together, exterminate the horde of goblins and save the kidnapped girl. The hero realized that it would not be difficult for him to ingratiate himself with the warrior. Irina used some kind of spell with a magic hammer. When asked by the hero, she replied that this was a divine light spell that helped to detect goblins. She pointed to the black aura and explained that that was where the goblins were located, which they needed to defeat. She was excited about the upcoming journey and she said that it was time to go. Turning around, the girl saw a dark aura on the main character and asked what it meant. Sam was sure that it was all over and his plan failed. But the girl said that he was probably imbued with demonic energy during the battle with the goblins. Sam really liked her version and began to say that Irina is very smart. The girl said that if he were a demon, then she would not spare him and destroyed him with one blow. In fact, Irina was lying. Because a few years ago, when people destroyed the goblin settlement in the valley, she had such an opportunity. She found two small goblin children but did not kill them and she protected them from people with a divine light barrier. She helped them hide and thereby saved their lives. She herself did not understand why she did so. Now together with Sam, they were in a cave in which it was very hot. The hero said that the goblins choose places near the volcanic mines and also asked Irina to take off her armor so as not to get heat stroke. He didn't expect her to take his advice and start undressing so quickly. The girl remained in the underwear which emphasized her figure. The heroine noticed how Sam was looking at her and he felt ashamed. Irina said that she goes in for sports every day, that's why she has such a good figure. The hero decided to compliment her using charisma and said that her beauty and strength attracted him very much. But Irina said that they needed to hurry and went with a quick step deep into the cave. Sam heard the ground crunch under Irina's feet and tried to stop her. But it was too late and the warrior was already falling down into a deep hole. Having landed, Irina examined herself and realized that she had not been hurt but she noticed that she stepped with her hands and feet into something dirty and nasty. The hero shouted that it was slimy acid and that they urgently needed to get out before the body dissolved in it. Irina was very frightened. The liquid burned her skin and dissolved her clothes. Sports stockings warrior Irina also began to dissolve. The hero tried to lend a hand to the girl in order to save her and pull her out of the pit with poison. He succeeded, but the girl still had poisonous mucus on her delicate skin. Irina tried to cleanse her skin with the divine light technique, but it didn't work out for her, and she thought that now she wouldn't be able to wear such revealing outfits, as the skin would be ruined. The hero said that magic is powerless here and you need to turn to folk methods. The hero was ashamed to admit that this was such a method. Irene had no time for embarrassment, because a few more minutes and her skin would no longer have its former beauty. Then the hero seated her on the ground and took her long, gorgeous leg closer to him. The girl did not fully understand what he was going to do to help her. The hero was worried, but could not allow the girl to be harmed. The hero began to lick her leg, each finger separately. He moved higher and higher, and the girl writhed in his strong arms. The hero continued to use his tongue. Irina could not restrain her emotions and control her body. The girl asked him to be gentle, and said that she had never been with a man before. The hero received a new achievement that made the tongue so dexterous that it could be used to knit a sweater. An hour later, the heroes completed their rescue operation and Sam gave his outerwear to Irene. 
Irene was pleased to smell Sam's clothes, but she still felt weak. They moved further into the cave, Sam helping her walk. Meanwhile, on the floor of the cave, a fragile girl with a beautiful figure lay tied up. The goblins looked at her, licking their lips, dreaming of tasting fresh human meat. There was a strong blow with a mace on the ground. The goblin was carried away by an explosive wave. An angry woman appeared, who screamed at the goblins why they dragged the girl if she ordered the kidnapping of strong men. One of the goblins pointed to a man in a cage, to which the woman stated that strong and fat are two different things, and with such men she will not be able to create strong offspring. She was shown a demi-human with a bull's face. She replied that this was not the race she needed. They pointed to a man. She said she was too old and weak. The woman heard steps that were heard in the cave. This attracted her attention. The heroes showed up and Irina told Sam that they were in the Goblin Queen's lair. The Goblin Queen saw Sam and was so startled that she couldn't formulate her thoughts right away. In the woman's eyes, Sam looked amazing, the kind of guy she'd never met before. Sam's charisma was already affecting the woman and she couldn't take her eyes off him. Irina called the woman a monster and ordered the kidnapped people to be released. To the surprise of everyone, she quickly agreed, but decided to set conditions. She decided to exchange the prisoners for the protagonist in order to take advantage of his ideal genetics. The heroes were a little surprised by this development of events and did not know what to do. The Goblin Queen said she wanted to taste fresh flesh, not to kill and eat, but to create the perfect offspring. Irina said that she would never give the hero into the clutches of this terrible woman. But the hero feignedly said that he was ready to sacrifice his body for the sake of saving the hostages. The queen said that she had had enough of idle chatter and it was time to talk in private. At the snap of her fingers, the ground trembled under Irina's feet, after which it began to leave from under her feet. Irina left the meeting place and flew down. How far, no one knew. She had a magic hammer with her, and with the help of it she was able to land on her feet. She realized that she was in a magical maze and she urgently needed to get out to save Sam. Meanwhile, the Goblin Queen sat half-dressed on her plush bed. The bound hero knelt before the Queen and waited for what would happen next. The girl said that Sam had nothing to be afraid of because she did not eat people. She said that goblins brought the kidnapped people by mistake. She just asked them to find her a man with good genes to give birth to an outstanding goblin. The hero was flattered by her choice of a man, and the Queen said that after he helped her, she would let him and the locals go home. The hero replied that he agreed to her terms if she promised to fulfill what was said. The girl said that she would untie Sam and warned that her character and habits in bed might seem wild to him. Sam instantly broke the ropes that bound him, thereby making it clear that he was not afraid of her wild behavior. He said that she would still beg him for mercy because he was confident in his abilities. He ripped the queen's clothes with one touch. Now there was nothing between them. Sam asked if she could use her toy to increase her pleasure. The girl replied that this toy could not harm her and he could try. She turned her back to him and leaned against the headboard. Sam took the spiked bat in his right hand and began rhythmically touching her queen. The queen moaned, not from pain but from pleasure. Very soon he took out his bat without spikes and was already wielding it inside. Despite the fact that the queen was very strong and enduring, she no longer had the strength to even say enough. Meanwhile, Irina wandered through the maze and tried to find a way out. The girl decided that if she could not find a way out, she would definitely do it herself. The girl began to pass through the walls, thanks to the magic hammer. She waved it right and left, and now she had the confidence that she would get out very soon. In the queen's bedroom, it was all over. The woman could not speak. She only nodded. Sam asked the queen not to tell Irene and other people anything. The wall began to crack in the room and the blows were heard more and more loudly. The wall of the room was blown to smithereens. It looked like an explosion. Irina ran in, screaming that she was going to save the hero from the dirty goblin queen. Irina noticed that the queen was lying half naked on the bed. Sweat was flowing from her and she was unable to talk. The hero pretended that he was conducting a sacred ritual to cleanse the soul of the queen from demons. The queen began to play along with him and say that she had thought everything over and was ready to take the path of correction. The girl asked how Sam managed to achieve the correction of the evil that lives in this woman. The hero said that he lectured her on the path of divine light and she rethought her life. Irina asked how you can trust her after she kidnapped people from the village. The queen said that she had not harmed them. She had already sent them home and asked for forgiveness. The warrior said that she would forgive her for the first time. But if this happens again, then there will be no more chance. Sam thanked Irina for her trust and said that they were both tired and needed to return to the village to rest. Before letting Sam go, the queen asked him when there was free time to instruct her to let the true one a few more times. 
We move to the village of Saima, located a few hours from the Goblin Caves. The hero shows the village where he allegedly serves as a priest and conducts a tour of it for Arena. The people gathered around Sam and his companion. Everyone thanked him for saving their relatives. But Sam began to tell everyone that he could never save them alone, and therefore Irina from the Church of Divine Light should be thanked. The girl said that it was her duty as the heiress of the seven great saints to help people. The children came running and began to praise Irina for her beauty and say how lucky Sam was to have such a girlfriend. The girl was confused and did not know what to answer to such a statement. But Sam came to her rescue and explained to the children that he and Irene were just friends. The girl did not understand why she was overcome by such emotions and why she wanted to agree with the children. The hero apologized to Irene, since there was no hotel in the village, and he had to offer her a bed in his room. Night fell, the village was illuminated by the full moon. There was something romantic about it. The hero did not sleep. He thought about how to move on to a closer relationship with Irene. He knew that he had almost won her over. Geneva appeared on the hero's bed. She said that they need to meet periodically so that the chain does not lose elasticity, otherwise it will break. The hero was afraid that Irene might see them, but Geneva said that she cast an invisibility spell. Therefore, it does not matter at all what strength the groans will be heard in the room. Irene slept, and behind her there was a merger of two bodies, beating in ecstasy from pleasure. Irene felt the room shake, but she could not see what was happening. It seemed to her that an earthquake had begun. Irene thought that it seemed to her she really wanted to turn around and see how the hero was sleeping. But she was not shy. Two bodies intertwined a few centimeters from the warrior. This was very exciting for Geneva. A drop of sweat from Ginevra's face rolled down onto Irene's cheek, who immediately felt it. She immediately knew that it was demon sweat as she felt a strong burning sensation on her skin. Irene jumped up and yelled that there were demons nearby and she needed to be ready for battle. Sam, hiding the girl under the covers, said that there was nothing to worry about because no one could be here. Irene said that she could not be mistaken because her body was subjected to divine baptism and is very sensitive to demons. The hero began to laugh it off and say that a demon could not fit in such a small room. Irene noticed that the hero had a red face and asked if everything was all right with him. The girl under the covers continued to test the hero for strength and did not let his body out of hers. The hero tried to prove with all his appearance that everything was in order, but a fire was burning inside. The girl said that she felt the demon's heavy breathing and would definitely find it. She noticed the hero's blanket rising and falling unnaturally. She rushed to the bed to rip the blanket off the hero and see what she was looking for. But there was no one under the blanket. The hero was as embarrassed as possible, but this was not noticeable in his body. Irene looked at the hero with big eyes and began to stutter and stutter when she saw him without a blanket. Ginevra watched from the side. Under the influence of the spell, she managed to escape. And now she thought that she did not want to leave Sam, even after the mission. Irene remembered Sam's body. She was embarrassed, but the desire grew stronger. She tried to sleep so as not to pounce on Sam immediately and take him by force. She dreamed of a temple of light where Sam was the head priest. He fascinated her with his appearance and asked if she was ready to accept the holy baptism of the Pope. She did not try to resist. She was ready for whatever was required of her. She knelt before the Pope and begged for the sins she wanted to commit. The Holy Father held her hair and asked if she was ready to receive the divine light of the Holy Father into her body. Irene woke up. Sweat was dripping from her forehead. Everything was burning inside. The desire to be with the hero overwhelmed her. The hero was not in the room, and Irene thought it was for the best. Sam came into the room, said good morning, and invited her to breakfast. Meanwhile, Sam played with the children and gave them sweets. Irene considered Sam a good person with a sense of justice and respect for adults and children, and she wanted to invite him to join her church. A member of the Divine Light Church named Stan arrived in the village. He said he was looking for his warrior sister named Irene. A little chicken ran up to him and soiled his shiny new leather shoes. Stan got angry and decided that whoever dared to humiliate him should not live. A loud pop of the soul was heard, a short whistle and only a wet spot was left of the chicken. The villagers were ready to throw themselves at the evil man because they loved the baby so much. Stan said it was just a chicken and shouldn't be made into a tragedy. But the inhabitants were not satisfied with the answer of the killer because the baby was the talismans of their village. Stan said that he was too important to figure in society and could not ask for forgiveness from anyone. A huge turd flew into his face which covered his eyes, nose and mouth. The villagers continued to throw turds at the rude man, telling him not to underestimate the village. Residents continued to throw everything they could get their hands on Stan. Eggs, poop, vegetables and garbage. 
Stan, under the pressure of the villagers, went back and did not notice how he approached the cliff. I stumbled and flew down. I could not do anything so as not to fall. Below, a surprise awaited him. He fell into a pit with waste, emitting a fetid odour. He was very angry and promised to punish all the villagers who defamed him. Near the garbage pit was Irene, who asked Stan what he was doing here. He replied that he was worried about her and missed her very much. She warned him not to come near, as his smell was like a mixture of dead animals and rotting vegetables. Stan told how the people of their village attacked him and threw him into a waste pit. The villagers asked, Since when can members of the Divine Light Church oppress ordinary people and kill animals? The hero said that the killed chicken was a symbol and a talisman of the village for several years, and if Stan does not apologize, the inhabitants will not calm down. In order not to look like a blockhead in front of Irina, Stan publicly asked for forgiveness for his unworthy behavior and compensated for the damage financially. Stan took a bath and said that the mission was completed and they could return to the Church of Divine Light. Sam said that he was pleased to meet the girl and hoped that they would meet again someday. The girl began to ask the hero to join the Church of Divine Light and follow her. Sam said that he was a simple priest and not worthy to be near them, but inside he was glad that the plan worked. Stan began to talk about how not everyone can join the Church of Divine Light, much less the village priest. Residents intervened in the conversation and began to say that Sam is not just a priest, but the pride of the whole village. Irene said that everyone is equal before the Divine Light, regardless of origin and circumstances, and therefore she vouches for him. The hero promised to do everything in his power to justify her hopes. Stan agreed, but said that he would still have to pass the test on an equal footing with everyone else. Stan invited Irene to ride with him and offered the hero a separate horse. But Irene refused the offer and said that she would go with Sam. Stan was worried about the fact that he ruined the impression of himself in front of Irene, and now it will be difficult to restore it. Stan's horse fell and lost consciousness. He did not understand what had happened to her. The hero said that it was because of the stench from the garbage pit, which would not be washed off for several more days. Irene suggested that Stan meet at their destination, near the Church of Divine Light. The hero was very happy to travel alone with Irene, because this way they could become closer to each other much earlier. Stan was very angry with the hero and promised that he would not leave it just like that anyway. Irene would be his girlfriend. The heroes rode on a white horse. They were only the two of them, and nature was around. Irene asked if it was necessary to slow down, since this is the hero's first ride on horseback. The hero thought that he had already seen this scene before and decided to check it out. He hugged the girl's waist tightly and used the burning feeling technique. A fire flared up inside the girl. She felt the blood rush to different parts of the body. Suddenly she screamed and realized that it was just a dream, so terrible and sweet at the same time. The girl said that they had almost arrived at their destination and that the holy city was already visible. The city was beautiful. The buildings looked neat and powerful. Irene said that the city is the richest place on the continent. It houses the seat of the Church of Divine Light. The hero liked the city and was already impatient to begin the test for becoming a member of the church. The hero wanted to rent a hotel room, but Irene offered him a room in her house. She said that her house was very spacious and he should like it there. Ten minutes later, they came to Irene's house and the hero could not believe his eyes. He asked the girl how she decided to tell him that it was just a cozy house. The hero began to think about who Irene is if she has such a castle at her disposal. The girl said that she inherited the house from her parents. Many years ago, the girl's parents were killed by demons, but she miraculously managed to escape. When it was the turn of the demons to kill Irene, she was not afraid of death. She wanted to leave after her parents. And then a flaming ball appeared, and the demons died, unable to bear the heat of the divine fire. She was saved by the previous owner of the Hammer of Light, setting an example that she was not afraid of demons. Since then, Irene has joined the Church of Divine Light and helps people fight evil spirits. The hero pretended to smile, but was afraid that she might find out about his true nature. At the entrance, they were met by the butler Sebastian, who was delighted at the appearance of a guest in the house. He said he was glad to meet Mrs. Irene's young man. The girl said that they were just friends and that he would stay for a few days to prepare for the entrance test. Sebastian said that while the mistress was gone, he hired two demi-humans as maids who could help the guest settle into the bedroom. And then Sam saw his familiar girls whom he had saved at the auction. The hero was very surprised by such a meeting. He was interested in the question of why they were here. Hannah and Bella said there was nothing to worry about, and they would escort the guest to a place where he could comfortably settle down. The girls led him to one of the rooms of the castle. They said that he could enter. It was a bedroom for guests. Sam entered the room and said that he was waiting for an explanation from his friends 
He was interested in how they ended up here, and most importantly, for what purpose. The friends said that they were sent by their mistress Ginevra to assist the hero in carrying out her insidious plan. Sam thought that he still knew very little about Ginevra's capabilities, but in any case, it wouldn't hurt to help him. Hannah and Bella were glad that the hero took their stay in the castle on the positive side. They promised to do whatever it took. Meanwhile, Sam decided to relax in the bathroom. It was nice for him to take off his priest's clothes and take a break from everything. But Sam's calm was broken. Someone entered the bathroom. The first thing he saw was slender legs and a towel put on a naked body. It was Hannah and Bella, who were already without clothes, only wet towels covering their bodies. They wanted to take a bath with Sam. The hero did not immediately understand why they had come and began to ask them what they needed. Hannah said that she and her friends are very grateful to him because he helped them gain freedom and escape death. Now it's their turn to repay him. The girls entered the water. Hannah offered to rub the hero's back, and Bella approached Sam from the front. She dove under the water and Sam felt her hand grab him between his legs. The girl suddenly emerged from the water. Sam was worried about whether she had time to unclench her hand under the water. Bella said that he doesn't have to worry. She will do everything so that he likes it and doesn't regret saving them from death. Sam noticed how transparent Bella had become and asked Hannah what was going on. She replied that Bella is from the Slug Clan and when she comes into contact with water, she can change her body taking on any shape. Sam decided to touch the girl and his hand went inside her body. He was pleased with these sensations. The girl said that she also felt pleasant sensations from the hero's touches and she wanted to feel his whole body. It was visible how her watery shell separated and enveloped Sam's body. Both of them were overcome by pleasant sensations. It seems to Sam that he is at the pinnacle of bliss. He felt Bella with every cell of his body. The girl's sensations were even stronger. Pleasure spread throughout her body. The girl could not stand so many emotions. From overexcitation, her watery body began to split into molecules. It seemed there would be an explosion. Hannah managed to pull the hero out of the water body before splitting occurred. Sam looked in the direction where the explosion had occurred a few seconds ago and saw Bella. But she was not alone. There were four girls in the water, and each of them looked like Bella. Hannah explained that this is a skill of the Slug Clan. They can create several clones that have common feelings. The hero never expected that he could try to play with so many girls at the same time. He was glad. We are transported to the kitchen of the castle, where the warrior Irene communicates with her butler Sebastian. The girl thanks the man for the delicious, freshly squeezed orange juice. Sebastian asks the hostess about her attitude towards Sam, who was brought to her house. He considers her to be in love, but although the girl blushes at these words, she still says that there is nothing and cannot be between them. Sebastian looked at the family portrait of the mistress and her late parents and remembered her mother's words that thanks to the red skirt, the gentleman fell under her spell. With sadness, Sebastian realized that he would never forget the expression on Irina's father's face when it came to his wife. The girl meanwhile left the kitchen, saying that she still had unfinished business and needed to run. Sebastian understood how the hostess had grown since her parents passed away. Meanwhile, in Sam's room, Bella was lying on the bed, exhausted, she was a human again, and she had only one body. The hero, lying with his head on Hannah's lap, thought that if he were not a demon, he would not have mastered so many girls in one night. Hannah looked at the tired Sam with love. She really enjoyed the night she spent with him. It was magical. The hero lay there. He didn't want to get up after such a stormy night. He needed rest. The hero received a four-star character card and the ability to transform into a fox. The second game card also gave him game points and the ability to transform into a slime. The calm was disturbed by loud and strong knocks on the hero's bedroom door. It was Irina, and she wanted to talk to Sam, but it was impossible to open the door for her when there were half-naked girls lying on his bed. But the door was not locked, and the girl said that if he was awake, she would come in. Irina sharply opened the door to the room. The hero's heart squeezed harder, and the girls on the bed instantly used their camouflage abilities. Sam was sitting in the bed under the blanket, with a slug on his head covering the tips of his ears, and a small fox lying on his lap. The hero stroked it like an ordinary cat. Irina asked why there was a slug and a fox in his room and why he was acting so strangely. The hero came up with a stupid excuse and said that they came from the forest. He fed them and they didn't want to leave. Irina believed in his stories, said that he had a good heart and her choice in his favor turned out to be very correct. She wants to help him pass the test of divine light and therefore will pass on information about special training. Sam thought that this would be very useful and said out loud that he didn't know if she was doing the right thing. The girl said that during the test, 
a staff of light would be used against him, which creates illusions, turning people's main weaknesses against them. These weaknesses are lust, gluttony, greed, envy, anger. People with these vices will not pass the test. Sam put his hand on his heart and said that his actions and thoughts are pure, and everything he does is for the sake of justice, and therefore he will pass the test. The girl said that she believed in him because besides lust, she saw no other sins in him. Sam acknowledged Irina's position and asked how she could help him in this situation. The girl took off her dress. She was not wearing underwear, her skin was very soft and her figure was slender. The hero was amazed by her action and did not understand why she did it. But the girl explained that he needed to pacify his lust, train with her, then he would be able to resist illusions during the test. Sam approached the girl, put his arm around her waist and pulled her close asking what would happen if he couldn't control himself. Irina replied that then her body would be desecrated, but she believed him, and he would not let her down. Sam asked what they would do next to increase his resilience level. The girl took out a magic emerald and squeezed it in her fist. A tight suit began to appear on her body. Her hair fluttered in the wind and gave off an exciting scent. The hero looked at her body. He thought about whether he needed this test. Sam thought that if you just looked from the outside, it might not be so difficult to restrain yourself. He also mentally thanked the fox and slug that Hannah and Bella had turned into, because the stormy night had relieved him of the stress. But Irina began to come closer. The situation became more complicated. She began hugging him from behind, breathing heavily in his ear, which set Sam on fire in his head. The hero held on as best he could, although it was very difficult. Irina tried her best to seduce Sam, but she really hoped that she would not succeed. After an hour of bullying the hero, the girl got dressed, said that now he would definitely succeed and said goodbye to him. The door slammed shut, leaving Sam, Hannah, and Bella outside the room. The girls were surprised by the guy's resilience, because they saw how passionately Irina tried to seduce him. He turned around, beads of sweat running down his face. His eye was twitching. He said that if they didn't help him, he would burn from the inside. He was overexcited. Although the girls were wary of this attitude, they were not against repeating the night games and having fun once again. The next morning came, the day of testing the Church of Divine Light came. Irina asked Sam why his face looked tired. Sam replied that he was nervous before the test and was fine. The girl led the hero to the church where the test was to take place. Already in the church, Sam saw a man in the robes of a nun. In his hands there was a staff. This person was a delightful girl named Franca. She introduced herself as one of the seven sages of Divine Light and the Staff of Light. Sam introduced himself as the priest of a small village. Stan appeared in the church, who began to call the hero a redneck and also say that he did not have enough strength to pass the test. Franca said that a person whose thoughts are impure will fail the test and will suffer fatal injuries. Sam spoke about his confidence and that he would not let Irina down, who believed in him so much. The girl beamed after hearing Sam's words. She began to see the hero more attractive. In that case, go to the testing room. We can begin, said the serious Franca. According to the hero, Franca looked very cute and he thought that passing the test would not be difficult. Irina told him not to be deceived by Franca's appearance, because each of the seven sages of divine light has very strong abilities. Franca is a staff of light and is known for her love of torture. No one can withstand her torment. Sam walked up to the door leading to the testing room and said he was ready to begin. Franca said that he could come in and the test would begin, which would put everything in its place. The girl took off the blindfold and told me to look into her eyes. They were very unusual. Sam tried to compliment her eyes, but she cut him off. The girl talked about how she was wounded in a battle with demons and lost her sight. But divine light gave her the power to see through people. She found herself in Sam's inner world and decided to take a look around to see what he was like. Franca was very surprised when she was greeted. She was greeted by five model-looking guys, all of whom looked like Sam, but dressed in business suits rather than priestly robes. Inside Sam's world, the girl had different eyes and saw everything. She was interested in studying the strange inner world of the hero. Sam, in a business suit, invited Frank to sit down and talk to get to know him better. The girl accepted the hero's proposal. She liked such communication. Sam poured alcohol and invited her to drink a glass of red wine. The girl did not know how it would end and persuaded herself to stick to what the divine light had bequeathed. Franca said that as the staff of light and one of the seven sages, she should not drink alcohol. Sam said that they are in his world and this all happens only in her head, so nothing prevents her from breaking the rules. Franca thought that Sam was right. She wanted to believe him. She began to drink glass after glass, forgetting about why she was in Sam's world. Two hours passed. The alcohol in the bottles disappeared very quickly. 
Despite the large amount of alcohol that was drunk, the girl asked for more. Sam told the girl that she was already drunk. Everything was going according to the hero's plan. Frank blamed Sam for her condition and promised to punish him in the name of divine light. He gently took her hand and said that he understood her soul. She understands her loneliness, which has already become a part of her. Franca replied that she did not need anyone or anything except the divine light, for which she was ready to give her life. But at the same time, the girl thought about the quiet conversations behind her back. They feel sorry for her, because she cannot even see the divine light she serves. So she hurts others to numb her own. With every word, the girl realized that Sam was right. Sam said that such a young and beautiful girl needs to try all the delights of this life and not limit herself to anything. He snapped his fingers and the location changed. Now the girl was sitting on a large soft bed in a red room, which conveyed the internal energy of lust and debauchery. Sam said that he could show her something better than divine light, but the girl was afraid. The hero said that what was happening was unreal and she had nothing to fear because it would not affect her in real life. He extended his hand to her and told her to follow him into a world of delight and lust. The hero took out his staff of light and showed it to Franca. She was pleasantly surprised. Their bodies merged together and Sam inserted his staff into the girl, spasms of pleasure accompanying her body. And then she felt a pleasant warm energy spreading throughout her body. She couldn't control herself and let out a long groan. The hero received an achievement card and the ability to use divine light. The girl woke up in the real world in the hall where the test took place. She saw that she and Sam were lying on the floor and some of their clothes were missing, and she realized that everything had happened in the outside world. Sam replied that it doesn't matter whether it's fantasy or reality, but the main thing is that Franca liked it. She asked Sam who he was and why he did this to her, to which he replied that he was just a priest from the village who believed in the divine light. Sam said that if the girl doesn't want anyone to know what happened between them, then she needs to give him a test. The girl realized that she had no choice and now the situation has changed radically. Now it is not she who keeps people in fear. Now she is afraid. The girl almost screamed. She only now noticed that her vision had returned. Sam, putting on the shirt, said that the reason for her blindness was that her mind and soul were not one. But when she began to listen to her desires, she was healed naturally. The hero said that Franca should arrange her personal life. Then everything will work out in other areas of life. The girl was delighted with the meeting with the hero and could not refuse him his requests. The two of them left the testing room, where Irina was waiting for them. Franca said that the test was over. Irina began to ask how everything went and what the outcome of the test was. Stan was prematurely happy, even offering to help take Sam to his village on his own horse. But Franco loudly declared that Sam's faith in the divine light was stronger than ever and that he had passed the test. Irina sincerely congratulated the hero, said that she believed in him and was very happy. Stan was very upset that Sam was able to pass the test and become closer to Irene. Irina also noticed that Frankie's vision had been restored and asked how she did it. Franca did not know how to tell anyone about this miraculous healing. Sam intervened and said that Mrs. Franca had been blessed with divine light for her devotion and sincerity. The lady replied that everything was so. Her body was filled with divine light and healed. Irina was very happy and told Sam that successfully passing the test should definitely be celebrated. But Franca stopped them, saying that Sam had just joined the church and he needed to go there to accept the teaching. The hero said that if the instructions require it, then he agrees to go to church right now. Sam and Irina walked towards the exit of the castle. Stan angrily looked after them. He turned to Frank, said that he did not believe Sam's honesty and asked if she had made any dubious deals with him. The girl replied that she respects Stan but believes that he is minding his own business since taking the entrance exam is her business. On the way to the church, Sam and Irina stopped at a cafe where a guy bought a milkshake from a cowgirl. She looked very attractive. Next, Irina invited the hero to go to her favorite clothing store. They were met by an attractive girl who greeted Irina and said that she had not visited them for a long time and asked what her boyfriend's name was. Irina sheepishly told the girl that she and Sam were just friends. The girl said that she understood her because everything starts with friendship, and then invited her into the hall to choose purchases. When Irina headed into the hall, the girl quietly turned to Sam and said that he had made the right choice, because Irina was a very good girl. Irina asked Sam to come to the changing room so that he could help her. She couldn't fasten the clasp on the back and asked Sam to do it. She was very shy. She said that this dress size was just right for her last year, but now she can't button it up. The hero decided that this request would not be difficult for him and he would cope. However, the clasp did not give in to the hero, and he decided to use magical power. 
He pulled the clasp with such force that he tore it out of the dress. It completely came apart and began to fall from Irina's beautiful figure. He did not expect that this could happen, and now he did not know where to run so as not to run into Irina's wrath. The girl burst into a loud scream. She called Sam a pervert. It could be heard far outside the store. And Sam also received a punch in the face for his tricks. But it was a rush of emotion, and the girl quickly regretted what she had done. She told the hero that she would meet him later and left. She was embarrassed. The hero once again thought that he needed to be more careful, because if Irina found out about his essence, she would definitely kill him. We are transported three days forward to the place where Franca lives. The girl lets out a muffled groan, her strength running out. Sam says that with every prayer they share, his faith grows stronger. She can't say anything to the girl. She just nods her head. The hero has tired her. The hero notices that the girl is worried about something and asks him about it. The girl says that Stan is planning something bad and the hero needs to beware of him because he is a very powerful sage of the Divine Church of Light. Sam said that he had nothing to fear because Mistress Irina was next to him and Stan would not dare to harm him. The hero went to the castle across the street. It was late at night. He heard someone sneaking behind him and said out loud that the pursuer had better leave. He turned to look at the man who was following him. Behind him stood five men with weapons. They were aggressive. A fight could not be avoided. Based on their outfits, Sam determined that they were mercenaries and they were following the instructions of the customer. And it was true. One of them, with a bald head, said that their task was to blow off his head. The hero decided not to give them a chance, and to attack first he used his magic. He called upon Princess Siri for help, throwing away her achievement card. Siri shows up and immediately reprimands Sam for throwing her card so hard. But after a few seconds, her mood returns to normal, and she asks how she can help him. Sam says that mercenaries who received a task from an unknown person want to kill him. The thugs do not take the princess seriously and invite each other to have fun with her before killing her, because she looks very attractive. The girl asked the hero if he wanted these stupid, impolite pigs to die. The hero said that she had the opportunity to have fun and train on weaklings. The bald gang leader told them to shut up and surrender or face a harsh death. The battle began. The long-haired bandit sent a fireball at the heroes. Princess Siri easily deflected his blow, cutting the ball in half. She was attacked by two other mercenaries, but she easily fended off each of them. Sam admired Sister Siri's fighting technique. She had noticeably become a better fighter when suddenly another gang member crept up from behind and stabbed Sam in the chest with a long blade. He figured that if Sam died, the summoning technique would dissipate and Siri would disappear. However, after the blow, Sam's shadow clone dissolved, leaving the enemy stunned. The hero said that he knew about attacks from behind more than anyone else and therefore thought out escape routes in advance. But the blonde did not give up. He said that the village priest could not defeat him and his gang and was already flying at him with a knife in his hand. Sam weighed the pros and cons and realized that the enemy was counting on his magical power, and he decided to act hand to hand. With his right hand, he drove into the enemy's jaw. The blow was so strong that the asphalt under the body of the fallen man broke in five places. Many bones were probably broken as the enemy could not move. Sam was clearly pleased with his knockout blow and felt that he was in good physical shape. Princess Siri also had everything ready. No one except the two heroes nearby could stand on their feet. The girl said that he should find out who was behind the attack so as not to wait for a second time. Sam replied that he could guess who the customer might be and would look into this matter. The hero thanked Princess Siri and said that it was time for her to return to her world. The girl asked if he really considered her just a tool that he could use at any moment, without giving anything in return. Sam felt embarrassed and asked what he could do for her so that she would not consider him a bad friend. The girl said that if they spent the night together, he would not owe her anything and would be able to call her again if she needed help. We are transported to the hotel, where the manager asks the heroes if they have a preference for the love room. Sam said he wanted to try the most unusual room they had in the hotel. Princess Siri was embarrassed and surprised by such a hotel, which has unusual love rooms. Sam told the princess to put aside her worries and trust him, even though he himself didn't know which room they were going to. In the room, they saw various oblong-shaped objects. The girl said that it was the first time she had seen such strange objects and was not sure that she wanted to use them. The object began to move and vibrate. Siri fell into a stupor and could not say a word. Sam said there was nothing to worry about and they would figure out how to use it as the evening went on. The girl lay down on the bed. She did not understand why she felt shame. We are abruptly transported to the Church of Divine Light where Irina, Sam and Stan are standing. The hero yawns because he spent the whole night exploring various oblong-shaped objects with his girlfriend. 
Irina asks the hero why he didn't get enough sleep. Sam says he studied new techniques all night and didn't have time to sleep. Stan warns that when the Archbishop of the Church comes, Sam needs to behave decently and not as usual. Sam said he was much better behaved than Stan Stinky, who liked to kill little animals. Stan gets angry and promises to impale the hero when they leave the church. The Archbishop appears on the stage, greets the arrivals and addresses the newcomer. Sam greets the boss and feels the fashionable aura emanating from him. The Archbishop immediately gets down to business and says that the activity of demons has increased recently and he has three tasks for them. Stan needs to destroy the demons who are killing merchants outside the city. He accepts the task. Irina's task is to track down the demons that live in the city and destroy them. The girl accepts the task. The hero is sent to the Red Moon nightclub. Without finishing the task, he immediately accepts it. Then he realizes that he has already heard about this club and asks again about the task. The Archbishop says that he has information about the sale of demon slaves in this club, and his task is to prevent transactions from happening and demons from entering their city. Irina asked why Sam had such a difficult task. The main one replied that the Church of Divine Light does not need useless people, and if she believes in him, then he will cope. Sam confidently stated that he would cope with the task and would not let Irina down. The girl was pleased to hear the hero's words, and she decided that she needed to help him in his mission. Irina took out a bag full of money and gave it to the hero. The girl said that he needed a lot of money. Since he would not be able to withdraw it through the security, he would have to ransom the slaves. Sam realized that the Church of Divine Light is not as simple as it seems from the outside. The hero thanked Irina, but refused the money, saying that he had a plan according to which he would not have to spend her money on slaves. The girl asked what his plan was, but Sam said that she would see everything herself when the time came. Night had fallen in the city. The moon illuminated the main street. A man leading a horse shouted at someone on the road to get away. A girl with a very familiar hair color was lying on the ground, showing her hopeless situation with all her appearance. The horse driver told the girl to get out of the way and not disturb his important gentleman. An obviously rich gentleman, covered in gold chains, looked out of the carriage and asked what was happening. The girl apologized, saying she had no choice, and she began to make eyes at the gentleman, using the magic of charisma. The man immediately fell in love with the attractive person. The carriage was moving towards the Red Moon nightclub. The carriage shook all the way, either from the bad road or from something else. The horse driver listened all the way to the sounds coming from the carriage. Upon arrival, a man got out of the carriage. But as you already understood, it was our hero who turned into a rich gentleman and told the servant not to enter the carriage since the girl was resting. Sam was glad that his plan worked, and now he, in the guise of a rich man, will be able to participate in the auction. Meanwhile, the gentleman himself was resting in the carriage. At the reception, the girl recognized Mr. Stone because he was a regular customer of their establishment and loved to spend time with their slaves. Sam, in the guise of Stone, said that he needed what he always needed, and now he was already lying in the room and waiting for the girls who were about to arrive. Two half-naked girls entered the room and said that they missed Mr. Stone. While he was not listening, they said that it was very easy to make money on him, because entertainment with him lasted only a few minutes. The hero thought to himself that today they would not be able to get their honestly earned money so easily. An hour later, Sam called the manager and said he needed help. He said that the girls she sent to him did not cope with their mission and passed out earlier than he needed, and asked if there was fresh goods. The manager replied that the client's desire is law for them and they will be able to help him with his problem. She invited him to the dungeon, where new slaves were sitting behind bars. She showed him three tied-up girls who had very short dresses. She said that these demons are a very rare race and asked which one he wanted to choose. Sam said that it was not serious to offer such a rich gentleman only one girl, and he would take three. The girl asked how he was going to pay, in cash or by check. Sam said that he would pay with a check for any amount, because money is not a problem for their family. The girl asked Sam, in the guise of Mr. Stone, if he could buy her if he had so much money. The hero said that he could buy it next time, but now he asked to pack these three girls. The girl said that she would go get their clothes, and in the meantime he could get to know them. Sam walked up to the cage and told the girls he wouldn't hurt them. The girls were afraid of the hero, because everyone who wanted to buy a slave said that they would not cause harm. Then Sam took off his mask for a while and told them that he was a demon like them and had come to save them. The girls were very happy about the amazing rescue and thanked the hero. Sam said there was nothing to worry about and they would be free soon. The manager returned with the clothes, but Sam completely forgot to return to the guise of stone. There was silence. Sam used charisma magic and ordered the woman to submit. The manager obeyed and sat down on her knees in front of the new owner. Sam turned into stone, 
told the girls to change clothes and follow him and act natural. When Sam was leading the girls, other club guests were jealous of the amount of money he could afford to buy three slaves at once. Sam pretended to be a tough gentleman and rudely answered and asked why they were looking at him like that. They left the club, the hero's plan was a success, and now they needed to go to a safe place. But then the real Mr. Stone appeared and began shouting that the imposter needed to be stopped and the slaves returned. Sam realized that he had been discovered and there was no need to hide anymore. The hero and the girls began to run away, with the nightclub security chasing after them. Irina walked by and asked what Sam was doing here. The hero shouted that he needed help and would explain everything later. The girl reacted very quickly and rushed to the hero's defense. She used magic and created a barrier of divine light through which the pursuers could not pass. Thirty minutes later, Sam and the demon girls were already at Irina's castle. The girls were exhausted and scared. They were afraid that they would be killed because they knew what the castle was. Irina asked Sam why he brought demons to her house because the archbishop told him to destroy them. Sam said that he was not going to kill them and wanted to give them freedom. Sam said that it is wrong to kill creatures just because they are not of the same race as you. Because among people there are also evil people who kill others. Irina said that they could no longer be in the castle, to which Sam replied that he would teleport them to a place where they would not have contact with people. And indeed Sam used the device to transport the girls to another area. The girls were moved to a safe place, to the hot springs. To a place where our old friends, Princess Maggie and the former owner of the Intimate Services Salon, will take care of them. The princess looked at the girls. They were confused. The girls did not know what awaited them, but the situation was favorable. Sister Maggie said that she would teach them how to survive and that they should not be afraid of her. She began training the girls one at a time, with the goal of increasing their stamina to further satisfy Brother Sam. We are transported to the house of Franco's sister, where the hero arrived. The girl says that he is in danger because he failed the first task and did not destroy the demons, as the Archbishop bequeathed. The hero says that that's why he came to her, to ask for help, and also to connect him with the Archbishop for a conversation. The girl says that he is lucky and he can atone for his guilt, since today the only daughter of a rich businessman was kidnapped, and if he saves her, he will be forgiven. Sam was very happy about this situation and asked Franca to tell him more about what happened. The girl put her stockinged foot on the hero's shoulder and told him not to worry because she could help him. Franco said she was trading information about the businessman's daughter for a sensual and gentle foot massage. Sam said that the mistress will be pleased because giving girls pleasure is the meaning of his spiritual path. Loud female moans began to be heard from the room. The parishioners heard that they were coming from Franco's bedroom. People said that Franco was punishing infidels for the safety of all believers. The girl held her mouth with her hand, barely holding back a scream, waves of pleasure convulsively spreading throughout her body. Sam decided to play a joke and said that in the eyes of people, she is still the same saint as she was before meeting him. Franco replied that nothing has changed since then. He just opened her eyes and now she sees the path of divine light even better. The hero said that it was time to discuss information about the stolen daughter of a businessman. The girl said that with the help of her magical vision and magic, she found out the location of the kidnapped girl. She is in the lair of a gang that calls itself Razor. We cut to the Razor Gang building, where Sam is already trying to come up with a plan to break in. The hero decides to use a plan that always works. Cotton, a smokescreen, and we understand that Sam is turning into an attractive girl. He, in the guise of a girl, approaches the entrance to the building, and he directly asks the guards how he can find the Razor Gang. It is worth noting that Sam chose a very elegant appearance in order to save the girl as quickly as possible. The security confusedly asks the beauty why she needed the Razor Gang. Sam decided to come up with the most elegant lie and said that the leader of the gang invited him, and if he didn't show up on time, they might get hurt, so they needed to let him through. But the guard turned out to be not so simple. He knows that his owner does not bring girls home, but goes to have fun outside his borders. Sam has to use the skill of seduction to prevent the situation from getting out of control. The men thoughtlessly decide to listen to the hero and let him in. Sam, in the guise of a girl, thanks the guards and goes into the house. Sam walks through the house and notices how huge it is and what extensive renovations it has. Sam notices two large men guarding the door to the room and decides to go through that door. Sam greets the men and calls them handsome and asks them if they would like to spend their time with health benefits. Men also easily fell for the hero's charisma in the guise of a beautiful girl. And while they were unconscious and drooling, he knocked them to the floor with two knockout blows. Sam burst into the room where the prisoners were and said that he had come to save them. Two girls in short dresses, one younger, the other older, were sitting tied up on the floor. 
Sam began to untie the young girl, who he thought was the daughter of that same rich businessman. But when he released her mouth, she screamed that the second girl needed to be freed first. The hero smiled and said that he would save the maid too. They were no longer in danger. But the girl shouted that the maid was her, and the tied girl was the daughter of a businessman. The hero did not understand how he could be so mistaken, because the first girl looks younger and more beautiful than the second. The girl shouted that she was also beautiful and young. Sam apologized using his charisma skills and the girl stopped screaming. Sam assumed that the girl was beautiful. She just got hit in the face for a very long time. The businessman's daughter said that no one beat her and that this was her usual appearance. Then Sam decided to buy the floating fist skill, which can edit people's appearance. He grabbed the girl, pulled her towards him and swung as hard as he could. He struck dozens of blows in the face of the businessman's daughter. She began to feel dizzy and asked the hero to stop. The maid began to worry about the young mistress. She thought that she was about to be killed, but Sam finished his technique and decided to show what came of it. The girl's face changed. Her facial features became more gentle and sweet. He succeeded. The maid was shocked by such changes. The businessman's daughter noticed this and angrily asked her if she really thought she was ugly. Popping noises were heard and someone entered the room. It was the boss of the knife gang. He asked Sam how he dared come to his house and try to take hostages. Sam suggested that the gang leader go out and talk like men to find out who is more right. The leader asked who he works for and whether he even knows how to fight. Sam said that he works for the Church of Divine Light, the head of which is the Supreme Archbishop. The man said that he did not care about the Church of Divine Light and anyone who came to his house without asking should be punished. The leader ordered his maid to kill Sam. She said that she would carry out the order. The girl was holding a golden whip in her hands. Apparently it was a weapon that she knew how to handle. The gang leader headed out of the room, leaving the girl to destroy the hero. But the girl had long noticed how attractive Sam was. He asked her why she was doing the leader's dirty work. The girl said that she likes it, and she likes cruelty. Sam met her gaze and cast a spell the same as he had used on Franco. He transferred it into an illusion. The girl stood in a brightly lit room all alone and wondered where she had ended up. Sam said that now she is in his power and will play by his rules. The girl turned out to be very self-confident and said that such tricks would not work on her. However, Sam, using his powers, took her whip, tied her hands, and hung her from the ceiling. Her legs trembled. She began to beg Sam to take her by force. The fire of desire flared up inside her. The girl screamed. It was Sam who began to use her whip against her. The hero said that he would allow her to enjoy cruelty if she so desired it. The girl said that even if he hit her 10,000 times, she would not ask for mercy. Two hours later, the girl received almost 3,000 blows from the whip, but the girl continued to laugh. It seemed that she liked it. Another hour later, the girl came to the chief's office to report on the work done. Her appearance excited the gang leader. He asked if she liked having fun with the young guy. The girl walked around behind the man, showing fake interest, and asked him to close his eyes. The man obeyed her and was caught in a trap. The girl used the whip to strangle him. His life was in her hands. Sam appeared in the office and said that the bald old man had made a mistake by asking him to kill a young, attractive girl. And now Sam will decide who lives and who dies. The girl her name was Maxime, began to squeeze the whip harder. The bald old man began to lose consciousness. With all his strength, he tried to reach Sam. But with every second, he became weaker. He quickly lost consciousness and could not control his body. Finally, he went limp in his chair and didn't move anymore. The hero asked Maxim if there were explosives in the house. When asked why, he replied that he wanted to set off fireworks. Having done everything he had planned, Sam turned into a bald old man and, together with the girls, went out to his gang to say that he was going to hand over the hostages and ordered them to stay put. The gang members wished him a good journey and remained waiting on the spot. The door slammed shut and the gang members saw a clock mechanism on the inside. They could not immediately understand what was happening. Everyone crowded around the door and tried to look at the clock mechanism. A bright light filled the knife gang's headquarters. A monstrous explosion woke up the city and the knife gang became history. It was very epic when Sam and Maxim walked away from the explosion. The mission was successfully completed. The hero was proud of himself, and the girls admired him. Sam arrives at the home of a wealthy businessman to return his daughter to him. They were met at home by the butler, who said that the girl's father was already hurrying home. The girl said that her dad was very rich and would generously thank Sam for her return home. The hero said that this was not necessary, but he himself remembered that he had changed her appearance beyond recognition, and now it is unknown whether her father will now recognize her. The door swung open and the girl's father ran into the house. Yes, this is the same Mr. Stone who likes to have fun with girls of easy virtue. 
The hero was also a little shocked by the realization that he had just recently been left tied, naked and gagged in his carriage. Mr. Stone began to cry, hugging his daughter and saying that he would not be able to live further if something happened to her. The only thing Sam didn't understand was how he recognized his daughter when her appearance completely changed. The man replied that any parent would recognize his child among thousands of others. Their family also has a distinctive mark, star-shaped birthmarks on their necks. The man began to take a closer look at Sam and asked where he could see him. Sam said that there are a lot of people in the world who look alike, and he is sure that he is seeing Mr. Stone for the first time. Stone's daughter said that whether they had seen each other before or not does not matter. Now the main thing is to thank the hero for saving her life. Stone said that in honor of saving his daughter, he was organizing a banquet today and inviting Sam, where he would give him a big gift. Sam accepted the invitation and said that he would definitely attend the celebration. Meanwhile, at Stan's house, the maid brought him a fresh newspaper with news. On the front page, he saw the man he hated most. Every news of his victories aroused Stan's ire. He crumpled up the newspaper and threw it at the wall. He believed that it was inappropriate for a smelly hillbilly to act on behalf of the Church of Divine Light. He took out his anger on the demon slaves chained to the wall in the basement of his house. The girls asked to stop, begged for mercy, but Stan began to beat them even harder, saying that they were unworthy to live. All this was observed by a servant girl who wanted to stop the violence. In her hands was a small mirror. Meanwhile, the hero returned to the castle. He called his girlfriends to him. He asked the girls to help him prepare for the evening event. They were glad to be useful to the master. They quickly moved into the room and the girls said that they wanted to relax him first. Sam didn't immediately understand what they were hinting at. But the girls had already decided that the gentleman should be pleased. They immersed him in their magical illusion. He felt good. In the illusion, the gentle water caressed the hero's body. But in the present, one of the girls made him feel good. Sam received the next achievement card and with it the bull rush skill and the next card with the dragon transformation skill fell into his piggy bank. A girl from the dragon clan said that the hero needs to contact Geneva in the evening via a magic mirror and be careful so that no one sees it. The hero asked where this magic mirror was. The girl said that she was in a hurry when she was getting ready here and forgot it in the toilet. Sam didn't know how to react to this, but there was nothing he could do. He had to go to the toilet. In the toilet, he opened the lid of the toilet and saw a golden mirror glued to the inside. Geneva appeared in it and greeted Sam, her appearance stern. The girl was clearly angry. She called him a poorly educated demon who doesn't even know about magical objects, like a magic mirror. The hero still found it funny because Geneva didn't know from which part of the room she was talking to him now. The girl said that a few days ago, the scout troop was attacked by the divine light sword and the entire army was destroyed. Except for the three demon girls, they were captured and taken to the divine light prison. She said that this was done by Stan, who keeps them in his dungeon and mocks the prisoners, and is also preparing a conspiracy against the hero. She found out this, since her spy was able to get into his house. Sam told Geneva to be very careful because this guy has a good nose for demons. The connection was interrupted. This could have happened if someone entered the room where Sam was negotiating. The butler entered the toilet. He was very surprised that Sam was sitting over the toilet. He asked what he was doing. Sam said that he felt sick and felt sick. So he sat down near the toilet. The butler sympathized with him. The time has come to celebrate the miraculous rescue of the daughter of a wealthy businessman. The hero was dressed in a very beautiful and expensive suit, which made him feel not very comfortable. Irina reassured him, saying that he did not need to worry around her because everything would go fine. She was wearing a gorgeous dress with a deep slit on her right leg, and she looked amazing. Stan appeared in a business suit, complimented Irina, and bowed. Without showing any emotion, she thanked him and said that he looked good too. Stan said that he did not like such pretentious events, but as a famous person, he could not help but accept the invitation. All the inhabitants of the house looked in their direction and said that they had never seen such a handsome guy. Stan took the compliments personally and said that they shouldn't fall in love with him because his heart belongs to the divine light. But the girls had already surrounded Sam because these compliments were addressed only to him and no one was looking at Stan. Stan could not look at the hero without anger and said to himself that soon everything would end and he would take everything that belonged to him. Sam finally fought off the groupies and was able to get to the toilet. He thought that his level of charisma was very high because he didn't even try to seduce anyone now, but there was no end to the girls. Ginevra entered the toilet and told the hero that he was in danger. The hero asked what danger she was telling him about because he didn't know what she was talking about. 
The girl said that Stan received evidence that Sam participated in the slave auction, and Stan is going to make this information public at the holiday in front of everyone. The hero asked what he should do so that his secret would not be revealed. The girl said that he is a very important ally in their common plan, and therefore she found a solution to the problem that arose. Geneva also said that Stan has a device that detects the breath of demons and can ruin his disguise. Sam asked how she was going to solve his problem, since she still hadn't told her the plan of action. The girl led Sam by the hand into the toilet stall, locked it, and said that she could absorb his demonic chakra so that Stan's device could not detect it. Stan asked if Sabrina was really going to suck his demonic chakra. She said that she knew what she was doing because she was an expert in protecting demons from people. Stan tried his best not to groan, but you could hear in the toilet that there was someone in the stall. At this time, Stan came into the toilet. He was thinking about how sweet a victory over this village upstart would be. He heard moans coming from the toilet stall and became wary. He began shouting to the entire toilet, calling for whoever was hiding in the toilet stall. Sam came out of the booth. He began to clap his hands and say that he had heard about Stan's great plans. Stan said that his knowledge of this situation will not help him in any way. It will still reveal his true face. Sam did not argue with Stan, but simply said that he should be more careful. Genevra, pleased with herself, remained sitting in the booth so that no one else could hear her. The party began. There were more and more people in the hall. The buzz of conversations spread throughout the entire mansion. Mr. Stone appeared. Next to him was the Archbishop. The gentleman publicly thanked Sam for saving his beloved daughter and also expressed gratitude to those who took part in the celebration. Mr. Stone's speech was interrupted by Stan, who asked and began to say that everyone present had been brazenly deceived. He started pointing his finger at the main character and said that he was hiding his demonic origins and had hidden goals, which is why he joined the Church of Divine Light. Irina began to stand up for Sam, saying that he had passed the test with the Staff of Light, and Franca confirmed this. Sam was as calm as possible. He said that he did not need to be protected and asked Mr. Stan to continue his speech. Stan said that he had convincing evidence that the crystal captured how Sam was being sold at an underground auction. Stan threw the crystal up so everyone could see what he wanted to show. The crystal turned into a transmitter and began to tune in to show the recording. He was sure that now everyone would see Sam's real face. Gloating overwhelmed him. The guests looked up at the screen with shame on their faces. They could not look at it for long. Sam asked Stan to stop this disgrace because he is in decent society. Irina lowered her eyes to the floor. She could not look at this shame. On the screen, there was a recording of Stan in women's stockings and underwear being beaten with a whip by a demon girl. Stan was furious. He yelled at Sam and said that he was the one who switched the crystal to make him look like a fool. Sam interrupted him, saying that Stan himself suggested showing everyone this recording and also stated that the sacred sword of light was not worthy to be in the hands of someone who was being whipped by demons, and asked to hand the sword into his hands. Stan's rage knew no bounds. He was ready to pounce on the hero and kill him right on the spot. The Supreme Archbishop told everyone to shut up, because they were on the same side, the side of the divine light. He also said that despite the fact that they cannot verify the authenticity of the recording, so as not to discredit the Church of Light, Sam and Stan must pass the test, and prove who is more worthy to wield the sword. Sam said that he is ready to fight, but will Stan accept his challenge? Irina stood up for Sam and said that he did not yet have the necessary fighting skills to resist the sword of light, that is, Stan. Sam said that he believed in the true power of light, and the fight would put everything in its place, and if his thoughts were pure, he would not lose, although in fact, Sam knew that he had every chance of winning. The hero took off his jacket and prepared for the fight. Stan told him to take a weapon because he couldn't afford to beat up the weak and unarmed. The hero said that in order to defeat such a villain as Stan, he would have enough power of divine light. Crying that the holy light does not illuminate demons like Sam, Stan attacked the hero, swinging his sword. He used the holy light strike technique against Sam. A fiery aura rushed behind the sword, cutting everything in its path. Sam managed to break the distance between them and step back. Stan didn't plan to kill Sam with this blow. He wanted to drive him into a trap, and was sure that he succeeded. But Sam took a jade stone from his pocket and pointed it at the enemy. He used the holy light jade technique and blinded his opponent. The girl was also blinded and thought to herself how Sam was able to master the secret techniques of their church so quickly. The girls were ready to go blind, just so as not to take their eyes off the hero. Sam decided to use the power that he got from one of the three rescued girlfriends. He rushed at Stan with great speed, breaking the air that separated them from each other. 
It was the bull rush technique that was so effective in this situation. The enemy flew to the other side of the room and with a roar crashed through the wall he hit. Sam thought the reception was too strong and he might have overdone it. The smoke from the exploded wall was clearing. Everyone was waiting to see if Stan would be able to get up after such a blow. Yes, he was able to get up, and not only was he not injured, but he was no longer wearing that business suit. Stan wore the armor of the Holy Church of Light, which greatly increased his strength. Sam also felt the incredible power emanating from the Holy Armor. Stan said that each divine light artifact has unique abilities, and in this armor it is invulnerable. Stan used God Realm Mode and charged at his opponent with the speed of Holy Light. Sam realized that he would not be able to stop such a fast strike, and decided to use the skill of another of his friends, throwing slugs at the enemy. But while he was trying to use magic, he was wounded in his left arm by a holy blade. He began to retreat, not understanding why his magic did not work, because he could not throw the mucus at Stan. Stan said that demonic magic does not work against magical artifacts. He once again attacked Sam using his sword of divine light. Irina screamed at Sam to try to defend himself, otherwise he would die. Sam summoned his sword and used the Six Gates Ice Slash attack, which he learned from Princess Siri. Stan was surprised, because no one had yet been able to repel this blow from his sacred sword. They entered into a sword fight. Stan believed that he had no equal in fencing among those living today. Sam knew this himself, and he needed to come up with a different battle plan, otherwise he would die. He decided to try to piss Stan off, and say that he is so brave only because he has the most powerful weapon in his hands. But without a sword, he is just a vile coward. Stan asked the hero if he really believed that he couldn't handle it without a weapon and threw the sword aside. Sam took advantage of the opportunity and stabbed Stan in the body with his sword, but he easily stopped the blow. The hero certainly could not have expected this. A new plan was needed. Stan said that even without his sword, he was able to deal with the stinking demon. Sam's brain kept generating ideas. He couldn't come to the right conclusion. Before Sam's thoughts could settle in his head, he was punched in the face by his opponent. And now he was flying into the far wall of the large hall, breaking the wall behind him. Stan said that such a dirty animal would never defeat a great master of divine light. Sam could barely stand on his feet. His face was broken. He now relied only on his charisma, so he winked at the girls in the hall. The girls began to shout at the top of their voices that Sam was their hero, and Stan was a villain, who without his divine things was simply a non-entity. Stan continued to not understand why all the girls were not on his side even now. The girls shouted that superiority and strength over Sam did not make him a great man, because he was still a scoundrel. Stan was infuriated by all the statements addressed to him. They called him a useless and evil person who is not worthy of the Church of Divine Light. All this drove Stan crazy. He lost his mind and his sacred armor burst and shattered into fragments. He did not control his powers and did not understand how it happened that his armor crumbled. Sam's plan worked, because in order to control the artifacts of the Holy Light, you need to have unshakable self-confidence, and the girls killed this faith in him. Sam did not attack the unarmed Stan and asked him to stop this war, but Stan wasn't going to listen to the smelly hillbilly and grabbed his blade and attacked him with the words, Die, dirty pig. But the blade was knocked out of his hand by an arrow from another member of the Church of Divine Light. The girl's name was Lucia. She told Stan that if the Divine Light refused him, it did not mean that he could act so vilely and attack the person who proposed a truce. Stan called Lucia a dirty wench who has no right to tell him how he should behave. The sword that Lucia knocked out of Stan's hand flew towards Sam began to glow with divine light. And the hero caught him, feeling hot energy spreading throughout his body. The sword glowed as brightly as it had not shone for decades. Sam asked if it had a switch. Stan couldn't believe that his sword was now giving its power to the stinking demon. The Archbishop stated that everything had been decided and now Sam had been promoted to the Seven Sages of the Holy Light, and Stan, who had lost his light, would be cast out of the church. Sam received a Sword of Light, which increased damage to evil creatures by 100%, as well as Armor of Light, which could be created at will. When it was all over, Sam walked up to Lucia, the Bow of the Holy Light, and thanked her for her help. The girl grabbed the hero's hand and pressed it to her chest. She said that she would be happy to receive his gratitude this evening at her home. Irina took Lucia's words as a joke, but Sam knew that it was far from a joke. Lucia asked Irina if there was a relationship between them. The girl replied that there was nothing between them. She said with sadness in her voice that they were just friends and nothing more. The hero also felt sad from these words of Irina, but Lucia was an experienced girl and understood that Irina would not even admit it to herself. The clinking of glasses was heard. The celebration spread throughout the castle. 
Irina congratulated Sam on the fact that he was now one of them, and they would be able to work together more often. Sam asked the girl if she drank a lot of alcohol and if she would get sick. The girl admitted that she really doesn't know how to drink, and therefore all the drinks are prepared for her by Sebastian, who will never allow her to get drunk. Sebastian, meanwhile, was thinking that especially for such a holiday, he had made the wine much stronger than usual, so that all the guests would like it. He believed that even if the lady was drunk, Sam, being a real man, would not take advantage of her condition for his own purposes. Sebastian talked to Irina's late parents and said that he would be happy if she gave birth to a child next year. Irina herself began to notice that she was very drunk. Sam noticed this too and began to worry about her. He offered to take the girl to her bedroom and put her to bed, to which she replied that he could not appear there and that she still needed to take a shower. Sam brought the girl to the bath. She began to call Sam to take a shower with her. Sam didn't immediately know if he had heard what she was saying correctly. She fell silent and he began to worry, asking if everything was okay, but she continued to remain silent. Sam burst into the bath to see if she had passed out in the shower, and then her hand grabbed him by the collar and pulled him inside. She hugged him and kissed him deeply. He couldn't leave. A few seconds later, the girl was sitting in a hot bath, but she was very sad. She asked the hero why he refused her, because she showed enough initiative. Sam reminded her that she talked about the ban on desecrating her body. The girl said that since he was appointed one of the seven saints, their union would not stain her body. Sam asked her with bitterness in his voice if she would like him if he were a demon. She said that even if he is a demon, he is now a holy demon, and she will follow him both to heaven and to purgatory. Sam said that he was very glad to hear such words from your address, and also wanted to spend this evening with her. The girl opened up to him and they united as one. The pleasure these two felt was beyond words. A five-star character card has become available in the hero playing field. We are transported to Stan's mansion, at the entrance of which there is a guard of two priests. Sam screams and asks why they won't let him into their own house. One of the priests punches Stan in the face and tells him to talk kindly to them. They explain to him that all his property now belongs to the church again, and all his past merits now mean nothing. The members of the Church of Light are very angry with Stan because he has caused great damage to their faith. Stan leaves, leaving his mansion. He has nowhere to go. He wanders until nightfall. And then he meets two demons. The demons recognize Stan as a former swordsman of the Holy Church of Light. Stan asks them what they are up to. The demons want to repay his debt to avenge the thousands of relatives he killed. Stan begins to run away because he no longer has the powerful power that the artifacts gave him. But they surround him from the other side and say that it has been decided to take him into account. He tries to justify himself and begs for forgiveness from the demons. But they do not want to listen to his dirty words. The sounds of blows and screams of the victim are heard. Morning comes, we are transported to the castle of Irina. She wakes up in her room, her head hurts a little after yesterday. Meanwhile, Geneva comes to Sam and says that she knows about the work he's done. Sam asked if the seal on the Demon King's heart had been removed. The girl said that she felt his strength growing and she needed to wait a little longer. Sam said that he had fulfilled his part of the agreement and asked Geneva to remove the chain of death from him. He didn't want to feel like a toy in the wrong hands. The girl said that perhaps she would like to free him, but of course she would not do this. Sam asked what this meant since she promised to release him when he fulfilled her conditions. Geneva asked what he didn't like because many demons would dream of being connected by a chain of pure blood with her. The hero replied that not only his life depends on this chain, but also hers, so he can also threaten her. And he pulled with force the ghostly chain sticking out of his chest. The girl screamed. It was clear how much pain she was in. She did not expect that Sam would use her trap against her. The hero said that he deserved a reward for his efforts and she should repay him. Geneva said that she could give him whatever he wanted and asked what it would be. Now the guy could set his own conditions and said that she would give him pleasure be his slave and fulfill the most sophisticated desires. He asked what she was waiting for and ordered her to kneel. He threw a chain of pure blood around her neck like a domestic dog and said that now she would sit on the chain. The girl enjoyed this game. Sam noticed this too and decided to continue. Sam now has access to Geneva's game card and the ability to use the demonic song skill. We go to the city outside the castle where the demons are discussing how they cruelly humiliated the former saint of the Church of the Holy Light. They say that there is no need to tell anyone that they did this to Stan, because despite the fact that he is now a weakling, you can run into revenge for him from other saints of the church. Stan lay on the ground, beaten and disgraced, and suddenly he saw how the demons who attacked him were blown to pieces with one blow. Stan did not immediately understand what happened and who destroyed them. The familiar robe and boots appeared in front of his face. The Supreme Archbishop called him a son, 
said that the Holy Light had not abandoned him, but had only tested him hard and asked if he was ready to take revenge. Stan said that despite the pain he suffered, he would take revenge on the offender who took everything from him. The head of the church had an unhealthy light in his eyes, and he invited Stan to follow him and accept his gift. The leader led him down a long circular staircase, deep into a secret basement. They left in a room unknown to Stan. The archbishop said that they had arrived at the place. He showed Stan a huge sword emitting monstrous evil energy. Stan was in a state of shock. He recognized this sword. At the center of the dark sword's hilt was the sealed heart of the demon king. The head of the church said that a year after the death of the demon king, he began to study a spell that could unite the heart of the demon king with his sword, and he succeeded. And now there is nothing in the world stronger than this sword. Stan asked how he can use the power of the demon king when he is on the side of divine light. The head shouted at him, saying that it doesn't matter whether pure power or demonic power is as long as it can be used in the path of justice. Stan believed the archbishop and went to the sword. He decided to use the power of the demon king to destroy his main opponent, who disgraced him in front of everyone. Stan put his hand on the hilt of his sword. His whole body began to burn like fire. He felt the blood flowing through his veins. Dark energy filled the entire room. A storm arose, and then huge demonic wings began to appear from his back with splashes of blood. He felt wild pain. The archbishop said that with such power, the Church of Divine Light could illuminate the whole world. He was mesmerized by the light that the Demon King's dark sword emitted. Stan's face and body took on demonic features. His faith changed, although he did not understand it yet. Morning came. Irina woke up in a good mood. Sam came into her room and wished her good morning. He himself looked very bad, and the girl asked what was wrong with him. The hero said that he was tormented by insomnia all night. Hannah burst into the room and said that trouble had happened to the Church of Divine Light, and she also said something incomprehensible about Stan. Meanwhile, a dark figure was circling over the city, and fleeing passers-by shouted that it was the Demon King who had returned. Many also saw the characteristic sword that this demon was holding in his hands. It was Stan. He told everyone to shut up. Blood was oozing from his wings in different directions. It landed on people's bodies, burned their skin and did something irreparable. She turned the townspeople into bloodthirsty evil demons who were ready to kill everyone in their path. The little girl, who was not exposed to the blood, was crying and calling for her mother. One of the newborn demons, perhaps her mother, wanted to attack the child. But he was successfully cut into two parts by an ice sword, and the baby was saved. The hero used the ice sword technique and defended the townspeople. He was saddened by what he saw and was determined to save innocent people. Irina ran to Sam's aid with her hammer of light. She couldn't believe that Stan had arranged everything. First of all, Stan, in the guise of the King of Demons, turned to Sam, said that he wanted his quick death, and turning to Irina, he said that he knew that the demon had taken advantage of her. Sam asked if he really considers all demons to be dirt. Then why did he sell himself to their leader? Stan got angry hearing these words. In a demonic voice, he screamed at Sam to shut his dirty mouth. The shockwave was very strong, but since Sam was also a demon, he was able to resist. He thought that if he didn't come up with a plan to destroy Stan, many innocent people would suffer. And then a girl in armor appeared in front of him. In her hands was a sacred shield of light and armor that had enormous protective power. The girl said that her name is Carter and she is a shield of light, one of the seven sages of the sacred church. Our old friends also came to the rescue. These were the sacred staff and the sacred bow of light. Irina was delighted to see the sisters coming to help. Franco asked Stan to stop, asked for absolution and return to their side before it was too late. Stan called them a bunch of idiots who don't understand anything about following the path of light and said that they could have followed him but chose a demon. He summoned a hundred flying demons to help and said that it was time for his former colleagues to disappear. Bow of light fired a sacred arrow straight at Stan and said that she would not allow him to destroy this world. Her arrow hit the target. Stan was there, but he was protected by dozens of demons who covered him with their chests. She destroyed several dozen flying creatures with one shot, but Stan managed to dodge. Then the Staff of Light came into play. She concentrated enormous power into her weapon, and with a beam of incredible power, she shot straight at the new Demon King. And again, dozens of demons died defending their king. The powerful blow struck nearly a hundred demons. It was Vanessa, the Fist of Light of the Sacred Church, who also decided to join the fight against a dangerous opponent. A new batch of demons protecting their king was sent to another world. The girl's name was Trosi. She was the Spear of Light of the Sacred Church. Stan was angered by the unity with which the seven sages of the Church of Divine Light fought and protected the people. 
In one leap, he reached the place where Vanessa and Trozzi were and used a demonic strike of darkness against them. The girls had no chance to stay on their feet, so great was its power. The girls flew, hitting the ground. Having landed and risen to their feet, they began to plan how they could defeat him. While Stan was distracted by Vanessa and Trosi, the bow of light went around him from behind and delivered a powerful blow. However, the enemy was able to easily dodge the flying cleansing arrow and caught it at incredible speed. The girl did not understand why her arrow had no effect on Stan, because no one had yet been able to dodge it. Stan broke the cleansing arrow with one hand and said that he was tired of playing children's games and it was time to fight. He used a black magic spell and created a world of demons around himself, the energy of which was destructive to everyone except demons. The black aura of the demon world spread further and further into space. The members of the Seven Saints began to feel how demonic energy was taking away their vitality. Stan said that he demonic aura will take away all the energy of the Holy Seven, and then this energy will be transferred to the demon race. This energy had a different effect on Sam. He felt an incredible surge of strength. After all, Sam was a demon and had an advantage over the Seven of the Sacred Church. He tried to attack Stan using the Sword of Divine Light, releasing a scorching flame with a blow. The flame was of enormous power and rushed towards the enemy at speed. Stan cut the flames with one swing of the Demon King's sword and it disappeared. He said that despite the fact that Sam is also a demon, he does not have the strength to resist the Demon King. The battle took place in the sky. Irina saw that Sam was not affected by the demonic aura. She realized that he was really a demon. Stan said that Sam was still alive only because he wanted everyone to see how he would suffer and began to generate demonic energy in his hand. Energy comparable to a tsunami erupted from his hand and was directed at Sam. Shield of Light rushed to Sam's defense. She was in time, but from the impact, her shield began to crumble into fragments. She lost consciousness and began to fall from a height to the ground. The fall was very fast. No one had time to catch her, and the fall broke the ground under her feet. Irina asked why the Shield of Light helped Sam, because he is a real demon who deceived everyone. Carter called Irina a fool and said that the race of a creature does not matter if he stands guard over the divine light and fights for the lives of other beings. Irina was surprised to hear Carter say this, but was very pleased because she still loved Sam no matter what. Stan told Sam that the Holy Seven could not save him or themselves from death, and there was no point in trying. Stan said it was time to end these games and move on to a more serious fight. Sam stood on the demonic barrier, and Irina shouted to him that the other saints would transfer their powers to him through their sacred weapons so that he could resist the demon king. At this moment, artifacts of other saints began to appear on the sacred blade of the sword. Sam began to feel an even greater surge of strength. Sam's body became more and more energy. It grew and began to displace the demonic dome created by Stan. And then the hero felt how the chakra became stable and its level increased six times. A powerful bang and puffs of smoke filled the space where Sam was. The smoke began to clear. Something happened. Sam stood, and in his hands was still the restored and improved shield of light. The Night King was surprised that Sam managed to restore the artifact he destroyed. Sam thought how cool the battle would be, because it contained everything he had ever heard about from ancient stories. Seven artifacts, seven sages, a demon king, a demonic barrier. The demon king looked at the hero and did not understand whether he should be afraid of him or if he was just the same dirty piece of crap as before. Sam said that he may not consider him his equal, but he should know that his strength has increased manifold. The hero took out a spear of light. It was also improved. The demon king became increasingly worried because he had never seen two sacred artifacts in the hands of one person at once. Sam used the tornado technique and Stan was spun in the insane energy of the power of the Seven Sages. He could not defend himself and stop spinning under the rush of energy. And then Sam, taking advantage of the moment, used a fist of light to strike his enemy. With the help of the third artifact, Sam was able to strike an enemy who had recently been out of reach. Stan recovered quickly from the blow and got to his feet, but he couldn't believe that the Demon King could be struck by some weakling from the village. He still didn't consider him a strong opponent. Stan decided to summon servants from hell because the power of the Demon King allowed him to do this. He ordered the demons to kill anyone and everyone who met them on the way and asked the hero if he could now protect the inhabitants of the city. Sam began to piss him off, asking why such a strong and powerful Demon King only does this and calls soldiers to his aid. Sam also managed to activate a barrier of light, which increases his skills and damage to demons by 100%. The barrier of light began to act on the demons in a murderous way. They tried to escape from it, 
and the hero asked them to go back to their purgatory so as not to die fighting for the wrong demon king. They listened to Sam because they saw that he was also from their race. Stan became angry when his servants listened to Sam's words and left the battlefield. He said that he had many more tricks up his sleeve to kill Sam. But Sam shot a sacred arrow from a bow of light and distracted the enemy. He said that he was not going to wait for the demon king to use a new move and swung the hammer of light at his opponent. The blow landed straight on Stan's body and he had no way to dodge it. He flew across the entire city square, unable to stop. Sam used the technique of concentrating all the energy in one weapon, hovering in the air to accumulate it. And the hammer of light in his hands united with other artifacts and turned into an improved blade of light. Sam has a new ability, demonic wings of light. He raised his new blade upward and began to gather the energy of light and darkness. It looked like he was now a demon king, but fighting on the side of light, the fire blazing, fanned by a sacred aura. He used a strike of divine light and sent all the energy towards his opponent. An explosion occurred, the ground shook underfoot, but this fire did not destroy anything living, only the demon king received damage. And so we see Sam standing in the middle of the square, exhausted and trying to catch his breath. He succeeded, Stan disappeared, the demonic aura began to fade, but she did not completely leave the city and continued to fly in the air. Ginevra appeared, she was shocked by what she saw and decided to help get rid of the demon king and said that the black aura would not dissipate until it acquired a new body, then it could be sealed. We see the broken sword of the demon king on the ground, in the hilt of which his heart is pulsating. Ginevra says that she has a plan to seal the demon king forever, but it is very dangerous. The hero asks her how to do it. The girl says that only a very strong demon who is not afraid of the sacred light will be able to try to seal the demon king within himself. Sam asks what could happen if he doesn't succeed. Ginevra says that she does not know this, since no one has tried it before. It is just an ancient legend, and it is unknown whether anyone's body can withstand the king's power and not succumb to his dark heart. Sam's in-game interface shows that the quest has been completed and he can complete the mission. Meanwhile, a dark aura begins to fill the city again, and members of the Holy Church begin to lose their powers. The hero decides to stay and help the people who believed in him despite the fact that he belongs to the demon race. He picks up a dark sword with the heart of a demon king, and he feels pain piercing him from the inside. His body is burning, and his mind is switching off. He begins to cough up blood, and feels his internal organs melting. The saints do not know how to help him, but they really want to save him. Ginevra says that he can be helped, but this requires as many people as possible. He says that they can absorb the power of the demon king from Sam's body, and destroy it in small portions inside their bodies. Ginevra used her demonic power and began to create a place to suck the energy out of Sam's body. She created a large room with a huge bed on which she laid Sam. He felt bad, he was shaking. Ginevra asked to be the first to come to Sam's aid in the fight against the Demon King. Irina wished her good luck and said that she would restore her strength and wait in line. Ginevra said that she would be able to contain the infection spreading throughout the hero's body for a long time because she has demonic power, so she is very resilient. Irina and Franco waited for Ginevra for a whole hour until she began to come out. The girl could barely drag her feet, said that she did not think that everything was so serious, and she could no longer stand on her feet and experience these constant cramps. Franco volunteered to help the hero next. Irina looked at her angrily and said that she would go with her. Two hours later, the girls crawled out of the room where Sam was and began asking who else could go into the room and replace them. This is where our old friends come into play. Four half-humans saved from death by Sam. They looked happy. It was finally their turn. Three hours later, even these assistants gave up. Sweat was dripping from them. Their legs were trembling and their voices were hoarse from screaming. Geneva and Irina did not know what to do because the demonic energy had not yet been sucked out of the hero's body and their powers had not yet been restored. The girls were ready to die for Sam. But suddenly the sound of heels and the voices of girls was heard. These were the beautiful demons whom Sam had released during the fight with Stan. Now they did not look like the inhabitants of hell, because the hero illuminated them with divine light, saved them, and thereby freed them. Ginevra asked the girls if they knew that helping the hero is very dangerous. The girl replied that the hero gave them a new life, and they were ready to sacrifice it for him, especially since quite a lot of them came. Ginevra thanked the girls and said they were just in time. The demon girls tried their best. They were young and full of strength and energy, and a large number of them could decide the outcome of the battle. Suddenly, the members of the Holy Seven felt an earthquake. 
Irina was the first to notice the Church of the Holy Light. A huge figure was moving towards them from the direction of the church. She looked like a hundred-meter stone sculpture made according to sacred motives. This monster was controlled by the Archbishop. He admitted that his goal was to combine the Holy Light with the magical energy of the great demon realm to create the ultimate power. The stone sculpture moved towards the place where Sam was, destroying everything in its path. She pulled out a huge sword to destroy Sam and allow the Archbishop to absorb the power of the Demon King from his body. A huge, devastating blow was sent to the house where the hero was helped to free himself from the evil chakra. Debris of earth and buildings flew in different directions. Irina began to scream in panic. But Geneva told her not to worry because she could feel the next level of energy coming from the house and knew it was going to be fun. We see a hand stopping a huge sword of a stone statue. Who would have thought, this is Sam in a new guise and a new demonic suit with horns. He holds the enemy's sword with one hand. A split second, and he still breaks this sword with one hand, and it crumbles into small fragments. The Archbishop is furious. He does not understand how Sam managed to cope with such strong energy. He generates light chakra in the hands of the statue and is about to send it towards the enemy. Sam says that it is difficult for him to control this energy in his body for a long time, so he will finish everything very quickly. He creates a spinning sphere of celestial energy in his hands, and he shoots it straight into the giant's chest, where the Archbishop is. The result is a fireball of such power that even Itachi would envy it. The fire, created by combining the energy of light and darkness, leaves no chance for the Archbishop to win. The mission is completed, the enemy is defeated. Sam fell to his knees, his demonic god suit began to fade. He still found it difficult to control such power. A few seconds later, he was lying on the ground unconscious. Irina quickly ran up to him and tried to help him, but he did not come to his senses. And then she heard someone tell her not to worry and leave the matter of saving Sam to them. Sam's most important friends, two princesses, Siri and Maggie, and the former owner of the salon, Alice, appeared and asked how this guy got into trouble again. Irina clearly didn't trust them and asked how they got here and what they had to do with Sam. Maggie said that the three of them were able to help him, and Alice said that Irina did not know them at all and could not talk about whether they could really save the hero or not. Siri said that she would tell Irina some secrets about Sam, and she would understand everything herself. We are transported to the system space of the game. Sam wakes up and doesn't immediately realize where he is now. He got dressed and left the room in the hope that someone would explain to him what was happening. Before he could leave the room, he saw a huge table flying towards him. Out of surprise, he did not have time to dodge and the table flew right into his face. This table flew into Sam from a blow from Irina, who was trained by Princess Siri, who did not even notice how the table hit the hero. They apologized to him, as they did not expect that their training could harm him. Sam's nose was bleeding. Irina asked Sam how he was feeling, whether he was able to conquer the power of the Demon King that settled inside him. Ginevra explained that Sam could not yet fully control the power of the Demon King. He was able to seal it, but not use it to its full potential. This needs more time. Sam asked Ginevra how she ended up here. She replied that all her life she wanted to follow the King of Devils, and it doesn't matter who he becomes and now the king's power is forever sealed in the hero. Sam said that he understood why Geneva was here, but why Irina was here too, why she didn't stay to guard the sacred church of light. She replied that after what the archbishop did, the church lost its authority, and also all the power of the Holy Seven was absorbed by the hero, and now there is no point in the girls being in the church. Also here were the rest of the girls from the members of the Holy Seven, who said that they did not regret losing their jobs because they were able to find a new worthy leader. Then Hannah, who suddenly appeared, rushed to hug the hero. She stated that the half-human girls whom he saved from slavery and death would also serve him faithfully and follow him to the ends of the earth. Sam became more and more surprised by the number of people who followed him. The rest of the rescued people also confirmed Hannah's words and said that he couldn't escape them. Sam said he wouldn't have any problems feeding a few more friends and finding a home for them. Princess Maggie told the hero that everything is not as simple as he thinks. Siri did not want to keep the intrigue and said that they were not the only ones who returned to the gaming space for Sam. Sam couldn't remember who else might have gone after him or who he had saved to make it happen. And then several hundred demon girls from hell appeared whom Sam did not kill, but shed sacred light on them and freed their consciousness from the control of the demon king. Geneva said that these 200 girls helped free his body from the evil energy of the demon king and without them, he would have died. Sam said, although it is very difficult, he cannot leave the girls in a difficult situation. If they want to follow him, then he will help. 
Sam decided to use the game system to build a house that would accommodate the required number of people so that they could live in comfort. He spent several thousand game points to build a magnificent palace with a capacity of 500 people and complete infrastructure. He also understood that all his girls were fighters and they needed to train, and he built a training camp for them. He also built an alchemy room, a forge, premises for growing vegetables and fruits and other premises. The game fairy asked him to be more reasonable and not spend so many points if he is not sure of the need for a purchase. He also found a home for himself, which could increase his demonic energy and maintain the energy of light. It was a large mansion with everything necessary for life. Sam's main girlfriends decided to visit Sam's new house. Irina was the first to enter the house and she was shocked by the sensations that this house gave because it allowed ordinary people to feel the power of demons. Ginevra said that Princess Maggie has already mastered this energy and enjoys it. Maggie and Ginevra decided to check how much the hero had regained his strength. He had no options to refuse the test. The two new girlfriends felt very confident together, as if they had been friends for many years. Maggie even allowed herself to make fun of Ginevra and her weak points. Time passed, and Sam was being used to the fullest by his girlfriend. Princess Maggie said that she felt that in this magical house her energy continued to grow and her stamina increased. Ginevra also liked the feeling the house gave. Due to the fact that the girl's stamina had increased, it was difficult for the hero to cope with them since his body had not yet fully recovered. Irina and Siri looked at all this and realized that this place had more demonic power than the power of light. This frightened them. They wanted to join, but were wary of dark energy. Maggie asked Siri why she had not yet used the power of this house to experience unprecedented pleasure. The fairy was not happy that the place of increasing energy was being used for carnal pleasures. Sam said he can't control his charisma and that's why he's always the center of attention. The fairy said that if he dares to argue with her, it means his strength has been restored and he is ready to hit the road. The hero did not expect that everything would happen so quickly. The fairy added that this time he won't be able to deal with people and perhaps his charisma won't distract him from the main plot. The floor under his feet began to glow and a transfer portal opened to complete a new mission. The hero thought about the fairy's words while the space around him took on a new look. He was in a big city with high-rise buildings. This city was similar to the city from his world. Perhaps it was a copy of it. On the screen at home, the girl was telling the news, saying that attacks related to infectious diseases had recently become more frequent and residents were being asked to take protective measures. Sam was familiar with everything in this city. He decided to take a walk and enjoy the atmosphere. He saw a girl run out of the store and turn in his direction. She tried to grab him, but he dodged away just in case because he didn't know what to expect from her. He immediately thought that she had fallen for his charisma and wanted to meet him, but he felt something was wrong. She caught up with Sam and he saw her red eyes, dead skin, sharp fangs and smelled the stinking odor from her mouth. He didn't know what she was, he had never seen such creatures before. And then this creature, at full speed, was kicked in the head by an unknown girl in a bright outfit. She braked effectively, leaving marks on the asphalt. Sam asked the girl what happened. She asked how he could afford to walk around the city when such things were happening around him. And why didn't he even try to escape from this creature? Or he doesn't know what zombies are. Sam was a little unprepared for this development of events. She said that her name was Samantha. She was a member of a special rescue squad and she would take him to the shelter so that other zombies would not kill him. The girl said that she would not deal with why he did not know about the infection of the population, but he must be careful if he did not want to die. Men quickly die after contracting the infection, and women become the walking dead, who keenly smell the scent of men and come after them to kill and make offspring. Sam began to think about how he could use his previously mastered skills in this world in order to survive and pass the level. First, he decided to meet a girl to learn more about the situation and introduced himself as Sam. But as soon as he said this, sharp tentacles flew at them from above. The girl with a quick kick brought him out from under the attack of the tentacles. An agile zombie with tentacles stood on a lamppost and was ready to attack again. The zombie was not going to let Sam and his new girlfriend, Samantha, think. She screamed for Sam to run away and she would delay the enemy. She pointed the gun at the zombie and started shooting. But the bullets flew off him like from a steel wall and she failed to harm the enemy. The pistol was knocked out of Samantha's hands by the blow of the tentacles, and it flew towards Sam. He caught it with a flick of his hand. He decided to use a pistol since his magical skills were blocked. The girl shouted at him not to try to shoot at the zombies, because without training he would not be able to hit the target accurately, but would only anger the enemy. Sam told her not to worry, 
and quickly logged into the game interface to improve his shooting skills. He traded several of his magical skills for his marksmanship skill. He received confirmation of the skill he had acquired, and he applied it. At the same second, he fired a pistol pointing it at the enemy. Despite the heavy recoil from this powerful pistol, he knew that he would hit the enemy right where it was vulnerable. And so it happened. From the very first shot, the hero hit the zombie with an accurate shot in the heart. Sam was glad that he could be useful in this fight even without magic. But while the hero was distracted, Samantha grabbed him by the collar and dragged him along with her. Sam did not understand what had happened. But a crowd of zombie girls were already running behind them, ready to pounce on him. Sam realized that his charisma was working against him here. Because of it, more zombies were trying to take over his body. He started running quickly and was able to get into the car. There were keys in it. He started the car, and he and Samantha drove to meet the zombies. They rushed at the car and died under its wheels. The hero asked where he should go in order to leave the area of a large concentration of zombies. The girl said that she did not know for sure, but she needed to go to the hospital since she was wounded and the infection had begun. Sam pressed the gas pedal and began driving at full speed through the crowds of zombies. Several of the monsters tried to rush at the car, but they were unable to stop it. Sam looked at the dead girls trying to get into the car. He felt sorry for them. But we had to rush to the hospital to save our new girlfriend from infection. The girl thanked the hero and praised his shooting and driving skills. Sam said it was all thanks to the computer racing game Mario. And so they got to the hospital. It was surprising why there was no one in the hospital because just a day ago there was a rescue squad base here. And then it became clear why there were no people here. A zombie was running towards them at full speed. And again, Sam was the target. Before reaching a few meters, the monster was destroyed. The girl asked how early she came to them. Sam thanked the unknown girl and asked who she was. The girl said that her name was Lena and she was the head of the surgical department. She said that her job requires her to know how to use a scalpel and she also learned how to kill zombies with it. Samantha asked if they could meet later because she needed help from a doctor and then Sam remembered why he was driving so quickly across town to the hospital. Lena said that she doesn't know if she can help Samantha since a lot of time has passed since the infection but she will try to see how bad it is. As they walked into the operating room, Sam asked where all the people who were supposed to be in the hospital were. Lena said that everyone was evacuated when zombies attacked the hospital, but they couldn't get through to her because she was sleeping in the morgue, and there was no mobile phone service there. She was forgotten. Lena told Sam to remove Samantha's clothes so the examination could begin as soon as possible. Sam said that he didn't want to offend her, but she needed emergency medical attention, otherwise she wouldn't be saved. The girl had no choice, she did not have the strength to undress herself, but had to hurry. The hero undressed the girl and laid her on the operating table. She was very beautiful. Sam could see the infection spreading through his arm. It would be a shame if this girl turned into a zombie. Lena warned that the infection could also be transmitted sexually, and that he didn't even think about it. The examination of Samantha began. Lena tried to identify significant changes in her body. Sam asked what was wrong with Samantha. Lena replied that she should have taken an antiviral drug earlier, but now it is unknown whether something will help her or not. She said that we need to go to the place where antiviral drugs are stored and bring it here. On the way to get the medicine, Sam asked Lena why, after infection, girls turn into zombies and men die. Lena replied that no one knows the exact answer, but probably the virus selects women as reproducers and men are just a tool that can be thrown away in the process. They walked along a long corridor and the hero heard someone screaming for help on the street. He looked out the window and saw a guy running along the avenue, followed by a dozen zombie girls. Lena said that you shouldn't pay attention to this guy because he doesn't have a single chance of survival. Female zombies surrounded the guy. Sam could not quickly move to him to help. He felt very sorry for the guy, but this is natural selection. Lena said that he needs to distance himself from what is happening around him. He will see many more deaths, and therefore, there is no need to be nervous and blame himself, because it is impossible to save everyone. The girls, having killed the guy and taken advantage of him, dispersed in different directions with a calm look. For a while, they no longer needed to hunt. There was a smile on the dead guy's face. He did not die a terrible death. Lena said that the virus puts a man's body into a state of continuous arousal, after which it is used until there is not a drop of the required liquid left in it. They say that some guys themselves are looking for thrills and go to certain death. They came to the medical department and began to look for an antiviral drug. It was difficult, since the group of evacuees took almost everything with them. Lena said that if they want to save Samantha, they need to hurry, because the minutes are already counting. The girl will be attacked by a zombie in the form of a nurse. 
Sam manages to get between Lena and the zombie, but while protecting her, he is bitten by the creature. The zombie bites into the hero's hand and chews it with sharp teeth, bleeding. Lena uses her scalpel and kills the zombie with a blow to the head. The enemy is neutralized, but another problem appears. Lena asks the hero how he feels after being bitten by a zombie, whether excitement is already setting in in his body. But Sam doesn't feel anything, only pain in his arm. Lena tells him to take a virus blocker, despite the fact that he does not feel changes in his body, since everyone has their own body, and perhaps it will manifest itself a little later. The hero said that he doesn't see the point in this, he feels good, and is not going to die. He asked the girl to give the only medicine to Samantha so that she would have the opportunity to continue the fight against the creatures. They returned to save the sick girl, she was covered in sweat and her body temperature was rising. Lena gave Samantha an injection, all that was left was to wait. When Sam asked if the medicine would help her, Lena replied that they would be able to find out no earlier than in half an hour. Lena said that he should think about himself, because no man has ever survived a zombie bite. Sam said he had already come to terms with his death, but was glad to help another person survive. But he went to the game store and decided to exchange a few more skills for the antidote, because it was too expensive to buy. The girl asked him not to be shy if he wanted to ask her for his last dying wish. Sam said that he had no desires, but only regretted that he had to die in the company of such a beautiful girl whom he never got to know better. The girl asked him if he really wanted this. Lena began to take off her robe, revealing only her underwear underneath. The hero was a little embarrassed, but inside he was sincerely happy. The girl said that he was bitten because he saved her from death, and now she must repay him if this is truly his last wish. Sam pretended to fulfill his last wish, but had already taken the antidote and knew that he was in no danger. Lena said that they need to be quieter so as not to attract more zombies, as they sensed the excitement in the men's voice. Sam liked to manipulate the doctor. She played by his rules. The girl said that as soon as he runs out of strength and male fluid in his body, he will die immediately. Sam said that he didn't mind dying on such a beautiful and charismatic girl. Their lips intertwined in a passionate kiss, their pulse increasing. Lena felt helpless in the strong hands of the hero. They switched places and now Lena was on top, and the hero lay and tried to restrain the spasms of pleasure. When they finished, the girl asked him to save his strength, because as soon as they ran out, his life would end. She looked at Sam lying on the bed. It seemed that he was no longer breathing. The girl said that she would try to spend her life for the good of people, because he did this for her sake. She began to cover his body with a sheet and said goodbye. Lena didn't understand why she was so sad about this parting, because she was used to seeing people die so often. The hero's hand began to move. She got scared. With an angry look, he got out from under the sheet and rushed at Lena. But at that very second, he was stopped by a powerful kick to the head. He flew across the entire ward, unable to stop. When he landed, he broke the doctor's desk. Lena didn't wait for the hero to recover from the blow and attack again. She grabbed a wooden chair and prepared to plunge it right into Sam's heart. The beaten Sam managed to stop the girl at the last second and say that it was a joke. The girl repeated once again that men do not turn into zombies but simply die. Sam asked Lena if she was a zombie because she had so much strength and great speed. The girl said that these were all her reflexes, which she had developed over the years. Sam was a little surprised at how quickly and easily she dealt with him, but he was rewarded with her character's game card, as well as the ability to quickly heal. They began to discuss how to use his unique body power, which is capable of resisting the zombie virus. The girl said that it is necessary to conduct a series of studies to understand how his body acts on the virus and create an antidote or use the hero himself as an antidote. Meanwhile, Samantha woke up. She was not visible behind the screen. Her skin was the same human color, only a little pale, but her eyes began to turn red. Sam did not immediately notice these eyes and began to greet the girl and rejoice that she had come to her senses. But suddenly he still paid attention to her. Her essence demanded a man. She rushed at the hero to grab him, but he dodged and pushed her straight into the wall of the room. Lena shouted to Sam that Samantha was under the influence of the virus and they urgently needed to leave. But Sam did not want to leave the girl in this state because he already knew that his body was immune to the virus and he could try to save her. Lena said that until a full medical examination, they can only guess whether he is immune or not. Sam said that now is the best time to check it out since he is not going to leave Samantha. He threw his clothes at the girl sitting on the floor to attract her with the smell of his body. She paid attention. The hero began to attract her with his charisma and athletic physique. He called her to him, and then the girl attacked him. He lay on the floor and did not resist, and the girl lay on top of him. Sam was ready to have fun and let the girl do what she needed so much. But nothing happened. 
The girl froze on him like a stone sculpture and did not move. It was clear that she was lost in thought and did not know how to behave. Lena said that if a girl has never tried to unite with a man during her life, then even in the guise of a zombie, she will not know how to do it. Sam didn't know what to do to make sure everything went according to his plan. The girl hid in a corner and did not approach the hero, but he tried with all his might to call her to him. He began to explain to the zombie girl that this was the only way he could try to help and return her to her human form. He told her not to worry because he would guide her. Samantha trusted the hero and began to follow his instructions. Lena watched what was happening in embarrassment. She saw that she was conducting an experiment under her control. Sam also received Samantha's game card. He achieved his goal. After the rescue ritual, the girl slept for several hours. At some point, she jumped up sharply on the bed and screamed that she didn't want to turn into a zombie. Lena and Sam informed her that she had been saved, and now the threat of turning into a zombie had passed. Samantha asked how this could be true if she remembered how the infection spread throughout her body. Lena said that Sam helped her turn into a human, and for this he sacrificed his body for her. The girl was embarrassed. The girl said she remembers attacking Sam. Sam acted as if it was difficult for him to remember what happened, and it was very difficult for him. The girl grabbed him by the collar of his t-shirt, and she told him not to pretend that something humiliating had been done to him, because he was the one who took advantage of the situation. The hero said that it was just a joke, and there was no need to react so strongly to it. Samantha screamed. Her hand, which had been bitten by a zombie, began to hurt sharply. This hand suddenly reached towards the hero and tried to grab him. Samantha grabbed the hero between his legs. He was shocked by this development of events. He asked the girl what he was doing, but the girl answered in fear that she could not control her wounded hand. It moved on its own. Lena examined the girl and said that the virus had not yet completely left her body. Sam said that he had an idea on how to fix the situation and protect Samantha from the remaining virus. He called her with him into a separate room. Lena heard voices coming from behind the door, Samantha asking Sam why he would take off her clothes. Lena waited for the heavy breathing and moaning to stop. She did not understand what was happening behind the closed door. And then the hero appeared. He looked very joyful and said that he had succeeded. A new Samantha came out of the door. She looked like a fighter from a science fiction action movie. Her infected hand was in a metal glove. Sam said that he created this combat suit specifically for Samantha. It will be able to increase her strength and destroy the virus in her body. Lena asked who he was, that he could make such complex inventions. She was delighted with his skills, but Sam replied that he studied a little robotics. Sam decided to show what his super suit was capable of and pointed the gun at Samantha's chest. She was scared. She did not fully believe that the hero would shoot her point blank with a pistol, but the hero was determined. He was confident in his abilities and fired a shot. The bullet hit the girl right in the chest near the heart and the shot knocked her slightly off balance. She remained unharmed and the hero thought that she would now be grateful to him. Sam said that now she is not afraid of ordinary bullets and accordingly any blows that are weaker than a bullet. But Samantha did not look happy. It was clear that she was filled with anger. The girl grabbed the gun and stuck it in Sam's mouth and said that if he shot her again, she would tear it apart with her new multi-purpose hand. Lena said that now is not the time to argue because the world needs to be saved and Sam is best suited for this. Samantha asked Lena what plan she had developed to save humanity. Sam, wiping his drool, also began to ask questions about how soon Lena would be able to develop an antidote. Lena said that it is high time to understand that the same thing should be done as was done with Samantha, since he is not only not susceptible to the virus, but can also treat people through close contact. Then this must be done. Samantha said that first he needs to save 100 people who were part of the resistance unit and were infected. Now they are in quarantine. Sam sweat dropped when he learned that spending time with a hundred zombies was just the beginning of a mission to save the world. Lena said that he would not be able to save so many people with his body, so she needed to develop an antidote so that this virus could be destroyed en masse. Samantha asked Lena if she knew how to create an antidote, to which she replied that she was the best student at her university and also wrote a dissertation on the topic of viruses. But in addition to Sam's blood, she needed the source code of the virus. Samantha said that the source code couldn't be bought now, even on the black market, and asked where they could look for it. The source code was located in the Central City Laboratory on the third floor in room 308, Lena said. Lena said that she has a twin sister who participated in a secret project related to viruses and told her about it and then disappeared. The hero told Lena not to worry and leave the investigation of her sister's disappearance to him. He will try to find traces of her presence in the laboratory. 
The girl said that she has already come to terms with the loss of her sister, because if she can stop the zombie apocalypse, then her sister did not live her life in vain. And if Lena manages to make an antidote, then she will not only save the world, but will also gain eternal fame and wealth. And he will also be able to become the chief physician of the hospital and stop obeying stupid bosses. Samantha was surprised by this answer. Sam and Samantha arrived at the laboratory. Many monsters were roaming around it. They understood that with so many zombies around, it would be difficult for them to get inside the building. But Sam, as always, came up with a brilliant plan. He was going to distract everyone so that his partner could get into the building unnoticed. He took off his t-shirt and invited all the zombies to try a small piece of fresh young meat. They could smell Sam's body and were very excited. Some of them shouted at him to stay where he was. Sam told Samantha that once he got away from them, he would meet her inside, and he sped up. He ran faster and faster and hurried the walking dead. He needed to take them as far as possible from the entrance to the building. When the zombies were distracted, Samantha ran as fast as she could towards the laboratory. She understood that Sam was now risking his life to save humanity, and she could not let him down. Sam, meanwhile, led several dozen zombie girls behind him. He decided to get on the bus so that the girls would follow him when the last zombie entered the bus. Sam closed the doors, asking everyone to fasten their seatbelts and hold on to the handrails. Samantha watched this picture from the side and waited for him to free himself and join her. Sam knew that he needed to neutralize the zombies and save them if possible. Samantha watched the bus rock from side to side. The girls tried to climb out of the windows and ask for help. After a while, each of the girls stood and tried to breathe air. Sam did a good job. But Sam decided that once was not enough, because they still had not begun to turn back into people. Soon, Sam left with a feeling of accomplishment. He felt a little hot because he had saved so many girls in a row. Samantha met him as he got off the bus, but he was surprised why she didn't take advantage of the time he'd bought especially for her. She replied that she could not get in because the doors were bulletproof. This once again confirmed for Sam that they were on the right track, because who would put such protection on an ordinary laboratory? He said it was worth trying out the equipment he made for Samantha. She replied that she did not yet know how to use the new metal hand. The hero said that she is directly connected to the brain, and if she imagines a weapon in her thoughts, her hand will turn into this weapon. The girl said that if this was such a joke, she would kill him. She began to concentrate on laser weapons, which were capable of opening a thick metal door like a tin can. The hand obeyed her. She felt how it was being rebuilt. And just minutes later, the door was almost opened by a laser beam of light. Samantha was delighted with what she could do with her new hand. But Sam said now is not the time to be surprised, because they are in danger. And indeed, the laboratory was filled with monsters, but they were a little different from those on the bus. Samantha said that these are stalker-level zombies, since they have been converted for a long time, and now they only want to kill, and they also have enormous power. Sam asked how many levels of zombies there were. The girl said that the most important division is between those who can still be saved, who have turned recently, and those who have already lost their minds. These zombies no longer hunt for the entire body of men. They only need their brains, and the one killed will not die in pleasure. Sam said that this was very good, and he would not be ashamed that he did not even try to save these. Samantha asked to underestimate the guy of these high-level monsters. They can cause a lot of trouble. Sam pulled out two huge pistols from the Sacred Stone, which have an unlimited number of cartridges and incredible killing power. He warned the monsters for the last time that he would shoot if they attacked him. But judging by the girl's growls, they did not hear him or did not understand him. And then Sam showed his skills in shooting a pistol and began hitting zombies with shots to the head. Thanks to his skills, Sam never missed and every shot hit the target. The girl understood that the weapon in the hero's hands was a non-standard pistol. Otherwise, the bullets would have bounced off the zombies like they were off a wall. While the girl was watching, they began to walk around her from behind. The zombie tried to use his long tongue to kill Samantha, but she already knew how to use her new arm and imagined a new weapon in her mind. A sharp, double-sided, huge blade was preparing to meet the attacker. With a striking blow, Samantha overtook the enemy only once was enough. The attacker's body scattered in different directions, as did the blood that filled the entire space around. Samantha strikingly struck a winning pose. It was disgusting to feel dirty blood on my body. The hero said that the suit has a cleaning function and she can try it. The girl was again surprised by such technologies. She liked her costume more and more. Mechanical arms with brushes emerged from the suit and began cleaning. Sam said that these brushes could clean even the most hidden corners of her body and suit. The girl was embarrassed. She felt the cleaning work. Sam asked if she liked feeling such soft and gentle brushes on her body. 
The girl was embarrassed. She had just experienced a surge of pleasure on the battlefield. Suddenly the ground began to shake underfoot. The building swayed from side to side. Something huge began to break out of the ground. The heroes began to worry about whether they could get out of this building alive. A huge, fat purple monster of terrible size came out. Samantha said that there was no point in engaging in battle with this monster, because their strengths were unequal. She suggested that they go in different directions and meet in room 308 after escaping. Sam did not come up with a better plan, but simply began to run away, wishing his partner good luck. But since the monster was also a female zombie, she began to catch up with the hero because only men attracted her. She ran very fast and the word man was heard in her growl. A new rescue plan could not be born in Sam's head out of fear. He simply ran as fast as he could. The monster was getting closer and closer with every second. The chances of escaping were disappearing before our eyes. A huge force leap smashed the floor to pieces. Due to the resulting chaos, the monster could not see where Sam had disappeared. Sam ran into some room and hid. He was very tired and understood that if he had not hidden, he would have been crushed like a cake. His gaze fell on the huge incubators. Perhaps someone was being raised in them. He began to look more closely at the incubators, trying to see what kind of animals were growing there. He was amazed that small children were being raised in the incubator. He didn't understand how they survived, because the zombie apocalypse had begun quite a long time ago. He came closer, wondering if he had found a holy place. But the child opened his eyes and turned his head towards the hero. And now he had already broken the glass and jumped straight at Sam. It happened very quickly and the hero did not have time to jump away. The little zombie bit his hand. Before Sam had time to come to his senses, he heard the crash of other incubators and the glass shattered. And new little zombies crawled towards him. They wanted to play. Sam didn't know what to do right. They are children but zombies, whether to kill or save, and whether it is even possible to save them. Sam decided to call a friend because he didn't know how to deal with children and he needed help. And then she appeared, a beautiful girl. Irina appeared in front of the hero and was a little dumbfounded by such a sudden movement in space. She asked what help her beloved friend needed. Sam said that he would explain the whole situation to her later, but now he needs to deal with small children and laughed at the end. Irina said that she felt black energy from them, and they were no longer children, but terrible monsters. The girl began to use a spell to split black energy. The room was illuminated with light. The monsters began to dissolve in the sacred light and children's crying was heard. Sam said he was very glad to see her, thanked her for her help and asked what she was wearing. The girl said that she was in the store and was choosing an outfit for herself, so that when he returned, she would give him herself in this outfit. But suddenly, she was called into this world. Sam said that he liked her gift and could accept it in advance, that is, right now. The girl asked if he had time now because they were saving the world from evil. Suddenly, Sam's recently bitten hand suddenly began to hurt. Irina asked what was happening to him and how to help him. Sam said that he was probably infected with an infection that one of the little zombies gave him through a bite. Irina said that it was necessary to suck the poison out of his body to stop the spread of infection. Sam asked why suck out the poison if she knows many spells to neutralize the poison in the body. But the girl had already grabbed his hand and began to suck the poison out of the wound. Sam asked if it would harm her own body, since she could get infected too. The girl said that her body is immune to most poisons and toxins around the world. She looked into his eyes and suddenly her expression changed. Irina said that the wound on her hand was too small and that the poison needed to be sucked out from a more effective place. Sam didn't understand whether he and his charisma were to blame for what the girl had just proposed to do. Irina told the hero not to worry. She would be able to block the spread of the poison and save him. Sam was pleased to feel the poison leaving his body. The girl asked him to be careful next time and not expose himself to the bites of these creatures. Maggie and Siri stood and discussed the fact that Irina had disappeared and had been gone for a long time. They realized that Sam had called her and were jealous. Maggie asked Siri why he didn't call her. What happened the last time between them? The princess said that there was nothing wrong. She was just helping him solve a few problems. And then the younger sister burst into tears. She was upset that the hero did not call her, but Maggie said not to be upset because she had never been called, unlike them. And then Irina appeared. Sweat flowed from her forehead and she felt short of breath. Siri asked what they were doing with the hero. The girl could not answer because she had poison from Sam's body in her mouth. The girls continued to ask questions, but Irina still could not answer. And so the girl swallowed the contents of her mouth, winced and was able to answer. The poison stuck a little in my throat and I had to swallow a lot of liquid. Maggie approached Irina and smelled her breath. She licked her lips and remembered how she had already tasted this poison stored in the hero's body. 
The zombies continued to wander around the laboratory in search of the hero. He felt much better, his arm no longer bothered him, and the release of the poison really helped. The zombies ran towards the hero to grab him. They surrounded and prepared to eat the brain, but suddenly they were torn apart by an incredible force. Sam felt a surge of strength throughout his body, and most of all in his recently wounded arm. Sam thought that he shouldn't have thought about how to get rid of the poison earlier, especially since it was connected with his main game skill of charisma. Next, Sam saw a gaming artifact in the form of a stone on the floor. Apparently it was very expensive and emitted a lot of magical energy, which is of little use to him in this game world. He decided to exchange the artifact for something more useful for this mission. Meanwhile, Samantha continued to run away from the hordes of zombies chasing her. She tried to fight, but they did not end. Every minute there were more and more of them, and she had to run. While running away, she tripped and fell. She no longer had time to recover and start running. The zombies were advancing. Like a friend, a grenade flew over the crowd of zombies. A monstrous explosion lit up the room, red liquid from the zombie bodies flying in all directions. As the smoke cleared, Samantha wondered who had saved her. She peered into the smoke, and a new batch of zombies was already approaching. A hero appeared. In his hands, he held a huge machine gun, and over his shoulder hung a belt of large caliber cartridges. He told the girls to bend down, and he began, without releasing the trigger, to release the entire clip towards the walking dead. Several hundred bullets were fired towards the zombies. The machine gun cooled down and the haze dissipated. The zombies had no chance to withstand so many shots. They lay dead on the floor. Sam placed another light stone in the piggy bank for the game inventory. Sam knew that these stones would still be useful to him because they were so expensive in the game store. Samantha asked where he got the machine gun since he did not carry it with him from the shelter. Sam said that he found it in the laboratory on the floor above. The girl noted that if there is such a weapon, then not everything is so simple with this building and the experiments that were carried out here. Sam said that the owners of this complex clearly knew that their experiment was not so safe, so they had a weapons warehouse. The girl asked if Sam wanted to say that the zombie apocalypse was not an accident, and it was all planned in advance. The hero replied that he could not say this for sure, but they were already near room 308, and now they would be able to find answers to their questions. So they approached the desired room and prepared to enter. Samantha said she would cover for him, but he still had to be careful. The door was not closed, and Sam pulled the handle. The door opened. When the door opened completely, the trap was triggered, and the rope broke. A dozen sharp blades flew at the hero at great speed. Thanks to good reaction and physical preparation, the hero managed to dodge the flying knives. He thought that the defense had been passed and the path was clear, but he felt the cold muzzle of a pistol pressing against his temple and the trigger being pulled down. Sam asked not to shoot at him because he did not come here to steal something. A small copy of Lena, a girl with a double-barreled shotgun, lowered it and said that if he was not a zombie, she would not harm him. Sam said that he really wasn't a zombie and thanked her for her prudence. Samantha asked why the girl looked like Lena's younger sister if she said that she had a twin sister. The girl asked if they really knew her sister Lena. Sam heard from Lena that her sister was dead and so he decided that it was a small zombie, like he saw in the incubator, only a little older. The sister did not like how the hero decided to test her humanity. She told Sam that if he didn't stop, her gun would help clear his head somewhere outside his head. Sam began to say that they got here on a tip from her sister, who told about the source code that was needed for the antidote. The sister said in disappointment that Lena only wanted information, not to save her sister. The girl said that her name is Inga, and she has long been holding the defense of this room from a zombie attack. Samantha told Inga that her sister Lena was sure that the girl was dead. Inga said that her sister does not think that she is dead, but wishes it. Sam asked why Inga is so small if she should look exactly like Lena. Inga said that it was due to an incorrectly prepared antidote. It reduced her body in size and made her look like this. Sam drew attention to Inga's chest and asked if she thought that some parts of her body still remained as adults. She replied that her breasts also became three times smaller than they were. Sam was shocked by this information. He imagined what she looked like before her body was shrunk, and he began to drool. But Samantha quickly brought him to his senses with a blow to the head from a mechanical hand. Inga said that from childhood she surpassed her sister in everything, studies, relationships, career. She said that if Sam helped her, then she would allow him to enjoy her body not only in his dreams. Sam said she didn't think well of him, and he was going to help her not because she offered him her body in return. Samantha didn't know what to say to this because she had already studied the hero and knew that Inga's proposal was a hit on target. Sam said that he could not refuse the girl and asked how he could help her. She replied that her goal should be his goal too, 
because the antidote would restore her to her former appearance and he would be pleased. Samantha asked how Inga plans to make the antidote and what it will take. She replied that to create it, she needed her mother's zombie genes, which she didn't have last time. She said that there were three very first experimental subjects in whose bodies the infection was placed. They became the first zombies. Sam asked where the three were now and what to do. Inga said that all the necessary information is stored on the computer, but it is under a password, and if you enter the wrong password again, the computer will self-destruct. Sam asked what password options there might be and where to look for answers. The password for the computer is Lena's birthday, but for some reason Inga does not remember this date. Samantha asks how the password associated with Lena ended up on this computer. The password was set by Lena's father, who was one of the creators of the project. He said about the password a moment before he died from an infection that he himself created. Sam asked how she could not know this date because it was impossible. The girl said that a long time ago, she decided to forget everything that once connected them because she always tried to offend her as a child. The hero asked why she had not yet gone to her sister and asked her date of birth. If this is so important for humanity or because of childhood grievances, she decided to die and kill everyone. The girl said that she could not go out all this time because in addition to the zombies, there was a Class B zombie walking around the building who would crush them all and not even wince. Sam said that he wants to make explosives, but he needs materials for this. Inga said that there were explosives, but in order to destroy the zombies of Rank B, they needed to be detonated at close range. Sam said that he was a man and could attract her as close as possible. A huge zombie was wandering around the building, carrying in his hand the corpse of a young, recently turned zombie. Sam began to call her to him. She heard a man's voice and became interested. He called upon her using the charisma skill so that she would lose her head, literally and figuratively, as quickly as possible. The huge monster rushed towards Sam, but he did not move. The zombie grabbed the hero tightly with both hands, but something went wrong. It turned out that it was a shadow clone created using magic. This clone contained a huge explosive charge inside. There was an explosion, fire and blood scattered in different directions and another magical artifact from the collection of the most expensive ones fell out of the monster. Sam took it and was glad that his plan worked exactly as intended. The girls discussed the hero, saying that despite the fact that he is full of secrets, he can be trusted, he is a good person. The heroes got into the car and headed to Lena, who was waiting for them in her hospital. When they returned, they said that they had good news for her. Samantha asked Sam to be quiet as she noticed that Lena was resting. Lena was indeed sleeping on the sofa in her office. She was not wearing a robe, and her skirt was hiked up so that her pink underwear was visible. Sam said that they need to wake her up quickly and ask her date of birth because it is very important. Inga said that she can endure this until the morning because she is also tired and is not going to look for an antidote today. Very strange sisters, Samantha thought. Meanwhile, Sam again felt pain in his arm. Sam said it was the virus getting the better of him again. Samantha asked what should be done to help him. Sam said that he knows one way that has already helped him. But for this, he needs to find several recently turned zombies so that he can get closer to them. The girl said that he destroyed all the zombies in this building, and now they will not find zombies. Sam asked Samantha to help him, but she replied that her battle suit would not allow her to do so. Sam replied that this suit has everything covered for situations when she needs to go to the toilet, or for such an emergency as now, there is a button on the back of her neck to rebuild the suit. Samantha pulled her hand behind her neck and felt the button there and pressed it. And indeed, all her private parts were freed from the costume. She was embarrassed, because in her memory this was the first time Sam saw her without clothes. Sam placed Samantha near the bed where Lena was sleeping, placed her upper body on the bed, and began to work on releasing the virus from her body. Lena was fast asleep and did not hear the heavy breathing of Samantha, who was covering her mouth with a blanket. Sam asked her to be patient so that loud noises would not wake Lena. Sam enjoyed the process. Samantha sighed heavily. She felt good and at the same time ashamed that she had become just a toy. He released the poison from his body directly into Samantha. She felt the zombie poison fill her body and for a split second she began to act like a monster and she even bit Sam on the shoulder through his clothes. He said that he's not against such games and it even turns him on. The girl apologized. She did not understand how a strange force took over her consciousness. Sam said it was okay, but if she wanted to make amends, she could do it. Samantha said that she thought Dr. Lena was awake and could hear everything. Sam said that everything was fine and she was sleeping like a baby because she was tired after all this time. He noticed her gorgeous form and thought that he wouldn't mind trying to leave his poison on two girls at the same time. In fact, Lena was not sleeping. 
but she was embarrassed to admit it and disturbed these two. It was still dark early in the morning. Sam meditated, tuning his internal energy so that in an emergency he could quickly use one or another technique. He didn't know what he had to do next, because the salvation of the world was at stake and his mind had to be sober. To begin with, he decided to go for a walk, to be alone with his thoughts. Suddenly he saw a girl, thought it was Dr. Lena, and decided to go to her and ask what to do next. He came up from behind and hugged her. He decided to tease her. But I realized that something was wrong. The girl was bigger than Sam. He asked her when she got so big. She said that this is also the effect of the wrong antidote for the virus. Sam realized that it was not Lena, but Inga, whose body took on a small and then a large form. The girl said that this is normal. Her body is constantly changing in size, and nothing can be done about it until she creates an antidote to the virus. The girl said that if he told her the secret of his resistance to the virus, she would reward him. Sam said he doesn't know why, but his body is rejecting the virus. That is, after infection, it is enough for him to release the infection through another male opening in order to return to normal. Inga asked. The girl said that she was not against providing him with such help so that he would stay alive as long as possible. While they were talking, Lena came up from behind. She asked Inga how it happened that she was still alive. Inga asked whether her sister was more disappointed that the guy she liked was trying to establish contact with her sister or that her sister was still alive. Sam asked the girls to be more friendly because they are relatives. Two girls attacked him. It seemed like he could die at any second due to his unsolicited comments. Inga said that there was no point in sorting things out and asked Lena to tell her her date of birth in order to unlock her father's computer. There was a photo of one of the sisters on the computer. Lena asked if her father said that this was the date of her birth. Inga said that he simply said about the date, and she concluded that this was the date of birth of his beloved daughter. Sam listened to the sisters' conversation and understood that it would be incredibly difficult to reconcile them. Lena said that what surprises her more than her father's death is that Inga doesn't remember her date of birth. Lena said that unlike her sister, she remembers her birthday and reached for the computer. Inga tried to stop her, saying that she needed to enter Lena's date of birth and that there was only one chance left to enter the password. Lena said that she herself knows what she is doing and there is no need to interfere. She entered the expected password. It was Inga's date of birth. A photograph appeared on the computer screen of two sisters standing next to their father. Inga was shocked that the password was her date of birth and not her sister's. Lena said that as a child, she had the wrong impression about their father's attitude towards his daughters, because he treated her so warmly, so that Lena would not feel inferior compared to Inga. One day Lena heard her father say that he considered Inga a genius who would change the world. Inga had tears in her eyes. She didn't know that all this time she had been thinking badly about her loved ones in vain. When she calmed down, she said that even if this was all true, it did not cancel the difficulties she faced in childhood. Lena said that she was not interested in her speculations, and now it was only important to find the first experimental subjects and create an antidote. All data on the three zero patients was blocked. Everyone was surprised by this. Inga did not expect anything else from her father after all. This information cost him a lot. They would have to wait at least 48 hours to unlock it. Sam was only happy about this. They could rest, and in the future a serious battle would await them. To his words, the eldest added that there was a good healing bath here. She was definitely hinting at something. Our hero immediately realized what Mrs. Inga was hinting at. He would be happy to receive help from such a beauty. Lena clenched her fists because Sam was planning something bad with his sister, perhaps some kind of obscenity. Not even a second had passed. Sam began to deny his words, calling the previous dialogue a joke. He was very scared and decided to run away before he was cut to pieces, adding that the sisters should talk to each other. The eldest could not believe that her Lena could be as greedy for handsome men as a vulgar woman. A smouldering cigarette scattered clouds of smoke, and the beauty tried with all her might to convince her that she didn't say that she liked Sam, and that she could do whatever she wanted. But Lena herself was going to bed. The girl was very glad that her sister took away all the most valuable things throughout her childhood. But here, everything will be the other way around. Meanwhile, Brother Sam found the very bath that Inga spoke about, but she did not say that it would be so magnificent. While the girls were arguing among themselves and post-apocalyptic life was seething outside the window, the hero was trying with all his might to enjoy the bath. His optimism came to an end when he realized that he had no one to share this giant bath with. But this is not a problem at all. As long as you have a lot of cards with beauties at hand, who will always come to the rescue in difficult times, like now. Suddenly his hand slipped, 
and apparently his choice would fall on everyone's beloved Maggie. He was wary that the card might get wet underwater, which is good. After the card fell, our beauty came out, looking different. We don't remember her like that at all. In such attire, she was truly beautiful. And besides, she was glad that it was her turn. He was as shocked as we were, but he happened to meet a gorgeous girl instead of the usual Meg. But she had no time for that at all. She said that she might be offended if he chose only his sister, Siri and Irene. Until now, he could not move away from the spectacle before his eyes, and finally asked how long ago she decided to change her image. Truly a goddess, I can't stop admiring these curves and shapes. Well, let's get to the point, in fact, she just decided to try something new, but he doesn't like it. He scratched his lips and asked if she herself had noticed anything strange just below. The view from below made her breathe harder, but it was true that at first she did not pay attention to Sam Jr. Without further ado, she began to approach the handsome man to do something most incredible. While she was enjoying the bath and more, a girl entered the bath and called out to him. And here is our Inga. She was so prepared for this meeting that she already inflated the circle and found a suitable swimsuit. Not even a second has passed and she's already jumping like a bomb into the water and Sam doesn't understand what she's doing here or what outfit she's wearing. Little by little she approached him and asked why she couldn't swim in such a cool bathroom. In response, she received strange moans from him. She had nothing more to say to him. She really hoped that her boyfriend didn't do anything bad to himself. Maggie's techniques made it more and more difficult for him. Without thinking, he said that he liked the adult version of Inga better. She didn't like these words since she was going to prove that all her conditions were ideal. Sam was about to give up. He was at the limit and the nurse was closer and closer. There was a giant explosion that shocked the big sister beyond belief. Two days have already passed since that awkward situation. Data on the first patients should have already been unblocked. Their first target will be a beautiful professor with blood type zero, height 167 centimeters, with a compatibility with the virus of more than 90%, weighing 48 kilograms, and her name is Lisa. Sam was surprised that their first patient zero was a teacher and such a beautiful one. Inga previously knew Lisa since she herself became a volunteer in order to receive sponsorship for the treatment of students, but she did not even dare to expect that she would be chosen. It was then that the hero asked where they would look for her, where she thought she might be. She immediately said that the new experimental subjects could have had many side effects in which they continued their activities. All this leads to the fact that she probably remained at her home job and that's where they will look for her. Samantha was charged with unshakable energy since they knew where to go so there was no time to run. Sam noticed her energy. Something about her breathing was too heavy. Her eyes were red, which was definitely wrong with her. Suddenly she attacked the hero. He realized that she was having another attack. But how could that be? He healed her himself. The brother was not happy that the sisters were standing aside and not paying attention to what was happening here. Lena responded by saying that the ferocious Samantha still had the virus in her body, but it was dead, which means nothing bad would happen to her. Only one thing. There is only one thing he should do, and that is to help her every time when she needs it. Well, if so, he cannot refuse either her or them. After all, everything is for the sake of saving humanity. There was only one thing that worried him and that was that the extra spectators were too extra. After all, it was very awkward. Inga instantly came up with excuses. She seemed to need to consider the whole process in order to go deeper into it. For Lena, everything is simple. This is her office and everyone should leave here except her. Samantha couldn't argue with anyone. Her animal instinct wanted only one thing. Even if he agreed, the brother could not calm himself down and remove his excitement. The girl didn't like the way her partner was moving at all. And besides, he was blocking the whole view. He was furious. What is this? Inga has become an operator. Could someone help with this? Still, Samantha is in such a state that she cannot be restrained so easily. Lena noticed this as just a reason to join in. Even her cheeks shone. What a girl's. Inga also did not tolerate such bad work and immediately sent her sister to be devoured by a monster, a bed monster. But she didn't expect at all to be waiting on this couch, and yet he only asked her to help him. Initially, everything was going well. As soon as he finished with Samantha, he moved on to the second one and she was just happy. The brother will always find a reason to cleanse the body of his partners. What could happen to them if not him? Inga was amazed by this experiment. She was able to obtain so much necessary information. Two hours passed and two were knocked out. Time after time, the bed monster wins in unequal conditions. He did this to the girls, and now he says how he was exhausted and went out to get some air. Here, his peace was disturbed by the eldest, who from the very beginning thought that he would not be able to hook Lena. This is all a long story, so they will have to go with Samantha to find patient zero 
how he can help her in an emergency. She said that if he begged her on his knees, she would volunteer and go with him. But how so? He asked. Why did he need such a little thing? It's better not to joke with her like that, but it's better to keep your mouth shut. This little thing can shoot off eggs. There will be nothing to fight with. By her actions, she showed that even in such a body, she was capable of strangling a healthy man. Here, the hero was not so brave and asked her to stop since the gun might fire. The bullet flew out of the muzzle with lightning speed and broke the cup without thereby injuring Brother Sam. She blew the smoke out of the barrel, telling him that instead of chattering in vain, he would have just taken her with him. He has nothing to say here, he has no choice, so he's given only one answer, yes. The night passed, and near the academy the life of the dead was seething, standing very strangely in one heap. And the strange thing is that in all parts of the world with zombies, they wandered around and each took their own place, and not like here. The same thing was noticed by the brother, who himself often noticed that they would walk far from each other. She had an answer to this. The fact is that the mind of the experimental sample, so to speak, the mother, wants to return to the past, and the zombies themselves fall under its control and obey her. Sam thought they would need to sneak into the locker room and steal patient zero. Everything is not so simple. Inga said that if they disturb the peace of the main mind, this entire hive will cause destruction, as it senses a threat. Just in time, an unfamiliar zombie almost snuck into the territory, whom they would not let in to take his mother's place. As soon as a zombie entered the territory, everyone headed towards him. And this was only because their chips were half the price of other academies. This shocked the handsome man, since if they twitched, they would create a fuss that would ruin the whole plan. That's when she suggested approaching the matter wisely, coming up with a more reasonable plan. Meanwhile, a certain female voice said anxiously whether the two of them would be caught doing this. These were two zombie girls who decided, out of necessity, to create one during their studies. Suddenly Sam intervened in their affairs, who noticed that these two were engaged in such horror, and if anyone noticed, he asked. One of the dead noticed a handsome face in him, which immediately made her flare up. She jumped on him and offered to meet him. She won't always meet the most handsome guy in the world. He was surprised that this generation does this when they are not in a relationship. But when they see handsome men, they jump on them. Just a few moments and the girls rest on the ground. Apparently, they had a hard time. For that, he was able to find clothes for himself and Inge, which would become camouflage for them for the first time. But as soon as he looked down at the little one, he was shocked by her strange appearance, which clearly gave her away. For her, this was not a problem. For mindless zombies, it would do just fine and wouldn't hurt in any way. And besides, they had completed the first and easiest part of the plan. Then they headed to the classroom where our target, Lisa, was teaching, who was drawing something on the board. The zombie professor warned her students that they should listen to her as the topic would not be easy. In response, she received an unfortunate moo, which endlessly swept throughout the office. Sam asked his partner if she knew why their target was teaching zombies, a teacher of the dead, scary. According to the beauty, Lisa is a mother's mind and sees all the girls in the audience completely differently. This is roughly how she sees all the students, whose smiles shine and their skin shimmers in the light. She was not at all happy with those two scoundrels since they disrupted her lesson. And this is disrespect for the teacher. Her words were followed by a surprise chalk attack. They had better dodge otherwise it wouldn't bode well for them. He suspected this was a great danger. What could happen to him if he collided with the chalk at point-blank range? Fortunately, he managed to avoid the blow, but it only hit a neighbor behind her who almost flew off her chair. He was horrified. Somehow he immediately turned pale because he realized that this teacher could easily kill. Meanwhile, the lesson was over and she was about to go to her office, saying that she would be waiting for the talkers. Lisa left the office and Sam realized that this would be the perfect opportunity for him to get all the bodily fluids from patient zero. Only Inga warned him that he could not use force against her as this would put the entire academy on notice. Everything led to the fact that he would have to make Mrs. Elizabeth fall in love with him in order to achieve his goal. According to the little one's first plan, everything should have gone so that she would warm the heart of the cold queen with her cute little face. In his vision, he saw all the delights of this plan, how Professor Lisa would personally teach him additional classes. He hit the table with his hand and screamed that he couldn't play with the feelings of his dear teacher. But still, he apologized to Mrs. Elizabeth in advance that he was doing this only for the sake of saving humanity. Only Inga knows how, at the moment when he gathered his courage and imagined all the delights, to say that she also has a second plan. He won't need this plan. After some time, she herself will see his triumphant return. Silence and disorder reigned in the teacher's rooms. 
Clearly, there had been no one here for a long time, or no one intelligent. During her work, Lisa constantly thought about how nervous she was becoming. She probably didn't have enough of a man at hand, she said. Before entering, student Sam introduced himself to her and said that he had come to talk. Meanwhile, she reminded him of the rules, which state that students can start relationships, but they do not dare disrupt classes. He, of course, understood everything and said that this was not his girlfriend and he loved someone completely different. For the godlike beauty of the professor, it doesn't matter that he likes someone there. She only cares about his knowledge. But he didn't want to retreat. He suddenly grabbed her tender hand like a silk veil. And finally, he said these words, I like you, professor. His aggressive flirting technique should work. But it didn't bother her at all. She pulled her hand away from him and said, Firstly, I'm your teacher. And secondly, I don't like those who don't study in class. He answered with lightning speed that he studied her subject with a heart full of joy and put his soul into knowledge so that he knew all her words. She's seen people like this more than once, since this is the case. Then solve the tasks I personally compiled and we'll check what you're capable of, she said. Sitting down in front of the assignment form, he asked if he solved everything, he would deserve a kiss. She decided that he would at least start. Somehow she was flattered by this, since this had never happened to her before. But she cannot be fooled by her face alone. Yes, she is still a teacher. Meanwhile, Sam was much more worried. The sweat of despair was dripping from his forehead. And in his head, he did not understand what kind of questions they were. How could this be higher mathematics? Suddenly, he remembered about a system in which he could buy whatever he wanted for points. He asked Archimedes, Gauss, Descartes, Lagrange, Pythagoras, and all the outstanding mathematicians of all time to give him knowledge. Now these problems are just baby talk for him. It's not for nothing that he sped up so much when he started writing. Lisa was speechless. Her magnificent eyes became wider and wider as she saw his unsurpassed speed. He stood up confidently and handed her all her assignments, which definitely surprised her. She had never met such a mind. He literally exceeded all her expectations by several heads. The speed was incredible and everything was right. She couldn't recover from what she saw, but he grabbed her and pressed her lips with his lips, and then they came together. The heroine immediately flared up from this. Her body did not obey her. She could not even push him away from her. Why can't I refuse a kiss? What draws me to him, she asks. Can't I really say no to such a smart man? The brother was already hinting at a future together, in which new minds of humanity would be born from their genes. She couldn't do everything so quickly. She was not yet ready for such an important step in life. But he no longer listened to her. He only needs one thing, and that is the goal of saving people or something else. Then students knocked on the door and had some questions specifically for Professor Lisa. She realized that her Sam needed to hide, as the students might suspect them. The hero was furious. What questions could zombies have? How difficult it is to save this world, he said. Two zombie students entered the office and came to her with a very important question. How she understands them remains a secret, but they wanted to understand what they did not understand in the last lesson. She immediately decided to get to work with the girls. Well, what questions do you have? She asked. Under the table, he wondered how powerful she was, what she could do to take over everything here with her mind. But you can't focus yourself only on this. And it came to his mind that he would try his new technique. While a fellow student was doing something with her downstairs, she was explaining an important topic to the girls with great diligence. His technique worked properly, and every emotion imaginable was depicted on her face. The girls became very interested in what was happening to their teacher. Meanwhile, our hero tickled her heels through her tights, thinking that although she was a zombie, she was still sensitive. She tried with all her might to understand to the students that she was just a little unwell today, but her body was trembling, and she couldn't say a word without moaning and groaning. The heat filled her. In this state, she could not work and told the girls to go, and they would deal with the topic tomorrow. Then the beauties came out of the teacher's room and wished the professor all the best, which she deserved. Here she lowered her gaze towards Sam, not understanding what he was doing there. He responded by saying that her legs were too gorgeous. He simply could not resist and reminded her that she should become his girlfriend according to the terms of the bet. In the depths of her heart, she understood that she could not meet with the student, no matter how good he was, and came up with a new test for him, where he had to be not only a thinker, but also a soldier. It will be done, he said. You just need to come to the gym. I will wait for you there. I will show my best sides. Then he decided to leave anyway, saying that she was obliged to come to him, following him. She screamed that she would not come anywhere, even though he would beg her on his knees. All this time, Inga was waiting for him at the entrance to find out how the process was going and whether there were any problems. He replied that everything was normal, and for the sake of saving humanity, 
He was ready to do anything that was hard to believe in. She confirmed my words. She would never have believed what he was doing in the name of the common good. Later, the brother said that he wanted to return the heroine to her previous appearance, which seemed more true to her. And in the teacher's room, Lisa couldn't get this meeting out of her head. She was thinking that a second ago she said that she wouldn't go anywhere, and now she doubts it. How can she be strong, be an example? She looked into the sports building where the light was burning in the glass. This could not mean anything other than that he had arrived. Time passed, and the clock hands were dipping towards night. The sun went below the horizon, and all living things were preparing for sleep. Even at this time, the Ice Queen worked tirelessly, and more than six hours had already passed. Again, she looked out the window where she saw the building and the light was still burning in it. What a misfortune. She entered the hall with a roar and screamed, and asked if her student Sam was still there. Looking into the depths of the hall, Lisa was greatly surprised by what she saw, as if she had not expected anything like this. And here you are, Elizabeth. I knew that you would come. What kind of test will you come up with now for me to become your man? This chatterbox kept saying endlessly. She picked up a nearby basketball and challenged him to shoot a hundred three-pointers. He smiled arrogantly and said that it would not be easy, but for her sake he was ready to cut down mountains. Then she tossed the ball and announced the prize, whatever he wanted from her, but deep down she understood that even Stephen Curry was not capable of this. In fact, he has been secretly training for two years and can show something very interesting. But it's true, his dribbling of the ball is very good, but he can still demonstrate something. He acted like a child in front of his classmate, who was ashamed when he told her to turn on the music. Here she did not understand at all what dancing had to do with it, and whether it could be called dancing. Meanwhile, he threw the 13th ball in a row. So far, everything is going well. At this rate, the victory will be in his hands. The 14th ball also flew into the hoop perfectly, like NBA players. Another throw, only from behind, and once again he misses. 88 three-pointer, and he doesn't even strain, scoring balls with all parts of his body. Victory was his, the hundredth hit out of a hundred. Our hero again fulfilled the professor's conditions. It was not easy for him, as if he had fought with a crowd of zombies near the academy. After this feat, she was seized by a blow to her heart, which beat more and more often. She can already imagine their spring, when the cherry blossoms are in bloom, pink leaves creeping along the tiles of the sidewalks as she and Sam walk hand in hand. This feeling of youth and stupidity overwhelmed her, a feeling of awakened and stormy passion. Am I really young again? Can I walk hand in hand with a handsome young man again and imagine a future together? Lisa asks. The brother noticed how she looked thoughtfully into space and asked why she was so thoughtful. She did not hesitate and laid out everything that she would like to go to the academy with him, watch films, swim in the same bathroom in a hotel, and imagine a future together. He noticed well that she was very worried, and in this state she said everything that was on her mind. Lisa embarrassedly turned her gaze away and said with a trembling voice that everything was completely different. The handsome man approached her and reminded her of her promise. After all, he completed his hundred three-pointers. Now it's her turn. The main thing for her is that none of the teachers and students find out about this. Only one thing, but... This, however, turned out to be that she did not know whether he cared about the age difference because she would grow old while he became an adult. It was then that he covered her mouth with his finger, hinting that she would never say such a thing. Everything is so, for him she's like wine. Every year she only becomes more beautiful, and with him she will always feel like she was 18. Suddenly, a zombie scream echoed in the academy courtyard, which only Lisa understood. She looked to the side and said that there were screams and calls for help. But Sam obviously didn't hear anything and asked if she was mistaken. The heroine jumped out of bed and ran to help the kids. Only in the depths of his soul, Sam realized that he had not heard anything. There was commotion on the street. The girls were running as fast as they could while someone was chasing them. One of the girls was caught in chains by an unknown person. What will await our hero? The hunt for the students was led by the zombie director, who during her lifetime loved to bully her students. This fate carried over into this state. Lisa couldn't believe her words. The director of her academy was mocking her students. What a horror. Before her eyes, everything looked exactly like this. Only she had to take off her rose-colored glasses. And she will see this horror. She lost so much time teaching brainless creatures who cannot even utter a word. The truth appeared before her. She had not seen it like that and spent so much time. Am I really not a person? She asks herself. The big man continued to beat the student, repeating that the mother's mind is strong. But she absorbed it. Before she could think about how to find a new target for punishment, she threw the chain at the professor. There was no face on her, fear took over her, and she could not escape this attack. 
Only she must not forget about her lover, who will always come to help in difficult times. The director does not waste time and catches those who fall into her hand. There will be a professor, he will take her, there will be a handsome, handsome man, he will take him. She threw his blade aside. There would be no pity for him, no matter how beautiful he was. This fat girl wanted the same thing as all the zombie girls. They all only wanted to merge with him. He didn't want to have anything to do with such a monster, and immediately said that she was a walking bacon that no one would need. And then came a strong blow to the stomach, which clearly did not do much damage to her. The hand seemed to penetrate into the dough, which did not resist him at all. The director will not tolerate the fact that some student resists her. She will upset him and expel him into the bargain. Brother Hansom was in great danger under the shadow of a giant third-rank monster who wanted to merge with her. Then came a blow from Lisa, who shocked with her abilities. Sam knows who to cross blades with. He was amazed at the strength of his partner. There was nothing even to say. The zombie's teacher was able to throw such a carcass far and for a long time. The enemy will not be happy about this. She doesn't hesitate. Just a couple of seconds to come to her senses and direct her attack at her. The hero was bleeding but could not stop admiring the goddess Elizabeth who shook the earth. Our Scarlet Witch is magnificent, her beauty is incomparable and her character is just a plague. Just something. Her gaze shone with ruby. She didn't care who her students were, people or zombies. She would always protect them and would not give them offense. As soon as she pulled the chain, it broke into its components. The warrior in heels rushed again at the director while she was not expecting unmatched speed. The power was simply amazing. One good attack and she was sent flying. The impact left a strong dent which made the evil headmistress furious. The fat woman tried with all her might to make it clear to her that these were not her students. These were not the kids who sat at their desks and listened to her in class. These are monsters who are ready to do anything to fulfill the needs of the unfortunate virus. She had nothing to answer, to which she remained silent, but the old woman spoke the truth, and only the truth. But she didn't want to stop. She continued to tell her that she was just deceiving herself. That attack was followed by the mass imprisonment of female students in chains, all of whom became slaves to the headmistress. Her face was filled with rage. She growled that she didn't care about her primordial virus. According to her, the whole school, all the students, they are all here to feed her, to give her new strength. This strength is too magnificent. Rose-colored glasses made her see the kind director, but as soon as the fat woman showed her true face, she changed her mind. She understood what the headmistress's attitude was towards the students, towards her dear and beloved students. The heroine will not forgive and get away with this. It is not for nothing that she put such power into her blows. The fight heats up. The headmistress receives blow after blow, and each one makes her fly in different directions. The fat woman is not at all concerned about pain, but on the contrary, she is sure that with her new strength there is no one to defeat her. Only she's not alone and didn't say anything like that, Lisa says in response to the arrogant headmistress. Immediately after these words, a hero appeared behind him, concentrating his power into his hand. The handle of the legendary hammer of light appeared in his hands, which should bury the undead six feet. And so it turned out just one blow shook the ground and turned the street into ruins. The woman covered her face with her hands to protect herself from the dust that rose above them. He still finds it difficult to use the hammer, as it takes too much strength from him. Then he fell headlong onto Elizabeth's ample chest, and she didn't even have time to understand what had happened to him. A familiar voice appeared behind her, telling her that he had passed out from exhaustion. This friend turned out to be a little girl who said that only the professor could help him. She was surprised how exactly only she could help the boy, how it should be done. She hinted that in her blood there are maternal cells that feed the zombies with energy, and the boy is just partially infected with the virus. Well then, how can I help him? What should I do? What should I do with him? Lisa asked over and over again. She came closer and began to whisper what and how to help him. It was immediately clear what she began to explain there. She screamed that she had never done anything like this, and she didn't understand at all how and what to do. The girl was completely disappointed. Well, so be it. She will help her with this. Time passed, and Lisa was only wearing a shirt, but she was not at all prepared for what awaited her. She asked Inga how she and he could do this if he was unconscious. She replied that it was so, but he felt everything. Since everything is so, then she is ready to do anything to save him, she said, and looked at him burdened. The little one rolled up the folder and began to scream, pointing out what the professor should do, and she should start with a kiss, a kiss full of love. She screamed because she didn't like the fact that they were in such a place and in such a situation, and Inga was sitting there like a director of a dubious movie. Then, of course, she moved her face closer to the hero, her whole body glowing with anticipation for this moment, 
and so their tongues intertwined, the situation became more and more awkward. The handsome man and the teacher, fate will bring them together. Only she didn't quite understand what had happened. Their tongues intertwined, although he was unconscious. She almost started another kiss, not understanding why he still hadn't opened his eyes. According to her, this could be explained by an ordinary reflex, like when you hit your knee, you need to move on to the next step. Not even a moment had passed before the screams and sighs of the dear professor began to be heard from the office. Two hours passed, and only then our zero patient was exhausted after a stormy time. Inga was inspired by her, just like the mother's cells. She was about to leave the restroom, but finally she added that she had done a very good job and he should be just fine. The teacher crossed herself and prayed that everything would be exactly as her friend said. Then she entered Sam's room, where he lay motionless. She had nothing to say to him. Just as suddenly, she kicked him in the head so that he would stop pretending. He smiled and thanked her for helping him and not telling him that he was conscious. Then he asked how things were with bodily fluids. I didn't waste my time, she said, and pulled out a flask with that liquid, adding that mother cells are amazing in their effect. She injected just a little and said that just a couple of cells could result. They can lead to such a stunning effect that turns her from a little girl into a first-class beauty. He felt embarrassed by this, which made him remember the agreement. Well, if he found samples of the mother's cells. Inga noticed his incredible pressure. She didn't mind. That's how she got excited. She didn't understand at all how he could cope with her if he had just finished with Lisa. And he is full of power, telling her to never say such a thing to a man again. He was only too glad to accept the challenge of such a beauty and immediately called the system for help. A mysterious bottle appeared in his hands, which, according to statistics, should return all the strength to our hero. He was not going to hesitate and began to swallow the liquid with particular greed. He drank to the last drop of this life-giving water, which should give him a lot of strength. Incredibly, the power overwhelmed him. He even undressed after that. There was too much energy. Inga was inflamed when she saw such a sight and she couldn't believe her eyes, saying that it was scientifically impossible. The brother brazenly replied that the girl was constantly changing her shape and was telling him something about science. She couldn't stand it any longer. Inga wanted to quickly carry out such a large-scale experiment, since she had never done anything like this before. In fact, the hero did not expect her to do this for the first time, but still asked how she liked this experiment. These questions infuriated her, and she asked him not to spoil her mood but rather even say who is better, she or Lena. He couldn't say so directly, but if she agreed with her sister, he would compare in real time. The idea was great, she said, and asked if the reason he was recovering so quickly was because he had become infected. But this was not so important. The heroine ran to the window and noticed something terrifying, then called Sam. As it turned out, all the girls returned to their appearance, and there were no more zombies left in this academy. Everything led to the fact that Lisa's mother cells were able to directly influence the virus and change it. At this rate, they would collect more samples and defeat the virus. He was not going to wait for anyone, saying that they were sitting still and sent her to wake up Lena and Lisa, and then they would discuss the plan. A couple of hours later, and our beauty was dreaming, but it felt like she was about to wake up. Previously, she had not intended to go to bed, but did not notice how she passed out out of the blue. Suddenly, Sam entered the naked Lisa's room, wished her good morning and asked about her condition. The teacher was scared and told him to put something on himself, although she didn't have a thread on her, which he, of course, noticed. Then she became completely covered in red and screamed so that the pervert would not look at her. She remained silent about this moment. She had nothing to say at all. She probably still couldn't get over that night. The hero decided to gloat at her, asking what he didn't see there, but got to the point that after such a spectacle he needed help in one immodest matter. She could not repeat that stormy night since her students, they could enter in short. He interrupted her, wanting to say that he would help her students if she helped him in a difficult situation. Lisa couldn't believe her ears. If he could help them, then she could help him as much as he wanted. Well then, you won't get out of bed until you're old, he said, locking the door. Suddenly, girls entered the room and were unexpectedly safe, alive and well. A certain joy appeared on the professor's face, which she could not stop. Her students were cured. That's what you need for happiness. She asked everyone to come closer to look at the real ones, before the end of the world. But everyone suddenly ran up to Sam, to whom they were turning for help, so that he could examine them properly. The hero began to deny the girls, saying that he and Professor Lisa would protect everyone. But she was not at all happy with the girls' words. But she was not happy that he had definitely done something with her students. It was not without reason that the reasons to kill him were read in her eyes. 
Immediately she went after him to get what he deserved, even if he tried to apologize. Meanwhile, Lena was watching them, smoking a cigarette. In fact, she didn't expect him to be able to capture the test subject's heart. Her little sister immediately came up to her and decided to gloat, saying that morning had not yet come, and Lena was already jealous. She answered her indifferently by saying that she would never in her life be jealous of this womanizer. Then Inga asked her if she would mind if her older sister took her boy. Here Lena did not tolerate her, and grabbing her hand, pointed out to her that she was only using Sam, and she could not love people in principle. It doesn't matter to her whether she loves him or not. This is the tenth thing. It's important for her to take revenge on her youngest for her ruined childhood. No pity or sadness was visible on her face, but deep down the cold-blooded Lena could be very vulnerable. But it was necessary to get to the point. Samantha ran to the sisters to warn them about the download of the second file about Patient Zero. Then the hero got new cards with girls. The first was four-star Lena, who has high knowledge of chemistry. Then our Queen Lisa appeared, who was a rank higher and had the ability to control zombies, which could come in handy. During all this time, Sam tried to explain to the professor in heels about the purpose for which they were hunting for her, about zero patients and mother cells. She explained how she was the one who understood everything. There are three zero patients in the world who have mother cells. The guy confirmed her words, saying that everything is so for this reason she can control and restore zombies. Then Samantha came up and sincerely asked her to help, since with her assistance they could save the world. If so, the girl said, I will help for the sake of humanity, the world and my beloved students. Meanwhile, Inga stood at the computer and waited for the download. According to her words, everything went well. A girl appeared on the screen who resembled a singer or an idol of millions. Unexpectedly for everyone, Lisa was able to recognize this young girl. Even she herself was surprised by this. Her name was Betty. Sam didn't know her, which was natural. Then the professor answered that she was a famous pop singer who had recently gained popularity. Almost all the students were her fans. At that moment, he was struck by the fact that the idol of millions would undertake an experiment and take such risks. Inga responded by saying that her throat cancer had worsened at that time, and in order to save her career, she took such a desperate step. The new virus became her salvation, as it turned out. Just then, she was at the peak of her fame. And in the midst of the end of the world, there was supposed to be her long-awaited concert, where all the stands were filled with zombies. Since Lisa can to some extent control zombies, Inga instructs her to go to the concert of her favorite idol to deal with this. She wouldn't mind if it weren't for her students and the academy to protect. Wow, the stadium for one concert was gigantic. I think Betty will be able to surprise us. On the posters, she was very beautiful. It's not for nothing that everyone loves her so much and waits for the moment to hear that voice. The girl did not break for a long time and still went with Sam on a mission where he warned her that he would protect her from any danger. But for this couple, everything will not be so simple. They are immediately met by a crowd of zombie girls who can smell a man from miles away. As soon as he spoke, the creatures appeared. What bad luck, he said, so be it. He will deal with them. But his partner knows how to surprise much more. She moved her hand towards the girls and shouted at them to stop. They obeyed her unquestioningly, and the zombies stopped, although there was no need for this. She was able to surprise him since he did not expect this from her so that she could use zombie control. Lisa confirmed his words, saying that this is true, but the strength weakens the further they are from the academy. She can't even imagine what will happen if there are too many zombies. He wasn't so sure about the latter, since a lot of time had passed since the epidemic, and then he dragged him to the stadium. They might have been lucky if the stadium had not been filled to the brim with fans, but the culprit of the whole event, her sweet voice is truly enchanting, it's not for nothing that she has so many fans. She is sure that together with her they are ready to tear their voices until dawn. And so it turned out people were delighted. The girls admired her beauty, her voice, charisma and confidence. The audience screamed louder than our Betty. Their screams could be heard far beyond the stadium. This mission will turn out to be much more difficult, since the situation with Betty is similar to Lisa, who have inspired their own way of life. And her fans are almost living people. She didn't know how to act since attacking them head-on would not lead to anything good. He decided to act immediately without hiding his intentions, in order to clarify to her about the real reality, taking off his rose-colored glasses. Meanwhile, in the dressing room, the magnificent Betty was choosing an outfit for herself, and it would be better to quickly, since the fans would not wait. Only now, another person had been waiting for her for a long time, and it was not a fan, it was our hero, who did what he said and did, sneaking into her dressing room. She was very surprised that some guy got into a sacred place and how he did it. 
He replied that he was not a fan of hers and had not come here to look at the charms at all. He wanted to explain the reality from which she was running away. He poked his finger in her forehead, saying that she and her fans, they are all zombies. Wake up, you fool. Just from her impudent grin, it was somehow alarming, as if this whole situation was to her benefit, as if it had saved her life. Incredibly, she initially understood everything. She understood that her fans, she herself, were bloodthirsty creatures, but she continued to sing her masterpieces to them. He didn't understand, just like us, why she was still here, aware of all this. And for her, it was a real triumph. Fans began to love her much more, more attention, more merit, and no one blocked her. The other participants blocked her. They took away almost all her glory, which made her envy them. And where are they now? They are not there, Betty said with pleasure. Now she is a solo artist. The fans belong only to her. There is no one else to interfere with on stage. She is, of course, smarter than these mindless zombies, and he'd better get out of here. Although if he is her fan, Sam interrupted her. He did not wait for the arrogant singer to finish and said that these are not her fans. They occupy the entire stadium because she contains mother cells. These words have never touched her. She does not accept criticism since she believes only in flattery, and all her enemies simply want to take away her popularity. The arrogant beauty decided to finally shut up the insolent man and pressed a strange button on an equally strange remote control. Suddenly the ground disappeared under his feet. This hole was incredibly deep. What could be there? What a dead fool, oh, you'll dance with me, the hero said as he flew into the abyss. Finally, land, but what kind of place is this? How to get out of here? What should he do? Suddenly, strange lights began to appear from the darkness. It was definitely some kind of enemy, Sam realized. Are these two girls Betty's old partners who ended up here just like the guy? They could smell the man a kilometer away, and animal instinct ordered them to pounce on him. At this rate, everything will only go towards one thing. He won't be able to endure this pressure for long. Brother Charisma can no longer endure some kind of power, some kind of light shone before their eyes which blinded them. He stood firmly on his feet and said that they asked for it themselves. Everything that happens next will be on their conscience. The hero became covered with a pinkish aura and warned them not to be offended by him later. He worked perfectly with his Buddha staff, just a couple of moments, and the lavender skin color disappeared from the girls, and they began to feel a strange warmth. Both did not understand anything, how they returned to their previous state. What happened to them before? A veil of secrecy. Sam had more questions. Who wanted to know where they were and how to get out of here? As well as why they dressed so alike, like Betty. Betty threw them here, like Sam, said the one on the left. Her name was Quinn. And the blonde on the right was called Luna. She and Betty performed together. Luna looked to the side with confusion and wondered why their friend could control the zombies, but locked them here. The boy also did not fully understand the motives of their old friend, why she treated them this way. Quinn initially understood that Betty was the least popular among them, but now she was overcome by envy. Luna asked her not to say that. But nevertheless, the hero himself saw the truth in this, which means they are destined to bring her to her senses. There is no attitude in them, since they did not consider themselves opponents of Betty, since they only knew how to sing and dance. Nope, said the hero. Without them, his plan will not work. They must be present in it. They agreed with him at that very moment, but they did not know at all how to get out of here. The guy took the phone and said that he would decide this right away. Then he called Lisa and told them their coordinates. Suddenly, after a couple of moments, someone breaks through the wall behind them with a roar. Sam doesn't care about this at all. Apparently, we know who this guest is. And it was our lovely professor in heels, Lisa, who tore down the wall with her bare hands and thereby found them. The girls were amazed by this, amazed by their strength and also by their unsurpassed beauty, which made them shiver. The teacher was not happy with these women. It was not for nothing that she looked at them with such a terrible look. At that very moment, she looked at him and asked why he always manages to find beauties. He replied that it was supposedly written on his soul. But this is not so important. He had a plan to defeat Betty, but they will have to work together. The next day, the stands were also filled with the dead, who nodded their heads and jumped up at every change of rhythm. She pointed at them and thanked them for the support from fans, saying, I love you so much. But suddenly, her pressure changed when she heard a familiar voice behind her. Who was it? With a surprise appearance from the group's old members, fans have been waiting for this duo for a long time. She was shocked. Her competitors came out of the trap, how they did it, who helped. But no one was going to answer her questions. They decided to introduce the new members of the group. The first to be shown was Lisa, with the interesting pseudonym Lisa Liza. She was truly ashamed to go out in such an outfit. The new members of the group created a sensation. The audience began to scream with enthusiasm. Among everyone, 
The only one who was not happy was Betty, who did not understand why they were occupying her stage. Then a girl we knew very well asked Betty if she would accept the challenge from the new group. But our arrogant heroine will not hide her potential, saying that they are no match for her after all, she has already been on stage for two years. But behind the mask of pride there was hidden the concern of this grey-haired beauty. It was she who stood out most of all with her magnificent face, and besides, she was able to please Betty. And she has the kind of figure that many people dream of, but here it's as if God himself rewarded her. And don't lose your spirit, said the arrogant singer, slapping herself in the face. She also added that she has all the fans today, so victory is on her side. With her sweet voice, she wanted to attract the attention of fans to herself. She asked them for support. All the stands heard her. They shouted her name back to her, such devotion. Confidence began to shine in her eyes. These countless fans were on her side. As soon as the beauty from the new group opened her mouth, her heart froze in place. This heavenly voice filled the entire stadium. Betty was shocked by this singing, as if early in the morning she woke up in a lonely house in the middle of the forest. A sultry breeze with the smell of daisies was blowing in her face, and the birds were singing the morning sonata. It was a performance. The audience did not shout to her, as they were trying to listen to her fragile voice, but at the same time it sounds even more magnificent. Betty's loyal fans began to admire the new artist's voice. Nobody knows her pseudonym, her name, only we guess that our hero decided to transform into a girl with her charming and singing skills. Her fat is worried about the excessive attention on the new singer, why her fans are shouting at her, why they call her Madonna. It's time to start a real show, where our girls will show how to captivate their audience. Their moves were perfect, they looked amazing, Betty could never top them. And all the external beauty was improved by the song of our hero, which caressed the ear. The zombies shouted the name of the new member. They never ceased to admire every word of the songs. Betty began to feel desperate. What was going on, she wondered. Her legs could no longer hold her up. It was a complete fiasco. It only took a few minutes to achieve her defeat. She didn't understand anything. They were her fans. Why they betrayed her? Why did she do all this? Suddenly, someone's hand touched her head. She had no idea what or who was doing it. And it was she who stood, the one who took everything from her. They won. And if she wants to regain her former attention, she must help them save the world. It was clear from her that that arrogant nature had disappeared. In front of Sam stood a completely murdered girl who had already agreed to everything. The rest of the participants were inspired by this, saying that the guy was very interesting. A little time passed, and our hero in the dressing room wanted to quickly return to his usual appearance. If she knew that there would be so many people, she would have conjured smaller breasts, but all this is not so important. He turns into himself. At that very inconvenient moment, Betty, who wanted to know something from her, bursts into the room. He himself understood what an unfortunate situation he was in, since the transformation stopped in the middle and she entered. She tried her best to squeeze out information about how she achieved such attention from fans. This made him very worried, but he still asked her to go out and wait while she changed clothes. Well, Betty is too impatient after all. She decided to help the young star with this. She pulled off her skirt. She had no idea what would be waiting for her a little higher. What she saw made her sigh heavily, yet the transformation first began to take effect in this place. Sam replied that this was the source of the charm and asked if she would like to try it. She became very embarrassed, her cheeks flushed with anticipation, and with a trembling voice she said that she did not dare refuse. Sam came up behind her and began to sweetly whisper if she was ready. She had been for a long time. Puzzled sweat ran down her red cheeks. She couldn't help but accept that this girl was very beautiful, even if she looked a little like a guy. But the last words he whispered in her ear should plunge her into shock. She guessed right, he is the guy. Only she herself knows what her surprise was. Screams were heard outside the dressing room, where she asked to stop, but the hero could not be stopped. The blonde did not expect that these two would find a common language so quickly, and even in such a place. Quinn added, biting and licking her lips, that the guy was very reliable, much better than all the guys she had seen. Lisa thought almost the same way. She saw in him much more reliability and strength than they could have imagined. Meanwhile, the extraction of mother cells was in full swing. It was hard for her to breathe. How could such a male be caught? He ordered her to endure after all. She is the idol of many people, and he helps her with stretching. Only they were interrupted by other beauties who thought that it would not be fair if he only helped Betty. Unlike Lisa, they could no longer endure it, as they didn't want to either. Betty didn't expect them to come in, but how dare they, she said, stammering. They answered that they had quarreled, no matter who they were. After all, they were a team, and such joys should be shared. 
The brother smiled and asked why they have an unspoken rule about this. Quinn replied that of course there is and always has been, and this also applies to you, Sam. The blonde replied that he could consider this a reward for the work he had done, but he should not tell the fans, otherwise they might be upset. Well, if this is how everything turns out, then the guy has only one thing on his mind today. Today, they will have large-scale, comprehensive physical training in which all members of the group will take part. A couple of hours later, news was circulating about that concert. Students from that same academy did not stop discussing the new participants. During this time, Betty arrived at the laboratory and introduced herself to the sisters, saying that she was joining their project. Lena added that she is not on stage, and they are not her fans. There is no need to introduce yourself so arrogantly in front of them. Then Inga inserted a few words of her own, asking if she wanted to gain her fan base through them. Betty was puzzled by the words that the cruel sisters said. She did not understand why they treated her this way. Then Sam added his two cents, who said that he finally noticed that they were related in that they were very cruel and did not spare people. Inga immediately turned to her beloved Sam, making excuses that everything was completely wrong, and Lena said that she had never seen the eldest shy. There was no time for the hero to argue. He realized that information about the third patient was about to be revealed, which means the time to move forward had come. Only Inga said that they had nowhere to go. The third patient, Zero, was her. Sam didn't understand why she didn't tell them about this, why everything was like this. In fact, she wanted to live longer. She just couldn't come to terms with it. Friend Sam was very scared for the eldest. What did her words mean? She replied that the virus in Betty and Lisa stopped its development at an early stage, but in her, it reached the brain. Lena almost dropped her cigarette, which means that if they remove the cells from Betty or Lisa's body, everything will go well but only Inga's mother cells are in the brain. That's the difficulty, and that's how she will die. The eldest noted that her sister is absolutely right. She will be the great doctor who will save the world. No matter how much they infuriated each other, Lena could not come to terms with her sister's words, since she was talking complete nonsense. Lena was not going to wait for her sister's approval. Somehow she would come up with a solution to this problem. Sam argued that Inga definitely did not expect approval from the younger one. After all, she is a sister. She understood everything. She owed Lena too much, and this would be the only way she could repay her. No one should worry. She would definitely come tomorrow. The next day, the girls waited for the operation to begin for them, asking if Inga was ready for this, if they could wait a little longer. She said that they waited too much. The virus would not spare anyone and would someday reach the brains of Betty and Lisa. Sam finally asked the eldest if she had one last wish he would try to fulfill it. Inga would like him to be her servant. He did not expect anything else, since she has a lot of humor. Suddenly, Lena bursts into the operating room, knocking down the door and saying that she has come up with a vaccine. Inga couldn't believe her words. How could she have wasted a lot of time and only came up with the reverse process? Lena began to explain that this unfortunate virus controls the libido of the carrier. If he experiences sexual stimulation for a long time, a hormone will be released from which a vaccine can be made. Now Lena has finally defeated this fool. Sam was worried if it would definitely work. The younger one replied that they had to try it. Well, if so, what does sexual stimulation mean over time? Sam asked. Suddenly, the girls started looking at him with looks like they would eat him alive. He wanted to escape from them, since he couldn't cope with three times, at least one at a time. But Lena stood in front of his face, and with one hand, she stopped the coward until he ran away. She then asked if he wanted to shirk responsibility at such a difficult moment. The girls tied up the fool, saying that Inga would be the first, since she was already in a difficult situation, and they would hold him for now. Finally, she told him not to be offended, since they were doing this to save the world. Inga was in ecstasy, she said with heavy breathing how humanity would not forget him. Betty felt this incredible responsibility better than anyone, tumbling with pleasure. A full four hours passed. Betty finally finished and said that it was Lisa's turn. It was painful for the professor to look at this. She believed that the fool needed to rest otherwise. Otherwise, he already looks like a corpse that was gnawed by vultures on a lonely, sandy field. Inga told her that he was not weak enough to give up, he was just pretending. She then asked for some serum from Lena, who told her to be careful as it might not last as it was an experimental sample. When Inga called her younger sister, she didn't feel disgusted at all after that. This was the first time. This special serum was secretly produced and should completely replenish your energy. After introducing this sample, he was able to open his eyes slightly and he began to develop some sensations. It was as if fires had been lit around him, giving him energy, as if they had awakened an ancient and dangerous beast. Well, 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 now it's Sam's turn. 
Now he will punish the rest. They are huddled in a corner out of fear. She said that such a reaction is quite common. When the effect wears off, it will return to normal. So that's how it is, says Sam. And you will help me with this. What a beast. He just recently finished with her. And here he is again. Night had already fallen. There was no way they could finish this. At this rate, they will make a lot of vaccine. Then Lena came out of the operating room, clearly tired of looking at this spectacle. Afterwards, Samantha approached her, who wanted to know how everything went, like the vaccine and everything else. Lena said that they can have a party. Everything went well. If nothing happens, the vaccine will be ready soon. Samantha wanted to know how everything was there and asked if she could come in and see for herself. But Lena decided to warn the girl, since it was better for her not to see this for her own good. Meanwhile, Inga struggled to keep her mind from leaving her and finally apologized to him. Only he wasn't offended at all, he says, standing proudly by the window and looking at the town at night. But for him, this night is still so young. Before this, he tolerated them, and now they will tolerate him. A lot of time has passed since that night. A whole month, the end of the world was supposed to end. The world began to bloom like this flower. The girls began to return to their usual state. They rejoiced with joy. Meanwhile, the news said that the terrible virus that had enslaved the whole world was beginning to disappear. But the government was recommending that citizens self-isolate for the first time, all for their own good. Sam is very glad that he completed his third mission and didn't even spend that much energy. Then Lena approached him, who remembered how he said that he was not from this world, is it true? Inga added, asking if he wanted to leave them with such a stupid excuse. Lisa was also not happy with these words. But the task here was completed. 97 more awaited him, and a portal opened behind him. Samantha was shocked. What is this? she asked. Then Betty, who thought that this was incredible technology, it would surprise her fans. Then he sadly said that they were absolutely right. He had completed the mission here, and it was time for him to go on other missions. Inga was against it. She wanted to go with him, but he asked why she wanted to go with him. She discovered the vaccine. Did she want to develop in this area? She began to feel embarrassed, but justified her desire by saying that she wanted to study medicine in other worlds. Lena noticed how the eldest was afraid to tell the truth. This frightened her even more. She then walked up behind her sister, saying that if her dumbass sister was going to go somewhere, she promised her father that she would follow her. Betty also wanted to go with them, since she could become an idol in other worlds. Samantha didn't mind either, since she had received power and would like to use it for good. And Lisa didn't mind, since everyone was coming, and she was going. Then what are they waiting for? Brother said. Pack your clothes, maybe we'll be in time for dinner. Meanwhile, he received a new card with Betty, which had an acting effect. Oh, home sweet home, the boy said when he entered the divine space. The girls were also very happy, as they thought this place was amazing. Lena couldn't believe her words. They ended up in another place. And Inga was surprised that there was very little competition here. Inga and Lena are not the first twin sisters here, for example, Maggie and Siri, who have been waiting for their beloved Sam for a long time. Older sister Meg was very happy that she won this argument. Siri was clearly not happy. The brother could not understand whether they really had some kind of competition while he was away. In fact, the sisters argued how many girls this womanizer would bring with him, so the eldest suggested that it would be more than four for sure. Siri was very angry with him. Can't he really keep his stallion to himself? What a Casanova. He justified himself by saying that he couldn't help himself. That's just his nature. Then Lena asked what kind of outfits they were wearing. Some kind of cosplay group or something. Meg decided to make fun of the hero, saying that someone has such needs. This joke was not to his liking, and he decided to explain everything to them from the very beginning, from the beginning of his journey. A lot of time passed and he finally explained everything to everyone, and now he can rest for a couple of minutes. But suddenly, out of nowhere, some girl with lovely legs appears, who decided to congratulate the hero on something. This is our fairy companion, who was very happy that she was able to complete this difficult task. But why is she so big? Apparently he was just as surprised as I was, otherwise what made him so surprised by her arrival? She too was surprised why this bastard was all over her with water so suddenly. Finally she asked him why he was so surprised, he had seen her before. Sam asked her, is she by any chance not that little system fairy companion? Why is she so big? She responded by saying that her size is affected by the level of power of her owner, and her brother had already completed three missions. Three whole tasks, he asked, and I didn't even notice how time flies. That's right, she said. Only she added whether he remembered the first meeting. So then she played the hero, choosing the first characteristic for him. But she didn't expect that he would be able to reveal the potential of charisma. He could not understand why she then tried to harm him, what the motive was, what the goals were. The fairy understood his tactics. 
He wants to use women to achieve success. Then she decided to teach him a lesson for this, but she only made it better. But at that time he thought that it was just a game in which there was nothing like that. After this experiment, she realized that her martyr treats women with all sincerity, and now she is counting on his help. He unquestioningly agreed to help her, but for some purpose he began to extend his hand to her. Suddenly he grabbed her cheeks. What was he up to, the fairy wondered. Suddenly, he put a bottle in her mouth and began to forcefully drink it. Well, listen to her, he said. She really decided to punish me. Now I'll punish you. Her whole face flushed. She could not understand what he had given her, what kind of drink it was. It was acacia wine. He wanted to give it to some beauty. But since the fairy of a thousand worlds herself came to him, he gave it to her. She began to not be able to speak since she belongs to the system. Only he will not tolerate such statements, shutting her up. He said that she belongs to him, just like the system in the game. Just as suddenly he pulled himself up to her lips, she didn't even dare to expect it. After the next marathon, he received his illegal glasses. Only he was puzzled why there were many times more of them. She replied that these glasses come from her body, and it's better for him not to do that again. Wow, this is a bug in the game, Sam asked with delight. It's a sin not to use this. We should do it more often. She is very ashamed that she treated the system this way. Will she forgive her? The night was stormy. He, yawning, asked where his beloved fairy was. They went to bed together. And here she is, but why is she so small? How is it? Where is that beauty from the night? He couldn't understand, just like us, why she had become so small. Only yesterday she was so big. The fairy replied that it was all his fault. Yesterday he spent a lot of energy, and he also had to return the money he got through a mistake. He replied that he did not take advantage of the mistake, but got all the points through backbreaking labor, and she could suck her points. Well, you asked for it, she said with a catch. This time it will be even more difficult than he thinks. He confidently replied that he had also lived here for several days, so he was ready for anything. Suddenly a portal began to appear under his ass when he was not expecting it at all. He screamed at her to give him time to prepare, but it was too late. This time he ended up in some ancient village in the outback. What did he happen to experience now? Everything in this world was somehow strange. In that very village there lived only men who looked very poor, unlike the women. Some warlike woman asked her companions whether they had collected tribute for this month. He begged the women to stop, since they had already taken everything they had in the village, then asked her to leave them some grain, since they still needed to live. According to her, women here are some kind of deities with a capital D, and they are much stronger than pathetic men. They don't even dare talk to them. It's better to give them the grain in an amicable way. Suddenly, in the middle of all the men, a jock stood up and said that they were women. He was still stronger. Wow, the girl was surprised, saying that a daredevil appeared who showed character. He pointed his fist at the insolent woman, saying that it would be a matter of life and death. Only his fist, full of aspirations, could not be stopped for long. One touch destroyed all his pressure, but he couldn't stop her spank. He couldn't even react to it. One attack was so strong that this big guy fell face first into the dirt. According to the leader, the guy's name was Quint. Then the girl with a straw in her mouth put forward her conditions. Either they simply give them the grain, or she kills several men so that there is enough food for everyone. The rest of the partners didn't care about these weaklings, saying that these non-entities would never become stronger than women, real non-entities. According to the beliefs of the men here, a heavenly man, a holy guy, should come who will save them from this routine. She already has these legends in her heart. Since the beginning of time, women have been superior to men in everything, and their stories are like laughter. After her words, our friend falls from heaven. Has the legend come true, men can rejoice. It was as if heavenly punishment had fallen on her. God was punishing her for her sinful words. Sam didn't expect to fall right on his head. It hurts a lot, he says. This little guy will always send him away and won't even let him get dressed properly. And he fell right into the bull's eye. That arrogant girl was unconscious, and he didn't want problems for himself at the very beginning. Immediately after that, he began to apologize to her for what he had done. He didn't do it on purpose. Panic spread among the girls. They noticed how he defeated the second great queen. Does a heavenly man really exist? They have big problems. They need the help of the first great queen. After all the fears, they took the girl and ran to the queen, who didn't even have time to explain. The leader could not believe his eyes. He defeated the woman, which means Sam is the legendary heavenly man who will save the men. He could not understand anything that this eccentric said, as he was not from this world. Yes, it is true, the man said. A long time ago, women were placed above men, but in their village there is a legend that their savior, a heavenly man, a messenger will come. In the previous world, there were two deities, 
Together, they kept balance in this sinful world. Once upon a time, these deities quarreled among themselves. These two were a goddess and a god. Between the battle of love and hatred, the goddess decided to divide the power of God into five parts and imprison it in her disciples. After this, the balance completely disappeared. Men, who had lost protection from their patron, began to weaken in front of women. And then it became normal. Everyone got used to it. Finally, it began to dawn on Sam why only men live in this village. What about the legend? asked a puzzled Sam, sitting on his knees in front of the head. The legend says that a man will fall from heaven to restore the old balance and defeat women. The bro put his hand to his heart and said that he didn't understand half of his words, but he wanted to help them. The power of the god is sealed in the strongest disciples of the goddess. They are all queens of different kingdoms. Only Sam can defeat and collect their power. So the hero doesn't like to beat women. But in order to save the world, he is ready to do this and where to look for them, he asked. Unfortunately for us, each kingdom is very far from each other. The nearest bandit queen, Maya, has many subordinates and they collect tribute from the villages. Because of this, they men live poorly here. Suddenly, a man burst into the room with news. Things are bad, he shouted. Queen Mia is advancing towards their village. The old man told Sam to run away. He's the last hope of the men, the last salvation. They will detain the bandits. But the hero was not going to retreat halfway, no matter how he was destined to meet her. Meanwhile, in the village, there is a fierce battle in which the men are not destined to win. And here is our beautiful Maya, unlike all the bandits. She looks beautiful, but here she is looking for the very man who raised his hand against that woman. One of the men was a tough nut to crack and said that he wouldn't say anything to this scoundrel. She noticed his courage and said that she would grant him death if he so desired, but would still take a couple of men for interrogation. Only there was no need to interrogate anyone. Sam appeared behind her, guessing that this beauty was looking for him. Fortunately, the queen noticed his cute face, saying that she would take him with her and they would do something incredible with the girls. The girls were the first to see that their queen was interested in a man, and he really was handsome, another added. He said that she could do whatever she wanted with him only if she defeated him. Maya didn't even think about retreating because she understood that he could not compete with her. The girls began to think he was an idiot, so he decided to challenge the bandit queen, even though he was handsome, but such a dumbass, he said. She's always good at scratching her tongue. Sam began to be insolent, then added, Is she really afraid to accept his challenge? Yes, this will never happen. She was never afraid of a man, and she will knock him down with her left hand. Well, let him show what he is capable of. He started with his signature move and sword fencing. He would not leave her a chance to win. After the announcement of the attack, he disappeared before her eyes. Such speed he can surprise. Just a couple of moments, and he was behind her. She didn't even notice how he got there. The girls were shocked. They did not expect that any of the men were capable of fighting. This is the speed, they said. With his attack, he could only break the drawstring on the neckline. She was surprised. He could amuse her, she said. He said that she need not hold back since he had invested his spiritual energy into... The sword, she asked, the one that only split when it collided with her. He couldn't believe his eyes, how his sword became like this, why it was so fragile. She replied that a man can never defeat a woman. This is the law of heaven even if your sword was faster than lightning. Now it's the bandit queen's turn. She accumulates terrifying energy in her hand which disperses the air. Here she is definitely faster than lightning, faster than everyone here. One moment and the enemy is no more. He took only one of her blows but could not stay on his feet. Her power was too great. See the difference between us, Maya said. This is the power of the gods. From now on you belong to me, handsome. But the brother did not want to give up. He got up from his knees and told her to give him three days. And if then he could not stand it, then he could do with him whatever she wanted. She asked him why she would make concessions to him. Her decision was the law, and there was no other way. Suddenly an old man intervened in the battle and decided to put forward his bid. They will support Sam if he does not win even then. They give the queen an eternal oath that they will become slaves of his majesty. The others also wanted to take the risk. Since it is better this way than to endure all their lives, they believe in a heavenly man. She is not happy with this at all, but decided to remain silent. Obviously, she likes this proposal. Maya agreed. They have three days, in three days. If he does not appear at her estate, she will personally slaughter the entire village. After they all left, Sam approached the elder and said that he underestimated her, or rather did not know that there was such a gap between the genders, more like the rule of the gods. No matter how strong he became, he would not win. Well, how is he going to defeat her in three days? the leader decided to ask. 
Sam said that he was just bluffing, and these three days he will be at home inventing a way to victory. The guys immediately began to panic, which means they are all screwed. They won't be able to escape. Only Sam was positive, because of all the problems, there was never one that did not have a solution, and asked if the queen had any characteristics. The old man realized that he meant weaknesses. This particular one had very strong pride. One day they escaped to the village. She stumbled and she felt very ashamed. She immediately left. Then they miraculously escaped death. Such a beauty also has such a cute weakness. It can definitely be used against her. Finally, confidence in victory appeared in his head. He said that he had come up with everything, but he needed the help of the village. A couple of days had already passed. The entire estate was probably waiting for the arrival of their warrior, who would definitely lose to her. While May just decided to take a hot bath, she looks even more lovely this way. Only now she still imagines this impudent man who repeats over and over again that he belongs to her. She cannot believe it, since then the image of that man has not left her head. At that same moment, the second bandit queen burst in and told her about the strange news from the village that the scouts had reported to her. Maya threw a towel over herself and asked if they had not escaped from the village yet. The bandit added that they would never hide from them, but the strange screams frightened her. She noticed that the man fell on the bandit unexpectedly, and she lost consciousness. Besides, there are four other great queens with her. She need not be afraid. But only that same towel let her down and flew off the queen's lovely skin at an inconvenient moment. She immediately blushed and began to cover her charms, ordering her to turn away. So we were transported to a village where our hero trained with the villagers. All these screams were coming from men who were very happy that he was finally done with them. But why were they all naked? It was strange. And in his hand lay a strange sword with a blood-colored blade. He thanked everyone for helping him. The time had come for the great battle. The May Queen slept soundly while someone struck the gong so early. She was furious. Who dared to disturb her sensitive sleep? She shouted and knocked down the door of the estate. Wake up and sing, my darling, I have come to win, he shouted after her and hit the gong. The rest of the girls could not believe that this handsome man had come. They had never met such men even in their dreams, she asked, and for this he woke her up. He was completely tired of living. Sam swung his mysterious blade, saying that he was almost hurt by her words. She continued to be insolent and decided to ask if this was his new weapon. Your blade was a little short. The hero answered her by saying that the main thing is definitely not length, but strength. Speed and technique will help in any battle. The girls began to cover their faces so as not to show their emotions. If anything, they were very embarrassed. And she constantly repeated that he must understand that a man is always weaker than a woman and cannot hurt her. Just now you will see my new power and rush towards it. He inflicted a lightning attack on her. There shouldn't be anything left on her. Then she said that she was completely right. She didn't even feel the blow. There's only one thing. He didn't intend to hurt her. What did he do? How was he going to defeat her? He snapped his fingers, and her whole blouse tore into shreds. What a force! Maya covered her chest with her hands and asked what this scoundrel and insolent person was up to. He replied that he was able to improve and practice a new fencing technique, and also got hold of a clothing blade that did not cause damage to living people, but was excellent at destroying clothing. This sword was used by a great monk who never wounded his enemies but always won. But this is not so important. The important thing is that these men believe in him, the old man believes in him because only he has hope. Only he can save them. Moreover, he is the only one who has clothes. Only thanks to their clothes he was able to practice the blade and technique. She realized he was going to undress her, but she didn't realize the difference it would make. He replied that she was not the least bit ashamed to appear in this form before her subordinates, where her honor was. The beauty said that she would show him where the crayfish spend the winter, directing her attack at him. Attack after attack, he again left her but again was able to cut her clothes. The girls couldn't believe that she was wearing such underwear. She also had such well-groomed skin, although she said that she had never looked after her. Was she really that weak? Maya ordered them to turn away from her so that no one would look at her like that. But Sam added that the next blow would expose her completely. She was very angry. Obviously, he had driven her to the point where she wanted to finish him off without mercy. The queen concentrated her energy by pressing the palms of her hands. This force accelerated the air much stronger than before. The bandits can't believe she's using this technique. Could the handsome guy really bring her to this point? A dragon's fist was rushing towards him. He was in great danger. How was he going to escape this attack? After the impact, a massive explosion was formed that would have destroyed the entire village of men. What a hot fire, Sam said, but such an attack cannot penetrate it. It was hard for her to accept this. Could the man really withstand her strongest blow? 
Yes, he agreed, the attack is strong, but not as effective in comparison with his. And after these words, he completely tore all her clothes. They understood that she had not lost yet, but it felt like she was about to give up. What a shame. She was very ashamed. She blushed all over and barely wanted to say something. That's it. She lost. She decided that she refused to continue this obscurantism. Her brother tried to stop her, telling her to respect the terms of their battle. But the trouble is, he didn't have time. The door stopped him, and she ran away from the pervert. With a broken nose, Sam laughed deep down at the behavior of May, who began to cry due to defeat. Suddenly, behind him, the evil voice of a crowd of girls was heard, who were determined to destroy him. And so it turned out that there were angry girls standing behind him, and he was already hoping that they would not kill him for what he had done. But something went wrong. They fell to their knees, creating a strong roar in the area. From that moment on, these girls are now crying in front of him, and all because they wanted the hero to appease the queen, and then they will be able to fulfill any of his wishes. He laughed sweetly and said that he would somehow solve this problem, and at the same time he realized that no matter how strong a woman is, she remains a woman. Before entering, he warned her by knocking on the door like a true gentleman. All he wanted to do was talk, but the girl didn't want to see him and chased him away, hiding from everyone under the covers. But his pressure could not be stopped. He came closer, saying that after all, she was an adult girl. They could talk calmly. He did not react to her screams and continued to pull off the blanket. From the outside, you can't even tell that she's so vulnerable, but in fact, she still can't hold back her tears. But this didn't bother the hero. He looked and was amazed why she still hadn't gotten dressed, and in his head, he thought about what a good figure she had. After she felt his vile gaze, Maya immediately decided to throw a kick full of passion. She was all red, covering herself with a pillow. She said how pleased Sam must be for disgracing her. The impudent man continued his flirting, saying that it was simply impossible for such a beautiful girl to disgrace herself. She couldn't believe his words and tried to say that he was trying to appease her. But everything was completely wrong and Sam wanted to prove it and you already know it yourself. Immediately after his words, there was a kiss as passionate and daring as her blow and she was very surprised by this. Well, you asked for it, she said, throwing him down, and she rose above him. Maya realized that he had won after all, which meant that any desire behind her, what he wanted, interested her. His desire was to save all the men in this world, which means that four seals must be opened. But how? His appearance made her believe in this absurd legend about a heavenly man, but she could not help in his request. He continued to put pressure on her, saying that she allegedly did not want to accept the conditions of defeat. In fact, all the seals are inside their bodies, and in order to remove them, you need to perform a very interesting ritual. Apparently, he still couldn't understand what ritual she was telling him about. The beauty, shy and looking away, says that this ritual requires male strength to shed her blood. He still can't understand what she's talking about, how a man can hurt a woman if heaven forbids it. The queen began to explain that he did not need to hurt, but to shed blood, to have a child. But still, he did not understand anything. She shut him up saying that she would do this not for her own interests, but only for the sake of the fulfilled condition. Suddenly he began to take the initiative, but such a powerful woman will not allow a sycophant to be above her. The rest of the girls began to look into their secret place, who did not understand where the men got their tales from. Half an hour had already passed, and according to the girls, Maya couldn't figure out what to do here. Sam was already getting desperate. He began to ask questions whether she understood what she was doing at all. She screamed and was very embarrassed. This was the first time she had seen such tales, but now everything should happen. Not even a second had passed after her words, when a column of light of incredible strength and power hit the heavens. The girls were delighted. They did not understand who was creating this strange light. This pillar of light was visible on all the outskirts of the world. Something incredible happened. The old leader was clearly happy. In his lifetime he met such a person. This will go down in history. The men also began to hug themselves and rejoice. They succeeded. The heavenly man is their hero. However, there were those who were not happy about this. The owner of this terrifying halberd, for example. This will be our next target, who is very unhappy that this fool Maya allowed the seal to be released. Time passed, and night had already fallen in the kingdom of the bandits. Only the light was still burning in our beauty's estate. Meanwhile, a crowd of envious bandits stood at the door in the morning and stared at it, waiting for something new. And while they watch, their head enjoys all this newness with every thrust. Sam wanted to stop, because it's definitely not easy to do this for the first time. He understands that himself. During all the time in this world, he realized that a strong woman gives him much more strength, and now he needs to improve the experience of endless magic. 
He sat in the lotus position and burst into flames. A crown of flames appeared above. This was his new power. Suddenly, he found himself in an endless desert, where in the middle of it stood a stone altar with a girl bound in chains. This girl was terribly shackled in these chains. From her torn clothes, one could understand that she had been here for a long time. Suddenly, these chains break like a rope that has been holding a bridge for hundreds of years. This girl rushed down, her body like a feather falling silently onto the sandy floor. Fortunately, the hero managed to catch her, asking if she was okay, if everything was fine with her. She lifted her eyelids slightly, revealing ruby-red eyes underneath them. As it turned out, she recognized Sam, because she was sure that he would come here to her. He did not understand her words, since he had never met her and they had never seen each other. In fact, he is very similar to her old friend. Was it fate that brought this meeting to them, she asked. Then she looked at the wrong pillar, which she called the place of the seal. She was surprised since one of the seals was destroyed, and he was here. Could it really be the same one? He was surprised by the amount of knowledge this grey-haired girl had. How did she know so much about this? When that same god and his power were sealed, the goddess began to greatly regret what she had done, and left only a piece of her soul in anticipation of that very man who would help her. It immediately became clear to him that this beauty was that same goddess, but everything was not so simple. She was a piece of her soul, and her name was Lindsay. The shackles on her snow-white legs scattered, just like the chains a little earlier. Brother Sam wondered what the shackles on her arms and legs meant. According to the girl, these shackles represent seals. He removed one, will remove three more, and it will release the power of God and restore the balance of power. Still, he hasn't quite figured it out yet. He was originally going to remove all the seals, but one thing confuses him. She wondered what was bothering her hero so much, why he was so embarrassed. In fact, he is uncomfortable when there is a half-naked girl in front of him, and he asked her to get dressed. She was also not clever, but in fact they did not need clothes, since they were alone here and she could not help him with them. He wondered how she was going to help him, even in such rags. She touched his chest with her finger, saying that he was training techniques that fed the power of both gods. Only there is no balance in this world, and only she can help him with this. The hero believed her words with lightning speed, since it sounded like the truth. But how could she help him? Lindsay said that she knows the secret technique of double cultivation, so if they use it, Brother will be able to absorb the power of the goddess. He began to imagine how she would help him, but whether she herself was ready for this technique. It seemed to her that it was he who underestimated her, since he was located in the place of the press, and Lindsay was able to do things here that she had never dreamed of in reality. Nevertheless, she understands that she is unlikely to cope alone. So here is a new moon phase technique that will create a couple of copies of the goddess. His confidence knows no bounds, since even these three will be no match for him in his favorite activity. Only this was definitely not the end, as she informed him that a real test awaited him behind. Incredibly, behind him stood in a row dozens, if not hundreds of beauties who were already waiting for their turn. As soon as he turned around, the blood rushed to his head. It was a real nightmare how he could cope with so much. In his dream, he had already tried the 24th beauty. Someday, he would wake up. Well, the moment has come. The level of infinite magic has been raised to the sixth level, which Sam previously so wanted to achieve but could not do it. But something was wrong here. After the double cultivation technique, rays of light poured into the estate. The girls thought that a man could have done this. Suddenly, a man's hand came out of the door, followed by a brutal voice. Sam was surprised that so many girls came to him. He shone with an immense light, but he wanted to try new powers and abilities on these bandits. By adding that every girl who wants to feel like a woman can go, he attracted even more attention. The bandits could not understand what this madman was talking about. They had never heard such a thing. An unpleasant feature of this world is that the opposite sex does not contact each other at all and they do not even have basic knowledge, Sam thinks about this. But he decided to act differently. All the girls here would feel the same as their leader. The second queen decided to go first because she didn't know what the bastard was up to. Among the entire crowd, there were those dissatisfied with the decision of the right-hand man of the head. They also wanted to be first. The right hand is the right hand to be the first. And if you don't like something, you can solve everything in one way, says Clara. The girl answered her by saying that she is not afraid of her. Sam with the tail said that there was no need to quarrel. There was enough for everyone, and they could come in threes at a time. Then Clara turned to him and asked a question. He completely lost his fear, then added that they would only listen to their boss, and he was just a pathetic man. Before she had time to finish, all the girls stood in three columns and waited in line. Clara was shocked, 
but the girls believed that Sam had defeated the Queen, which meant he was more important. She didn't even dare to think that everyone would take the man's side so quickly. She still wondered how he would cope with three girls at once. Now I'll show you everything, he said, and then he invited her to the estate. Two were already knocked out, one was barely breathing, and the second was already in her seventh sleep. The last and strongest remained. Multiple beads of sweat were running down his face, but he wanted to show Clara more. Our heroine had not yet fully understood what it was like to be a woman, which meant she was not enough. Finally, after a while, they came out with weak legs. The girls had never experienced anything like this. They began to love their lives that night. The bandits were shocked by the condition of the girls. Their interest became more brutal, and their desire was indescribable in words. In addition, the hero looked out of the window, wanting more, expecting a new batch of beauties. The whole village wanted him. He didn't even dare to expect that there would be such a stir for him alone. He realized how long his night would be today, whether it would end at all. Still, morning had already come for some. Armaya did not notice how quickly the night ended. Yesterday was too shocking, which made her fall asleep as soon as it was over. As soon as she left the estate, she saw a horror that could not be imagined even in dreams. In front of her lay her charges, who were half naked, but no one was injured. Suddenly the person responsible for yesterday's event appeared and decided not to wake up the head since she was sleeping very soundly. It wasn't as important to her as what he did to her innocent girls. For him, it was a duty, since they asked him very willingly, and he could not refuse the lovely ladies. Why is it that our head is so unhappy to hear this? Did our proud queen really want Sam to be hers alone? Maya asked not to talk nonsense from a sick head to a healthy one. It's better to let him say what he will do next. He replied that he was going to destroy the rest of the seals, restoring balance in the world. After the answer, she decided to go on a trip with him, but Sam did not understand why she would do this. Her whole face turned red, but she replied that she could not be here, since he had defeated her, and she wanted to see what she would do with the rest of the queens. But how is it possible? Clara asked. Will Mrs. May really leave? And what should they do without her? But it's true that those girls didn't want to be robbers anymore, but they don't know anything else either. Well, Sam always has a solution to any problem. In his case, the bandits will never have to think about food and housing again. As a result, they ended up in the very place that will come to life again with new colors with these bandits. Seeing so many new guests, Siri was not surprised how this freak could find so many girls. The girls were very happy to see this place. It was very beautiful here, in their opinion and the man did not lie to them, as it turned out. Maggie met them, saying that here they would no longer need to think about food and clothing. This was a real paradise. Clara and the others couldn't believe it. Would it really be that simple? They were sure there was some kind of catch. In fact, he is. Here she will train them to please their master. The younger sister blushed in surprise. It's true, she asked the eldest, who confirmed her words. And when Sam returns, they will definitely be able to surprise him with a dose of pleasure, Meg said. Meanwhile, the main actions will take place in a very grey state. The absolutely colourless walls only worsened the picture of grey masses in the sky. Just at the same moment, a lot of people were heading into the city, drizzled with annoying rain. Sam decided to ask his partner if their goal, the second owner of the power of God and the seal, was in this city. Maya confirmed his words and then added that she rules this city and her name is Cindy. Adjusting his hat, he asked if Maya could introduce her to him, since they were colleagues after all. Everything with Cindy is not so simple. She is very irritable and vain, and they had not communicated in any way before. Moreover, she previously dared to despise one great swordsman, so her image is incredibly dangerous. He began to be insolent to her. Allegedly, Maya was also irritable and vain, only a little more tender. But in their line, it was not so calm. The guards decided not to let the old man through. He didn't have enough money to get in. She replied that with his whining, the price wouldn't go down. Sam ran up to the old man and decided to help him, as old people should be helped. He quickly expressed his dissatisfaction, since the old man must be respected, and he can get in for free after all he is not a merchant. In response, she pointed to the sign above, where it is written that entry is free for girls. But entry for men costs 12 coins, this is already a tradition. But she can give our hero a discount if he pleases her. At her proposal, he grinned impudently, as if he was preparing a very interesting surprise for her. Lightning flashed through his eyes as he used his face charm technique to make her fall under his power. It was as if something had hit her in the head. The blood rushed in. The pressure in her increased. The technology did not fail. She was under his control. Immediately after this, she became kinder and waited for orders from the master, who ordered her to apologize to the old man. She approached, 
bowed and asked forgiveness for her behavior. The brother did not like such apologies. He wanted more sincerity, asking him to remove the armor in front of his grandfather. Completely naked, she leaned towards him and apologized to the old man with great sincerity. According to the man, he lived for 70 years, and in all that time, he never saw a girl apologize to him. It was not in vain that he lived this life. Maya asked him to stop the performance and continue moving, but he believes that he did everything right. Finally, the line began to move again. Little by little, the heroes began to approach the entrance. But suddenly, that old man stopped Sam to thank him for his help. He replied that he could take care of himself, and then he could think about us. But his pressure cannot be stopped. These books contain all his knowledge and experience. He used to be a shepherd, and then became a sage who collected four books about stretching, about 18 movements of Bruce Lee, Mike Tyson Publishing House, about the roots of an old tree and Kung Fu Lotus. It was only thanks to this knowledge that he lived to these years. What a mystery the old man is. Well, if the old man is so kind, then the hero respected his kindness. But the grandfather added that a good person needs good knowledge, the man said, wishing him good luck. Maya was surprised at what this old man, a shepherd, called himself. She had never heard such a thing. He also laughed and did not believe the wanderer's words, but it was vitally important for him to find a hot bath and a soft bed. She feared that it would not be easy for them to even find a roof over their heads. Her words were confirmed by signs on every hotel in which animals and men were not allowed to enter. The hotel owner came out and explained to them that men were not allowed to enter since the rooms were not rented after them. Although this boy had some privileges, he could stay in her room, the innkeeper said. May grabbed his hand, saying that they would do without such proposals, and dragged Sam. But she added that not a single inn would let them inside, but her doors were always open for them. Time passed, and our hero was able to find himself a wonderful hot bath, where the local beauties did not expect to see such a handsome, handsome man. Sam thought that it would not disturb them, since these are joint baths, everything is common. One beauty with mint-colored hair was bathing in the bath alone, and she was very interested in his appearance. She nicknamed herself Sarah, and she did not at all expect to meet a daredevil who dared to enter here. Then Sarah asked what the impudent guy's name was. He became dumb and didn't answer. But still he decided to be insolent to her, telling her to guess his name herself. What a bastard. Sarah noticed that he had no manners. He was too unmannered. To this he replied that he had every right to enter here, and he had the same right not to tell his name. Raising the rapidly evaporating water in her hands, she said that he had better find another pool. Since she is training fire techniques here, the temperature is constantly rising, and men are fragile people. It was then that he offered her a bet to see who could stay in the water longer, and he won. Argument. Who are you to argue with me? What can you offer me? Sarah asked him. He straightened his shoulders proudly and put his hand to his chest, saying that he would become her slave if he lost to her. At that very moment, she called the girl to increase the temperature of the water to show what the gap was between a man and a woman. The girls behind him giggled and warned him that they wouldn't hold him accountable if he lost consciousness. Apparently, he decided to fight with her persistently and asked to turn up the heat. But deep down, he notices that he can only outwit a woman in this world. Ten minutes passed, and the entire bathhouse was filled with fog and steam from this pool. The water is already too hot, and the hero can barely hold on. Are all women really so strong in this world? The rest of the girls feel this heat from here, but have difficulty admitting that the man is capable of anything. Even Sarah herself admitted that he is not a weak man, but Sam is no match for her. He continued to be insolent to her. Supposedly, he understands why men don't come here. They like hot water. Sarah thinks he really hopes to win, but says she won't be called Sarah if she loses to a man. Twenty minutes later, the terrifying heat only intensified significantly. The girls could barely stand on their feet under the influence of the steam. Sarah began to consider these girls worthless and a disgrace because she had spent so much time on this city and the people here. Following her words, the strongest girls fell, losing consciousness under the influence of the fumes. She began to reason that few people can control these temperatures, and this handsome guy still hasn't escaped. And suddenly, among the cloud of thick steam, she saw Sam, who was glowing in the water, as if all the heat came from him. He noticed that her technique was strong, but definitely weaker than his snow dying under six suns kung fu, which Miss Lindsay taught him. This cannot happen, she shouted. She is the second most powerful in this city after the ruler, so there is no way she can lose. The girls tried to stop her, since she'd never raised the temperature above this level before. She ordered them to shut up and asked them to turn up the heat, more fire, more power. But her body could not withstand it. Her pressure was bright, but her strength did not allow her to win. 
Luckily, Sam managed to catch her before she drowned in the hellishly hot water. He believes that the whole world will suffer if such a beauty is boiled in water, and it's scary to imagine how men will suffer. The girls began to call him a bastard with caution, because they did not understand what he had done to her. But he was infuriated by their useless chatter. He was going to save her and wanted to know where they had any cold spot. They were fascinated by his impudence. He got points for it, and they even liked how rude he was to them. The assistant took him to the basement where the ice was stored and asked him to do his best to save her life. Then he added that they should not worry. This is the first thing. And secondly, they should wait here if he does not save her in an hour. Then there is no way to save Sarah. In this room, there was a terrible frost, hot baths and a storage room with ice. These are opposites. She could finally see, but she felt strange with this man. Why was she listening to him? And he noticed strange bottles and asked what they were filled with. What kind of white liquid was in them? She replied that she likes to drink cold milk, which is precisely the reason why she cools it here. Sam asked what the problem was with drinking cold milk, and the reason was that she was close to ruler Cindy, and it would be awkward if someone found out about such a sweet habit from such a stern girl. He added that now is the time to use cold milk to remove the fire from her body. Then he began to drink her milk greedily, just a little and the bottle would be empty. It became unclear to her how and why he drinks my milk. This is my milk, she wanted to say. Only now he decided to pour milk into the beauty by force, especially since he clearly used some kind of technique for healing. This only made her feel hotter. Sarah could not understand the origin of this strange feeling. She started screaming at him. Who is he? How dare he do this to her? Still, her voice was so trembling. Only it trembled not because of cold and fear, but because of anticipation. Only he didn't want to do anything bad with her. And together with milk, he used a technique that would expel all evil and fire from the body. In his head, he thought about how good the double cultivation technique was, after which both Sarah and himself became much stronger. This miraculous power flowed into him, a terrifyingly powerful ability from Mistress Lindsay. After cultivating, it was as if he had been set on fire. The fire engulfed him as he was able to improve the fire attribute. He then received Sarah's card, which increased the fire attribute power by 30%, and outside the door, the girls were very worried about their sister as they were tormented by the feeling of not understanding what if something would happen to their sister. Suddenly the doors opened, steam began to flow through a large gap. He was surprised that everyone was here and thought that he had probably kept them waiting for a long time. The brother walked in front and they began to bombard him with questions about what happened to their older sister, what he did to her. She told them not to touch him since it was he who saved her from death. Later she tiredly sat down on the nearest chair, saying that he won the bet and could wish for anything. The younger ones couldn't believe that she lost, but it's true that you don't often see her lose. She started screaming at them to stop repeating these words and threatened to lock them in the basement with ice so that they would finally wake up. From now on, Sam is a respected person in this city and can declare this. Moreover, he has the right to make any wish. He wanted to know more about how to challenge the local ruler of the city, Cindy, known for her irritability and vanity, as well as her strength. The girls began to condemn him for this, since not a single man challenged their Lord Cindy. But Sarah believed his pressure, saying if he wins all the girls in the tournament, then he has a chance to challenge Lord Cindy. Only in 14 years, no one has yet been able to overcome a girl of this level. Even Sarah herself was defeated in the tournament against Cindy, which is precisely the reason why she is the second strongest girl in the city. If so, he decided to ask when the last tournament with Cindy was and when the next one will come. The fact of the matter is that Sam arrived on time since the tournament would be in three days. The girls began to whisper that she had failed in that tournament, and it was her shame. She did not want to hear them and ordered them to close their mouths since everything was not as they said. But he was not in the mood for jokes, as he wanted to find out how strong Cindy was, since only Sarah should know her word well. Then she began to take off her shirt and say that she was given such a name for a reason. She ended every fight with one blow, with one swing of the halberd, all these scars were made by Cindy, made by her terrible halberd. For Sarah, these three scars were a reminder of the shame she suffered three years ago at the tournament. Sam doesn't consider these scars a shame. In some cases, he even likes them. After these words, he came up and touched them. She wasn't so pleased when he started touching her scars. She needed him to say something nice. Then he thanked the beauty for the information received. She replied that she was simply fulfilling the condition and finally asked if he had anything else for her. In fact, he had one request that he was afraid his older sister wouldn't agree to. Honesty is the most important thing, Sarah said, adding that he should tell him when he goes to the game that he will never be stingy. 
By that time, three days had already passed. The day of the battle had arrived. A crowd of girls stood and waited for their leader to come. Here she is, the magnificent Lord Cindy, never defeated. What will happen today? Our beauty appeared at her full height and stated that today they are having the 15th annual battle for the Lord and now it is time to choose the strongest among you. Only in the depths of her soul she mocked them because she understood that they all hoped but would never win the final battle. But her words were interrupted by a mysterious participant in a cape who dared to challenge the legendary warrior. This wanderer turned out to be our Sam who decided to interrupt the prestige of Cindy's victories. The crowd immediately came to life as they could not believe that there was a man in front of him at the tournament, and he also challenged the Lord. They had never met such handsome men in their dreams. At this statement, Cindy muttered angrily as if she wanted to jump on him, and so it turned out she flew into the air and clearly headed towards the hero to intimidate him. She gracefully and with a roar came down, preparing to strike a powerful blow to the scoundrel. Immediately after landing, she made a giant swing with her halberd, which should have scared our brother to death. The blade of the halberd reflected Sam's frightened gaze, but he didn't move from it. It was unexpected that such a warrior would not simply kill a man, which gave her the opportunity to be surprised at his courage. She had never seen anything like this before. The boy didn't even hide or dodge her attack. It turns out the kids have courage. And he didn't even think about dodging. Why would he do that if he understood that no one would kill him here? But in reality, he had no idea why he didn't react to her attack because he was so scared. She immediately realized that it was he who defeated May. But unfortunately for him, she is much stronger than this weakling whom she called a guy. Maya was unhappy with the Lord's words and wanted to fight her if she wanted. Cindy told her that she could not fight the head of the bandits, since she herself was the majestic ruler of the empire. If the bandit wanted to fight, then let her sign up for the tournament. Sam asked not to be so impulsive, as this could have a bad effect on the tournament. But Cindy continued to talk about what a pity it was that such a warrior not only lost to a man, but also broke the seal. This is a real shame for a woman. In fact, she changed her mind. Previously, she was mistaken that men were slaves and nothing more. But now she believes that both genders should be equal. The rest of the participants began to laugh at her because they did not understand why such weaklings as men should be equal to goddesses. She noticed their persistence. If they showed the same drive at the tournament, she would give them a cool knife. The referee then told all the participants that they would start. However, there were too many participants, which means eight of them would fight in the knockout battles. In fact, he understands that there will be group battles here, but only he immediately realized that he would be a target for every participant throughout the game. Cindy looked at them from above and realized that if they could not defeat such a small fish, then they were not ready to fight it yet. It also turned out, as he said, all the girls were against him, since he showed himself to be too arrogant. Once again, he pulled out the blade of the legendary monk and asked his enemies to attack him. The girls began to attack. They decided to immediately destroy the most annoying guy here. Just a moment, and these two did not even feel how they lost from a single attack. He looked after his opponents and saw how their clothes were about to turn into shreds. There wasn't even a piece of their clothes left. He didn't hurt the girls, but he was able to strip them naked. Maya thinks this trick is very strange, but somehow it seemed to her that every time it gets stronger and stronger. Cindy was able to recognize his superior speed and sword skills, but these tricks were somehow very strange. The girls also couldn't believe their eyes, how he could do this to the girls. Meanwhile, the battle is in full swing. A barrage of attacks is pouring on him, from which he tries to dodge. He understands that his opponents are very strong, but it's better for them not to underestimate him. They won't succeed anyway. The next beauty was serious about defeating him since she did not count on defeat. As soon as she called someone, a blue energy wolf appeared behind the hero and wanted to grab his back. Behind her, the enemy, when she had time, was puzzled by the question of her brother, who would no longer have time to escape the attack. And so it turned out, the spiritual wolves were faster than his reaction and seriously wounded him in the shoulder. The girl analyzed his dirty tricks, which only affect clothes, but her perfume has no clothes. The wound tormented him, but this was not the time to give up, since all he needed to do was get closer to her and attack. He recognized her strength as her actions were very smart, but he should not be underestimated. As soon as he began to approach, she pulled out two pieces of paper and began to summon the spirit of the tiger and the wolf so that they would begin to defend themselves. His speed is amazing. The wolves do not have time to react to his maneuverability. The brother easily walked away from the wolf. He was truly useless as long as the hero saw him. 
Once again, Cindy admired his speed, as well as his combat experience, which were excellent. So she allowed him to get closer to her, now he can attack her unhindered. But the bummer is that this girl thinks he is too naive, since he doesn't even expect what awaits him. As soon as he had hope of victory, the rival was surrounded by a spiritual bodyguard, the Crane, who protected her. This attack turned against him, after this anyone would have despaired, but he is unlikely to be like anyone else. Cindy was already sure that the result of this battle was predetermined by fate, and the man would remain a man no matter what he did, and in his case, he was just a clown. In this sect, she's the only one who can control three spirit beasts at once, so he cannot win. Only three. Sam began to be insolent. It seemed like she couldn't surprise him anymore, no matter how many trump cards she had. In the system store, he was already thinking about purchasing a new weapon. This time, the new weapon is a pistol, which, without any paid add-ons, only affects animals. A real battle began, in which fate again sided with Brother Sam. A flurry of shots followed from the revolver. Only the bullets were not lead, and gunpowder was not needed. The bullets hit all these creatures perfectly, but it couldn't be said that they were hurt. The trouble is, according to her, spirits are not material, which means no damage can be done to them. They don't feel anything. However, the hero was sure of the opposite and suggested that she check what happened to her animals. As soon as she turned around, her confident look changed. She could not admit what had happened to her favorites. We forgot to say, yes, this pistol only affects animals, but also spirits. Only they must be animals. And he acts in such a way that he turns any animal into a girl and gives them the body of a beauty. Since they are now women, he can continue attacking them with his legendary blade. He didn't hesitate and took the attitude to defeat her cutie beasts. The cutie's clothes were torn and there were no covered areas left on them. Even our little bird has fallen victim to a terrible pervert who attacks innocent women. In this form, she continued to order them to fight, despite their wishes and will. However, no one listened to her anymore. The spirits began to disappear, and they did not react to her orders. And finally, he asked her what right she had to be their master when she did not even try to understand them. The girl did not immediately understand him and asked what she wanted to say. What he wants to say is that he will not feel sorry for her and the further battle will be completely serious. She didn't want all her clothes to be torn in front of everyone, but not this, she said. He doesn't want to embarrass her in front of the public, but in return she must fulfill his condition. She wondered what condition awaited her. Then he came up to her and began to whisper that after today's game. Still, she agreed to the secret condition. After all, she understands everything, the girl said. Sam asked the judge to announce the results since his opponent gave up in this battle on her own. Finally, the judge raised his hand and announced the winner with a loud cry. The magnificent Sam won the battle. The judge's screams completely destroyed Cindy's idea of men. Her eyes were frozen in one place. Still, he was able to surprise her. And not for the first time, it's not for nothing that she looks back with such puzzled eyes. The girls in the stands also couldn't believe their eyes. Was it possible that a man could defeat a woman? This had never happened in their lifetime. Maya was the first to greet the winner with questions about what he wanted to say to the girl. In fact, for him it was just a profitable deal with her, and his beautiful head should be glad that he won. She replied that each subsequent enemy will become stronger and the battles will be more difficult. Not everything is so simple, my friend. But his satisfied grin told everyone that he was invincible, and his stripping technique was unshakable. An hour passed, and the moment came to fight against the next opponent, which he immediately did not like. In one corner stands the Iron Girl Mary, who crushingly passed the last stage and moves on with the same pressure. In the other corner is Lucky Sam, who was lucky enough to get here. He immediately became angry. Why was he being so publicized? Why was his victory called just luck? And how can this beast in armor be a woman? He's too big, the hero doesn't believe it. Mary says that this is women's armor. Even here, there is a skirt. What else is needed for proof? They want to prank him like this, Sam thinks about this topic, since his opponent is very suspicious. The Iron Girl loudly stated that her armor was too strong and his technique would be useless against her. The previous rival said exactly the same thing. But you know how it all ended, you impudent tin, Sam said, and attacked her. Today's defeat is just a failure, and you, a man, have remained a non-entity. That's right, said the hero. If that's the case, then turn around and get ready to accept defeat. Still, she turned around and unquestioningly followed his orders. As soon as she began to lift up her skirt near the dress, which greatly embarrassed her, he asked her to let him relax her muscles and do some light stretching for her personally. How do you feel now? Sam asked her. She lied that she didn't feel anything, but in fact she felt something strange, something incomprehensible. If she didn't feel anything, Sam thought he'd try those palms to see how they worked on her. 
Then there were screams and pleas that he would spare her, that he would stop since his tail was too small. Since this is so, he decided to show her the real blade that was hidden in his sheath. She looked back and began to hum quietly in anticipation of what awaited her. After the procedure began, she began to talk about all sorts of nonsense that did not fit into a single picture, as if one puzzle had been lost. From that moment on, the path of Master Queen began, who had to choose among three spiritual beasts. She immediately wanted to take all three of them in order to become the best master of spirit animal control. From her memory, they were always together, starting out together, hanging out together, training together. There were also difficult moments when they had to practice against dangerous animals, and then they coped with everything together. But now she doesn't know if she dares to call herself their master when she did this to them. Then she began to approach Sam's room, where the cries of her animals could be heard, asking for more. She thought that they were calling her for help, that they were calling their master, who would always arrive at a difficult moment. Suddenly for everyone, the heroine burst into the box with the words that she would carry out his punishment if he released her crane, tiger and wolf. In fact, her spirits take great joy in spending time with this scoundrel. Sometimes they call him Master, the second master, who so pleases their animal instincts. The girl could not believe that in addition to their master, they also called some guy. Yes, said the soul of the wolf. They call him Master, but in her heart she will always be their mistress. The tiger added that he simply makes them happy, and they themselves will always be with their master. The crane asked not to be so jealous since he simply captured them. But she has no idea where they got these bodies from, just as she worries about them, but they don't even think about her. After her words, the tigress and the wolf approached her, saying that she was absolutely right, but she herself must fulfill his wish. And immediately she pushed her onto the hero's bed so that she would not think of leaving here without punishment. Sam noticed that her spirit beasts thought and cared about her, but wouldn't she mind them calling another person a master? Still, he must understand that it is difficult for her to find a compromise in this case. But if he does everything right, then she will not bother him. An hour passed and she wanted more, for him to pour more spiritual energy into her, how good the Lord is. He told her that if she fully immersed herself in the process, she would definitely feel a significant increase. But she wanted to tell how strong Cindy had become in the field of fencing. With her impenetrable body and incredible strength, it would be very difficult for the hero. However, she need not worry about him, since he thought of everything, and he thanked her for the inspiration, which greatly surprised her. The brother with his grin said that Quinn would see tomorrow what he had in store for the undefeated Queen Cindy. Then he was able to get a Queen card, and from that moment on it was with him for any trip. The day has already passed, and the time has come for the final duel between the majestic Lord Cindy and the fighter of fortune, Sam. The judge announced that there are no more rules in this battle. Either live or die, the fight has begun. From the very beginning, the lady began to be insolent, because she thought that he did not dare to come, but he could. But still he must understand that he could not see victory, only death. Unfortunately for her, he did not want to die at all, since there is still a lot of beauty in the world. Delicious food, the immense beauty of nature and beautiful girls to meet. What a pity! Cindy continued the conversation, that after this battle you won't be able to see this beauty of life. But he was against it, because he would definitely like to meet the beautiful Cindy. Doesn't he have the right? She waved her halberd and said that he was unlikely to be as cocky with his head on the arena floor. Then she will have to give it her all, because in this case he will not feel sorry for her since he cannot. Now the judge has waited for the start. He has been patient for a long time, and now he can declare that the fight has officially begun. After the start of the battle was announced, the brother attacked Lord Cindy at breakneck speed. A whistle passed through the arena, which witnessed the lightning attack of the stripping technique. He managed to rip a piece of fabric from her armor, which should be a definite success for him. Then he began to impudently that at this rate she should be prepared for the fact that she would become completely naked. She did not fully turn to him and began to say that he did not understand anything yet. His dirty tricks were created to mock women's pride and personify their shame. He didn't understand what Cindy wanted to tell him with this, so why didn't he understand this time? In fact, she deliberately did not dodge the attack, since she did not care about the shame, and all because she made sure that no man would enter this arena. The stands began to applaud their mistress, saying what a cool mare they have. Everyone would envy him. She initially understood how he was going to fight her and prepared well, so that none of his techniques would work. She is not afraid of his threats that the man will be able to expose all her charms. Does she really like him that much? If the hero is always so far away, then she can easily attack him from afar, then everything is just fine. 
and now she began to concentrate her terrifying power in the halberd, preparing to show off her unique skills. She then flew into the air and began creating flurries of cutting attacks that cut through the air and flew in different directions. One of the attacks was heading straight towards him. What awaits him when they collide? The judge knew these unique attacks in advance. After them, no one could stand on their feet. Our Lord is magnificent. Sam understands that this blow will be truly serious. He should be on the alert. Maybe his opponent has something else hidden up her sleeve. His legendary blade cracked under the girl's barrage of blows. In its place, a powerful explosion formed. This force terrified not only the audience, even I myself began to worry. But this is not the time to announce the results. Our guy is still standing. He was able to stay on his feet in front of her. It's amazing, Cindy said, that he's the first one to stand on his feet after this devastating attack. Only he doesn't need this praise. He's going to win and wants to try out a new trick. She noticed that all his actions were in vain, since there was a gigantic gap in physical strength between men and women. He could not win. It would have turned out that way if it was just an attack without any trick. The soul left her body. She could not understand at all what was happening here, how he managed to do this. He nicknamed this technique as a separator of soul and body, and that's exactly how it works. He also decided to separate his soul from his body in order to fight Cindy. She found such tricks funny, but she became interested in what he wanted to do in such a state. All the other spectators could not understand why their bodies stopped moving. They seemed to be paralyzed. In fact, the souls of Sam and Cindy were seen only by the Master of Souls, and our Quinn is one of the only ones capable of seeing them. Irritated, Cindy wanted to know from him what the purpose of these tricks was, what he was going to do with him. The fact is that he wanted to test how his attacks would work in a spiritual state, since he could not injure the physical body in any way. In her opinion, a weak person will always be a weak person, and he will never be able to defeat her. She decided to prove the veracity of her words with a sudden swing of the halberd, which previously could have killed anyone in this arena. Only the hero didn't want to dodge at all. On the contrary, he stood motionless, holding out his hand to repel the attack. In his spiritual state, he is able to destroy this cutting attack with his bare hands. Cindy had a hard time believing that this guy could stop her attack with his bare hands. But this is no time for chatter. Now it is Sam's turn to attack Her Majesty. She lost her spirit from what she saw and could not gather herself to avoid the blow. The first damage was done. This magnificent slap gave her a slight bruise. After this, she will definitely be furious. This incredible aura is already clearly felt. He was already beginning to think that this attack was too cruel. What would her reaction be? As it turned out, she was not angry. She felt offended. Since no one had ever hurt her, this had never happened. It became even more incomprehensible to him, since such a majestic warrior felt pain from such a weak spank. Lindsay warned him that now was the perfect time to break Cindy's seal. He immediately realized that he needed to finish the tournament as soon as possible and prepare to remove the seal. The brother began a conversation with the offended warrior, explaining that in her state of mind, she was not able to defeat him. But he can give her a choice, the first option. They will continue the battle, but it will bring her much more pain. She did not agree to this and asked to move to the second option. In the second option, he will multiply all his damage received by a thousand times. She couldn't understand how he would do this to her if there were so many spectators around. But there wouldn't be a problem since ordinary people couldn't see them, Sam said. Then he snapped his finger to transform Cindy into a different image. All of her armor was replaced with a cute bunny costume, which only made her more embarrassed. She was very ashamed of this shameful costume. Did the guy really decide to disgrace her like that? As it turns out, this costume is not the end. Even more shameful things await her. Suddenly, he used the spirit binding technique and thereby immobilized her. Finally, he fully prepared everything to carry out punishment for defeats. The girl from the stands apparently had spiritual power, which gives her the ability to see everything that happens to them. Only the mother does not understand why her daughter sees something, since in her opinion, those two have not moved for a long time. Quinn hoped that this bastard wouldn't teach this girl anything bad. The stands were already starting to get bored while these two stood still, but Quinn decided to show May what was really going on, and she was shocked by it. The proud warrior was completely humiliated. In her life, she never even thought that she would be treated like this. He noticed that Cindy's seal was hidden much deeper than May's, which is where he senses it from. Suddenly, a giant pillar of light hit the sky. The first queen had the same reaction, which means the second seal was broken. Fans could not understand where this light came from, what it meant, what was happening in this arena. Only a few understood that another seal had been lifted, and yet no one believed in the hero. And here comes Lindsay. 
The second shackles have been broken. There is very little left, and victory will be in their hands. She realized that this boy was able to accomplish the impossible. He was able to succeed in his next mission. Sam came to her to tell her about his new success, that he was able to get the innocence of the great Cindy. She was incredibly happy. To some extent, she liked him for his honesty and zeal for victory. After that, he should feel a surge of power from the moon, Lindsay said, getting closer to him. Then she kissed him passionately. What a reward for hard work. And here is the new Cindy card. With it, the hero received a unique skill, eight Cindy cuts. She finally woke up in her body. Everything was over. The battle was over as well. She collapsed to the ground. As she realized that she had fallen into her body, her soul had returned back. Sam stood confidently in front of her and said that the girl must accept defeat. And so it turned out. She accepted defeat. It was not easy, but still she did it. The stands were in shock. In their lifetime, the great Lord Cindy had never admitted defeat as the scoundrel managed to achieve this. She turned around, saying that following the rules of the duel, he won, and she calmly accepted defeat. Unfortunately for him, he understands that it is not easy for her to accept defeat. Her character is much more complex than that of any girl here. What cute carps our heroine stood by the pond for a long time and looked at them. At the same time, she looked weighed down at her reflection, where she saw a woman who had lost to a man. She cannot come to terms with this. She lost and lost to a man. This shame will torment her for the rest of her life. Suddenly, Brother Sam appeared behind her and pushed her into the water, saying that he didn't want something. Large splashes of water scattered in different directions. She was every bit wet, but she still asked him what he was going to do with her. There are fools, he thought that our fragile queen wanted to commit suicide in this pond. Who is he to commit suicide because of him? Cindy asked him. On top of everything else, how should she end her life in such shallow water? Is he completely stupid? But still, she asked why His Majesty Sam did not go to take the throne of his city. Why did he come to the loser Cindy? He has no need for this useless throne when he feels in his ass that he should worry about Mistress Cindy. What if she does something to herself? How he will live later? After these sincere words, she attacked him. Obviously, these were the words she was waiting for from him. It was not a victory, just dirty tricks. Since he is so persistent, he can accept a second challenge from Mistress Cindy. Few could compare with him in such a battle. Or our fragile queen decided to lose a second time. That time in the ring, she was not at all collected and was not ready for anything like that. But now she's ready to give it her all. Only he should come to terms with his mind. After these words, she pushed him into the water. He didn't expect her to start approaching him in such a place. He wanted her to hold off on it. Only God and those cute carps know what happened next. After this, finally, after so many difficulties and expectations, Sarah, who would be best suited for this role, rose to the post of City Lord. On top of that, our heroes received a lot of money, which will definitely make their journey easier. That's true, Maya said. But something bothers her, or rather, someone makes her worry. She was worried about why this irritable queen was coming with them. What she had lost here. In fact, she has nothing more to do here, she said proudly. She is no longer a lord especially since she was defeated by a man. And besides, it's very difficult to look after this fragile man. It will be much easier if two strong girls look after him. Maya agreed with Cindy. He didn't like the way these two foxes talked about him. Even if they spoke in a whisper, he still heard everything. But Cindy brought with her a nice gift in the form of a cool payment card that will help them travel. Maya noticed that some greedy official would earn much more than a pathetic robber and how difficult this card would be. She didn't like this insolence, after all. It was her savings from tournaments that fans donated to her. Okay, okay, girls. Sam addressed them. Quarrel later, and this card will help them in the future. He reminded them that they would still have to negotiate among themselves and find compromises. But this is not so important. Someone suspicious from the outside was eavesdropping on their conversations. He was a very suspicious wanderer who watched them for a long time. Time passed and night had already fallen. A large, shining white ball rose to the heavens and shone along with multicolored dots on the black canvas. And our heroes decided to stop at the fire and discuss the next plan. Cindy had a bun for lunch, which was not as tasty as she expected. Maya said that this was the master's palace for her, and no one would bring her medallions in cream sauce no matter how much she wanted. Sam decided to act and talked about how there was a lot of all kinds of living creatures near the river nearby. Then he suggested that they go and collect fish and animals. As it turned out, she had lived in the mountains since childhood, so there would be no problems with hunting. She would like someone to cook. Sam didn't want to cook, and Cindy had never tried it. It all made the beauty terribly angry. But it's true. Why are they so proud when they don't know how to do anything? Then he asked her not to be angry. Yes, he doesn't know how to cook, 
but he can call the assistant who can easily handle it. Apparently, our hero decided to call the lovely salon owner from the very first task. So our beautiful owner of an intimate salon appeared in the middle of a cloud of smoke who was in a state of courage with surprise. The girls nearby were just as surprised, who had no idea where she came from or how she appeared from the map. It takes too long to explain everything. In fact, this is your new sister who can cook wonderfully. She didn't like that he only called her in so she could be his cook. What a shame. They were not so interested in listening further since they hoped that her level of cooking was similar to her beauty and went to get the ingredients. When they left, she continued to resent the fact that he calls at the most unnecessary moments. He answered her by saying that not only is she beautiful, but she cooks better than any Siri and the like in the divine space, so you can help them very well. As soon as he remembered Siri, she began sneezing loudly in Wonderland. Lisa began to worry about the girl, but she replied that everything was normal. Maybe someone would remember her. Then she decided to show the lovely dish that she had prepared and offered to try it. Lisa replied that it looked simply gorgeous. When she cursed, she didn't mean it. She wanted to say that he calls the other girls when he is in danger, and he calls her when everything is normal and calm. It was then that he approached her and said that the hostess sister deserves more than just a battlefield. She deserves much more. When he touched her stomach, she became very embarrassed. He asked not to blame him for not being able to restrain himself when such a lovely girl also dresses like that. At the sight of her, his gun is ready to fire. His appetite becomes brutal. He can't help himself. His hunger was too strong, and he asked his sister to help him and feed him showing him his small stove with buns. She became more embarrassed, but she was able to agree to this so that he would eat with her. So they started eating dinner, and here is a beautiful woman who will always help in difficult times. Finally, he stopped with dinner, then he thanked the hostess for her hospitality. She hid behind a tree and began buttoning her shirt, saying something under her breath. There was someone standing behind her who was waiting for a good moment to put the blade of a knife to her neck. That same wanderer has been standing for a long time and waiting for a good moment since he clearly saw how she showed him the oven with pies and everything like that. Sam, puzzled, asked him not to harm her and wanted to know what he wanted from them. The strange bandit said that in the building where their next target lives, this beauty can be bought for a lot of money. He decided to raise his voice at him so that the bandit would let the girl go, since he would not allow even the tip of her hair to fall from her head. She had hope of salvation after the words of Sam, who was very confident in himself. She began to indicate her conditions. If Sam did not go with them, then his girl would be very unpleasant. He was frightened by the fact that they were hunting for him, and not for such a lovely beauty as the owner of the intimate salon. The bandit explained everything by saying that their inn and sect were based on catching beautiful men. Two strangers appeared behind him, ready for any trick of the pervert. He wanted to know if there was any law that allowed the hunting of civilian men. He was very sorry that he was such a weak person, but this would be the last warning for him. The stranger stuck the tip of the knife in the girl's face, and said that if he didn't go with them now, then something very bad could happen to her beautiful face. She had no face, but she was strong enough to say that these freaks underestimated her. Her words struck him, as he was sure that she was an ordinary, fragile girl. She told Sam that he could run away from here, and she would save him. However, Sam will never allow his girls to be harmed. He owes them his life, after all. He already told her this. Later, he winked at her, proving that everything would be fine, and he would never despair. She noticed how he sweetly moved his eyelids. This made her understand that everything would be okay. It was not for nothing that he went out on such a mission. The other bandits noticed how smart this guy was and added that he would be received very well in their house. This mission turned out to be the most problematic, but this does not mean that he will not pass it. Still, they led him along. Sister Freya did not know if Sam had any plan, but she was sure that she herself would save him. And then she was interrupted by some kind of fabric, which was definitely used by that girl in the cape. And so it turned out, Freya could not understand why her eyes were getting dark, and the bandit said that it was time for sleep. The girl muttered, if there is an opportunity, then maybe he will be released. When this moment appears, then she will come for Frey's sister. So we were transported to the house of the Shawshank family, where the bodies of men are sold to various beauties and more. The girls with these guys behaved much more softly, unlike their own kind. In the room behind the doors, a very important topic was discussed with particular interest. And here is our famous sister Garnet, who wanted to find out if there is a much more interesting product. The bandit says that in other houses they gave a price of 100,000 silver coins for this man, and that's even before they caught him. This figure shocked her, since she did not even dare to think that these thieves would come and announce a price of 100,000, although previously all the men were worth 5,000 silver. 
If Sister Garnet does not want to believe this, then the bandit decided to take a personal look at this specimen and make sure of her words. She says he must completely shock her to be worth that much money. Garnet looked up and saw those beautiful blue eyes, those expressive cheekbones and gray hair. He definitely stood out among everyone. She had seen countless men before and had not felt anything for them for a long time, but as soon as she saw his eyes, her heart began to beat faster. The bandit has already begun to insist that Garnet buy it, because if she doesn't buy it, someone else will. She handed him a bill worth 100000 and told him to take the money and get out. After they were alone, she understood that such a handsome man could recoup his entire cost in a year. Still, he wanted Miss Garnet to untie her. Then they would figure out what to do with him. Untying him is not a problem for her. The main thing is that he does not run away anywhere and does not play any tricks here. He answered her by saying that he is very happy as long as he has such beauty as Miss Garnet in front of his eyes, who asked her to hold back her feelings. She removed the rope from him. Sam thanked her for this and asked what kind of place it was, why Garnet bought it and what he needed to do here. This is the Shawshank House, where handsome men from all over the world are gathered. They spend time with the local girls, making them happier, spending leisure time with them. Then she asked if he would help her with this. He replied that he could not help her in any way, since he did not know how to do anything. To this, the miss replied that she had people who would teach him everything he needed. She called Katya, Anya, and the twin sisters, who should become her teachers. The lady warned them to teach him how to please a girl in one day, but they should not overdo it, since it is a very expensive specimen. The girls were shocked by his beauty, as they had seen a lot of handsome men, but he looked simply amazing. The sisters could not wait for his training to begin. They were already glowing like the summer sun. He began to fear that it would be difficult for the four sisters to cope with him, since he was not a weakling. But they didn't understand him and thought that they had to play giveaway with him. Only he was sure that their legs would give way after this stormy training. After he took off his clothes, they were even more delighted. Against the background of these beautiful flowers, the sighs of four beauties could be heard. She was very glad that this money cow would train well and then bring in gigantic fortunes. Meanwhile, the girls returned from the hunt and tried to wake up Freya, who barely woke up. Then they wanted to find out where their beloved Sam had gone. He had fled somewhere again. The former owner of the brothel said everything about the case. He was kidnapped by bandits who put her to sleep. Cindy began to ask her if she knew where he was taken, since she had a good understanding of the area. Freya remembered that the bandits took him to a place called the Shawshank House, something like a brothel for women. Cindy understood that if Sam was sold to this house, then it would be very difficult for them to get him out of there. Earlier, Maya also heard something about the Shawshank House, something connected with men. Cindy reminded her that in this place, women spend time with men, which is why there is a serious hunt for handsome men there. And when guys become unnecessary, they are forgotten about, in short, a terrible place for a handsome guy. Maya understood what they could do to her beloved boy, what the world would look like through his eyes. This is exactly what his world will look like, a bunch of beauties will be waiting in line to get their hands on such a product. They will fight to take possession of him until his rose finally withers. She believes that they cannot hesitate. If they do nothing, then it may be too late. If they just rush in, they won't have any privileges, since they must either be very rich or very valuable. Maya was very upset, because she was very afraid of the consequences, since they couldn't just wait here. Sister Freya had an idea, but she doesn't know how feasible it is. Maya asked her to share what they have. In fact, she knows little about their world since she is not from here. But she is sure that the female gender reigns here, which means they cannot break into their house, but legally meet Sam as their first clients. For Cindy, this idea was very good, but no one had ever been in such places who would be responsible for everything. She was determined, saying that it was very important for her to save Sam and was ready to be in the lead. Two days passed. The Shawshank house was calm, but not for long. These three entered very boldly, asking where the hospitality was in the Shawshank house. No one even greeted them. Miss Garnet began to feel guilty, although she was very busy, but still asked for forgiveness and in return decided to personally accept them. The lady added that our guests have everything they want, for their money, of course. Maya got straight to the point and wanted to say that they were looking for Sam, but Freya interrupted her. Freya said that they are looking for the most interesting option. The main thing is that it is worth it. Cindy added that money is not a problem for them, their wealth is much higher than she can imagine. Garnet was interested in the appearance of one lady with green hair, as she looked extremely familiar. This worried Cindy very much, since she's very popular, and a woman like Miss Garnet should know her well. Only Freya was confident in herself, 
and explained their secretive appearance by the fact that they would not want anyone to know that they visit such places. She really liked our Freya. She's very beautiful and also brought her friends. She's just lovely. She stated that the three of them could expect the best service and the best men here. Maya couldn't understand why the girl didn't immediately start looking for Sam since he was their main goal. She understood everything. But it would be very dangerous for them since Miss Garnet would immediately understand who they came here for. Cindy noted her impressive intelligence as she thought through the entire plan perfectly and hid the girls' faces in advance. She explained her knowledge by saying that she has been working in a similar business for a long time and is an excellent marketer herself. Such knowledge is typical for her. Suddenly, a strong light began to flow from the doors, where some strange voice said that the three sisters had been waiting for him for a long time. They were brought some kind of muscle man who was much bigger than they imagined. She asked him to stop because the product was of terrible quality. Then some wolf came out, a handsome one from the western regions, who was much more brutal than they expected. And you brought some kind of flabby dog, Freya was indignant. Here they are definitely looked down upon. Suddenly, she began to apologize to her friends for stopping them in the middle of a trip in such a terrible place, adding that this Shawshank house was not worth its enthusiastic rumors, bad service. She asked them to stop, since they had a newcomer who was the best in the whole city. If they were interested, they could stay. The heroines initially said that they were only interested in the best goods. Money is not important. Show the most valuable, Freya said. She led them to the very room where the golden boy, the most handsome here, was located. The girls entered the room where someone very familiar was waiting for them. This is him. Our hero came out after a shower, and he wondered if there were new clients. This time he makes a promise to Miss Garnet that he will please them. As soon as he looked back, he saw his beauties and said that they could feel at home. So they found him. Three beauties were already standing in his room and saw how well he lived here. Garnet warned him that these clients were very important to them, so he had to give it his all. He immediately understood everything and tried to drive her away, saying that he could handle them on his own, and she could go. Then the handsome man slammed the doors loudly so that no one would hear anything. From that moment on, he began to understand that the girls would be very angry with him for not even trying to escape. And so it turned out. They were burning with rage. Some were shaking their fists. Others were baring their teeth. He was immediately pressed against the wall, which frightened him greatly, as he was anticipating the taste of this pain that awaited him. Maya was ready to strangle him for not even trying to escape from here, although they were so worried about him. For Freya, it wasn't so important to punish the scoundrel. She wanted to know why he didn't even try to escape. In fact, he would not want to be here. The whole reason is that he is physically unable to free himself. And the reason for this is the giant guard of commanders and generals. He is not able to hurt any of them. For Cindy, they did not pose any danger to her, since she was fully aware of the abilities of these shrimp soldiers. With such strong beauties, it will be easy to win, but there is still something that prevents him from leaving here. Cindy continued to not understand the hero because she thought that he no longer wanted to go anywhere. This cannot be. He really wants to leave here. He needs to destroy all the seals, but it's not a matter of wanting at all. The fact is that handsome men like him are exploited as a commodity, and there are a lot of them. So you definitely need to take them with you. Maya understands that a man can never be equal to a woman, and they cannot carry such a gigantic burden on four humps. Yes, May is right, but Sam has already come up with a clever plan that they can only do this night. Until night falls, he simply must serve such welcome guests to pass the time. Freya did not agree, since they spent so much effort to save him, but he wanted to fool around. They don't have time for nonsense. Maya decided to interrupt her, since she was not against such a good offer from the hero. She said that they still have a lot of time to sort everything out. Cindy didn't mind either since it would be an ideal opportunity for them to take a break before a difficult task. Everyone agreed, which means the owner of the brothel can no longer refuse such a tempting idea. In addition, Miss Garnet can eavesdrop on them behind the door, which means they must make characteristic sounds, otherwise it may be suspicious. He began to shout loudly, which of the three guests would be first? Let's choose using rock, paper, scissors. The girls agreed to the proposal and decided that the one who wins will be the first. The first round began. Only two people participated in it. Freya won. The girl said that Cindy doesn't play, so she will be last. And here are the rules. Only now she is not so stupid and climbed on him first, which made the girls shout at the top of their voices what a cunning friend they have. She is ready to use him until the evening, until he runs out of steam. There were also those who were not happy that Cindy was alone with him for so long. Sam did not see any problems, since everyone will have their own share, and there will be a place for you, Maya and Frey. 
Suddenly, he decided to use a strange technique that turned from one to three. The girls were amazed by this. It turns out they expected this from him. Cindy had already jumped on him and was expecting all the best, which is exactly what she will get. She asked him not to force them to be lazy. They should work to the maximum of their capabilities. Finally, Garnet heard the sweet voice that foreshadowed the beginning, and she also understands that the boy can bring her a lot of money this evening. So he finished with them. But soon night was approaching. Just the time had come to make an escape. He told the girls that they could begin to carry out our plan. Maya did not understand anything and immediately thought that Sam had not had enough and decided to start all over again, all the maintenance. He understood this well, but they already need to start escaping. Everything is according to plan. They need to end with vulgarities. Cindy said that some people still can't get over it, alluding to Sister Maya. Free asked Sam what his true plan was, what he had in mind. He started to get dressed and said when they started their escape, she would make sure that their escape would be great. After his words, for unknown reasons, he began to whistle loudly. When suddenly the birds began to sing outside the window with their magnificent voices, our head of the house became very restless from this. Such a girl constantly has her head filled with all sorts of thoughts, as if everyone wants to disturb her, and she is preparing for every blow in the back. In one of the chambers, where the guys were pleasing their clients, noise from birds was also heard. This guy heard a strange whistle. He knew that the escape had begun, so he had to run out. In one room, a girl vehemently mocked the handsome man because she wanted to listen to the cries of agony, how she spent money on this. He also heard a loud whistle. He recognized it and knew that their rescue would soon arrive. She began to beat him with more fury in order to hear the sweet cries that made her so happy. But he no longer wanted to tolerate her. The day had come that everything would change and women would no longer be able to mock them. She didn't like the way he muttered under his breath, since now was not the time to be insolent to women. As soon as she said this, he threw her into the wall with all his strength and hatred. She couldn't understand why her body was getting so heavy, why she couldn't use the strength bestowed by God. The fact is that the poison with which he smeared his lips began to work. Sam is a genius. He succeeded everywhere. She, crawling on the floor, tried to stop him. Since he was her property, she bought him, which means he belongs to her. Only today has come the day when they will cease to be property. They will be free. So they arrived in some strange basement. Sam brought them here. Cindy couldn't understand why they couldn't escape from here since it was the perfect place for a silent escape. As soon as she looked deeper into the basement, Freya saw something strange. In front of them stood a crowd of handsome men who saw Sam and began to call him Commander. As soon as everyone noticed him, they began to shout in unison, The Commander! The Commander has arrived! The escape will begin soon! Warrior Cindy was shocked because they did not understand when he managed to become their commander. Maya couldn't believe her eyes, all because she didn't understand how so many guys got here and no one noticed them. From each room of the guys, there is a secret passage from which they came here. He will accompany them, as he must rescue them. They began to thank their savior in chorus. Some owed him their whole lives, while others wanted to repay him with their bodies. He was not interested in paying with his body, since he was not saving them for that. But just like that, better just like that. Fortunately, the girl stood up for him, who said that he had masters, and he himself was more into girls than boys. Freya decided not to waste time, since they already need to escape from here. They finally reached the first exit. Sam looked around. There was nothing suspicious yet. Then almost everyone had already gotten out. Sam encouraged the brothers to be quicker, otherwise they would not see a successful escape. This situation touched Cindy, since her hero saved so many men and does not worry about his life. He initially believes that both men and women are very valuable, and a world where men and women are equal is an ideal world. Only now the guards decided to interfere with their brilliant escape, who realized that they were going to run away and hide here. The guys were immediately scared because they didn't understand what to do in this situation. What to do? The guards were on their heels. Cindy already assumed that everything, as always, would have to be solved by force. Force being the only solution to all problems. For the second time in her life, May agreed with Cindy that they would have to fight even if Sam's plan was completely perfect. Only now he himself decided to destroy everything by deciding to surrender without starting the battle. Why does he do this when he almost escaped? The girls couldn't believe their ears. Was he really joking, they shouted. But Cindy considered this moment very touching. He had already thought about this situation, but still wanted to talk to the general of the guard. If she wants to bring all the guys back, she must make sure that these three girls live with her. The general started the conversation with aggression, since he was not in a position to try to find a common language and come to an agreement. 
He noticed how well the guards at the Shawshank family home worked all this time. But in this house, all the rich women have fun with men. Doesn't she want to know that guys also want to have fun, that they also have feelings? Sam said, flirting. Then he pointed to these beautiful men who were very scared. Maya liked the hero's proposal. She invited the general to accept it along with her proposal. Cindy didn't mind either, since partly they might benefit from it, since they would have to go to the trouble of taking action with such little guys. The girl asked them not to be so arrogant, and there was no way they would be able to make a good impression. The faces of the rest of the guards turned red. They liked this proposal, since they themselves loved to have fun with the boys. The girls clearly hit the nail on the head as their words began to worry the general greatly. This was a great opportunity for them, since no one would give them anything for their capture, and during the entire time they worked for several months, no one escaped. Later, Sam himself decided to tell the general to stop pretending that the words of her subordinates were not true, since she herself had previously done something while our handsome man was in the shower. But in fact, she watched with great interest as he wiped himself with a towel. She began to scream loudly and ask this devil to shut up, in return, she gave them half an hour to hide in their rooms. The guards were very glad that the general agreed to this wonderful proposal. Immediately after the agreement, they ran up to the boys and began to treat them nicely and take them to their rooms. From the outside, their service looks very unpleasant, the girls said. All the hostility was depicted on their faces. While the girls showed their displeasure, Sister Freya laughed at them and everything that was happening here. Maya asked why their sister was laughing so much. She replied that she thought the sight in front of them was funny. Half an hour had already passed, and the general could not get enough of Sam, her beloved Sam. Finally, he asked her how they liked the service. Did they like everything? Give me five stars for a good job. The daring beauty replied that no matter how good his work was, they still had to make sure that no one escaped. Then she asked the sisters to leave from here. Only she didn't receive an answer, all because her friends were lying on the floor without any strength. Her whole face was covered with sweat. She said how her body was getting heavier, how her eyes were becoming cloudy. Sam replied that she and her comrades kissed him, and his lips were soaked in that same poison. She began to call it a very dirty trick, and this arrangement was part of his plan. Maya confirmed that it was originally his idea to lure them here and weaken them with poison. And he continued that women have female weapons, that men have male weapons. Each of them fights for the sake of freedom, their freedom. Freya wondered what the hero was going to do with the bodies of the guards after defeating them. And Cindy asked the second question. Where would he put the little guys who, after being released, could be made slaves again? Suddenly a boy came out of the crowd and asked them to take them to a certain heavenly villa, the strangest place in this world, where women and men are equal. This interested Sam, since this is a secluded place for men. Maya briefly told them that the third owner of the seal, which they were so interested in, was there. This beautiful girl's name was Rise. Her silky red hair, like a stream of flame and fiery robes, all complemented her masterpiece image. She is the ruler of the heavenly villa. Sam was more surprised by the fact that the owner of the seal herself protects and protects men from women. Suddenly, some time had passed and Freya began to disappear little by little. Apparently her time had passed. Maya and Cindy could not understand why their friend suddenly began to disappear. What happened to her? They asked. She explained everything to them by saying that her time here was exhausted and she would wait for them and Sam in the divine space. Maya was still sad that their new friend, who had been so hard on them, simply up and disappeared. Cindy decided to cheer her up by reminding her that they would definitely meet after completing this mission. Three days passed and our comrades finally came to a place called Paradise Villa. Sam couldn't wait to see this beautiful Rise who lived here. Cindy explained how little contact each of the seal holders had that they knew little about each other, but she was sure that their rise was different from them in a good way. As soon as they finished the conversation, a crowd of guards and our Miss Garnet appeared behind them. She loudly declared that she treated Sam with kindness, and he took all her money. After these words, she asked him to return everything that he had taken. Maya began to get angry with her, and decided to show her what happens when she doesn't know that she needs to run away. When trouble is heading towards her, a gentle female voice was heard behind them demanding that this farce stop. Sam's face began to turn red before his eyes. He became convinced that the third owner of the seal was behind them, and so it turned out that behind them was Rise, a beautiful girl who wanted to find out who was making noise for them in the front part of the Paradise Villa. Miss Garnet began to resent the fact that Rise stood between Sam and her, who was supposed to negotiate some royal decree. 
In response, Rise asked her to behave more carefully here, since she herself was much lower in rank and should not get involved in such matters. According to her, men are biologically supposed to be the weaker sex. They themselves were not against this decision, so women should be superior to them, and men are just a commodity in their world. On the territory of the Paradise Villa, men cease to be their property, so you should voluntarily take your dogs and go to hell. Garnet could not tolerate such antics, since her army should be equal in strength to the army of Rise's Paradise Villa. Then she asked the guards to attack them and take their goods. The girls agreed with Lady Garnet without hesitation, shouting in unison, Yes, they were outnumbered, and there were only four masters, so they would easily defeat them. Firelight Rise considered their attack stupid since she had not touched them for many years, but now they would test the power of the owner of the seal. No one heard the warnings of the fiery princess, and for this they paid with a powerful blow, which did not give them a chance to win. Their clothes were torn to pieces, and with loud sighs they realized that there was no way they could win here. Garnet was scared by this as she had no idea what Rise had done to her guards. She replied that no one living could hurt her, no one. Then Sam added that Garnet had better run away from here, otherwise if she doesn't listen, he will leave her without clothes. She was furious, but still suggested that the girls go back and retreat for the first time. But it would have been so easy if they had at least some clothes on, but they were completely naked. Sam was too noble today and offered them a bag of clothes since Miss Garnet was kind to him initially. Only these clothes were even more shameful. It would have been better not to have had them at all. Then Garnet turned to the side and leaned down, but she definitely wouldn't leave everything that easily. After they left, Sam bowed to Lady Rise and thanked her for her help and salvation. She replied that she knew him. He was the one who removed the seals from the two masters. Maya began to make excuses that he did not defeat her, but on the contrary, she decided to fulfill the terms of the agreement. Cindy explained everything by saying that during the battle, he constantly used strange tricks, and that's how he removed the seals. Rise was already beginning to think that Sam was hoping to defeat her, then calmly remove the seal. But everything was not like that. He came here to negotiate with the owner of the Paradise Villa, Rise, so that she would allow these poor boys to stay here. She did not refuse and decided to skip them in order to discuss everything first. As soon as they entered the villa, they noticed how courteous the girls were with the guys, how they talked sweetly. Sam definitely noticed the cute walking couples who were so cheerfully discussing interesting topics. He has been in this world for a very long time, but he did not dare to imagine what a world looks like where women and men are equal. Ogonyok replied that he was absolutely right. She was tired of looking at the eternal disputes between men and women, so she created a paradise villa without disputes in peace and harmony. For him, she was a gorgeous girl and their plans coincided. He asked her to help create a world in balance and she would help him remove the seal. Incredibly, she agreed to help him. In fact, she was not at all against his proposal. He began to be very happy, since she suited him perfectly, and he himself did not expect to get down to business so smoothly. But apparently it won't be so simple, just as she said that she couldn't help him remove the seal. The reason for everything was that he himself had to see how she made all of Miss Garnet's guards fly. He agreed with her. It was the miraculous power of Kung Fu that Rise must have trained for a long time. But it's not a matter of training. She has never practiced this power. She has it since birth and this power protects her seal all her life. Cindy wanted to know if what she was saying was true, and if she could kill with this power, Rise said she could try. Immediately after such a challenge, Cindy attacked Rise with her halberd. As soon as she made a strong swing, the entire blow was reflected. Fire Rise did not receive any damage. The heroine was shocked by what she saw, how this happened. The cruel warrior wondered. The girl was thrown back and all her clothes were torn. Cindy could not understand anything. Where did such strength come from, she asked. Why not only her, but also her clothes were wounded? She replied that her internal energy counterattacks with the same force that attacks her enemy. A weak attack tears clothes. A strong attack destroys internal organs. Maya began to wonder how she could be defeated, how her seal could be removed. Sam didn't see anything wrong with his clothes being torn to pieces. Besides, he can simply remain without clothes and there will be no problems. Cindy noticed how confident Sam is. It fits his image perfectly. Maya asked to quickly put on her clothes and stop embarrassing her. Rise said that his antics had no effect on her, no matter how hard he tried, she didn't even blush. He felt very unpleasant that there was a girl standing in front of him who absolutely did not care about his naked body. She replied that from birth she had learned to restrain herself in the face of male charms, and Sam's body was no different from wood or stone. Well then, in response to such a statement, 
he decided to appear in front of her in all his glory. After what they saw, the nearby girls were shocked by his beauty, and he received double points for his charm. Even our unapproachable Rise was able to surprise Sam's male body, which made her feel shy about him. He noticed that this trick worked on her. This is his opportunity to strike. The handsome man gathered all his will into a fist and pointed it straight at the fiery princess. Her shield received a crushing blow from male beauty. It felt like this attack would be able to cause some damage to Rise. But she indifferently said that no one would ever be able to touch her. This power does not allow her to do this. I wonder how happy she will be if she can touch a bird or a cute animal. His confidence is off the charts. He is not afraid of the consequences. He hopes that everything is possible, even to remove this power. Incredibly, his fist almost passed through the impenetrable defense of the beautiful Rise. This shocked her. She had never seen this. Her incredible defense surpassed everyone, and here some man could break through her. Cindy also saw this. This guy can even do this. Is he really so omnipotent? Sam himself was delighted with what he saw. He asked if she felt it, felt that he had succeeded. It was only after these words that he was thrown far, far away that his scream could be heard throughout the entire heavenly villa. In one of the houses, the girls asked God to give her a man who would like to live with her, with whom she would be happy. When suddenly our hero fell into her house, which greatly frightened the girl. He was completely naked. The fall was in great pain, but he was confident that he would soon succeed in achieving his goal. The girl looked around and saw a handsome boy who was lying right under her nose. Had God really given this to her? It seemed to her that God himself had fulfilled her wish, after which she attacked him. The girl did not stand on ceremony and took off all her clothes, since it was a gift of fate. She decided not to behave civilly. Sam asked her to stop. Rise does not believe in them, since no one has been able to touch her and they will not be able to. Maya believes that this guy is capable of more than she thinks. He is the only one who did the impossible to them. Cindy added that he was also able to change their thinking, although no one believed it except himself. In fact, she was incredibly happy that they could be defeated and could be defeated at all. But Cindy thought that this girl was pretending too much, as if she was pretending to be a poor, poor thing. Maya told her that they would not go anywhere until Sam unsealed Rise. Reese allowed them to stay here, but no one will treat them like queens. Everyone here is equal. For that, they can do whatever they want. By that time, it was already deep night, the lights were still on in all the houses of the villa. Maya could not find a place for herself, since it was still light outside and the hero was not returning. Cindy noticed that Maya was worrying too much about him. Did she really miss him so much? She, of course, said that everything was wrong and her friend was wrong. And while she was arguing, someone entered their room, saying that he had returned. It was Sam who said that he spent a lot of time, but was still able to get a lot of information about the beautiful rise. Information is information. But Maya was wondering what happened to his face while he was wandering around the city. But it's true. His whole face was covered in lipstick stains. He was almost kissed to death. Later, he took off his cape to show how valuable this information cost him. If we draw conclusions, the scars on his back indicate the complexity of the mission. Now they should understand why Sam took so much time to find out at least something. Cindy understood everything. So what kind of information did Sam have that he managed to find out about Reese? He scratched his chin, puzzled to remember what those girls had told him. The first was Anya, who said that Miss Rise is a very good person, but she is too cold with everyone. They say that no one has seen her smile. The second was Angelina. It was hard for her to talk to Sam, but she considered him too pathetic compared to Rise, and she also doesn't know how to communicate with men, which is why she is so lonely. Lana was third, but she also said that Ogonyok did not know how to find interest in a man. But Malika, the fourth girl, thought it was strange that Mrs. Rise began to protect men at all, but they were able to meet many good people here. Well, one of the girls said that in the dining room there is duck neck which smells strange. Maya approached him with a puzzled face and asked how many other women he had interviewed. Of course, many, many. Cindy suddenly came up behind him and passionately hugged him to whisper to him that he smelled like wild flowers, which were much better than domestic ones. Maya was very shy and wanted to ask him if there was something she wanted to do, since it was not too late. Meanwhile, Sam and Cindy were already getting too close, but asked if Maya wanted to join. She replied that she was not hinting at anything, but her stuttering voice said otherwise. He held her close and asked her not to pretend if that was what she wanted. Maya was already completely blushing, but she said that she was still against it, and she didn't want to cope without it. Suddenly, Sam felt something. He seemed scared by it and asked the girls what they felt. Maya was not thinking about this at all. She thought that he had not yet changed the subject and was trying to set her up for something. But Sam wasn't talking about that at all. 
he meant that he felt Rise's aura. Maya was also surprised if Rise was really so close. Yes, the aura of the Fire Princess is very close. That's right. Rise passed by their apartment, whether she wanted to come to them. What a strange feeling, like being followed. Cindy has long noticed that she's much stronger than her friend, who sometimes slows down for no reason. Maya only became more embarrassed and explained her stupidity by saying that she was simply distracted from the topic. But this is not so important, the warrior thought. Why would the third seal master be here? Did she really come to visit? Maya replied that they were guests here, so they couldn't drive Rees away from here, no matter how much they wanted to. But Cindy didn't want to waste time and invited her friend to show her what she had lost before she tried to remove the seal on Sam. She continued to tell the girl to be quicker, because there might be those here who don't know how to wait. Some time passed before Maya began to worry that someone might see them while they were doing this. She believes that this will only make her worry, as it will not stimulate her in any way. Even Sam himself was not against them doing this in front of everyone. And now our Maya stopped breaking down. She didn't care anymore. Her patience ran out, and she pulled off her shirt. And our eyes watched with particular interest everything that was happening, which made her worry until she lost her pulse. Watching this, she bit her elbows and nails. All her eyes were filled with interest, but still considered it too shameful. She did not tolerate this and decided to simply step out of this dirty place, since this should not bother her. Sam's voice was heard behind him, shouting that they were doing something very strange. No, she couldn't. But the interest was much stronger than her pride. She couldn't stop herself. That's it, she couldn't restrain herself. As soon as she approached the doors, she began to look with much greater interest. Only it was interrupted by rain, or rather a heavy downpour, which began to shower everything around with drops of water. Water also began to drip on her. What kind of oddities? Where is her impenetrable protection? It also seemed strange to her that drops of water began to drip onto her face, and all because the protection had ceased to protect her. The door opened and Sam looked out, who was sure that the girl was still here. And so it turned out, the light from the house covered her face. Rise was sure that he saw her, which means she should leave from here. Cindy asked why Sam suddenly became so serious. Of course he would be serious. And all because this plan began to work, he clearly noticed what quick steps he began to take towards meeting the fiery princess Rise. Meanwhile, it was getting lighter outside, but the rain still did not stop. Guys and girls walked in pairs, looking at each other, enjoying their life together. Even the rain was not a hindrance to them. Only Rise walked through the alleys all alone. No smile, no joy, nothing on her face, and her protection seemed to close her in a cage of loneliness. When suddenly a roof appeared above her head, it was an umbrella that would definitely protect her. Sam approached her and said that the rain was not that heavy, but if she walked without an umbrella, she would definitely catch a cold. Our unapproachable Rise indifferently said that it was useless, since her energy would protect her and separate the water. When suddenly he asked a very sharp question whether she'd been spying on them last night. She immediately ran away from him and tried to make excuses that she had not been there or that it was not her. As soon as she began to worry, her defenses were weakened. The raindrops could reach her, as well as Sam, who was able to touch her delicate skin. He looked at the finger and expressed how glad he was that he could touch it. The Fire Princess had no idea how her absolute defense failed to work. She couldn't admit it. Sam already understood everything. He understood that her heart was starting to beat faster. He understood that she was worried and her energy was no longer working as it should. She was completely embarrassed. It was written on her face that she could no longer restrain her emotions. When suddenly he extended his hand to her to prove that he was able to break through her impenetrable defense. And so he asked why he could touch her body, why her defenses no longer worked. She tried to explain something, but her voice trembled from time to time. Her excitement knew no bounds. The handsome man explained to her that even if her heart was stagnant water, her protection would be absolute. But as soon as a raging sea was created in the water, the protection would fall away from her. Now her heart is touched. She herself allows the protection to disappear without a reason. But the trouble is, she herself did not want to fall in love with just anyone. She will love her real chosen one. As soon as she said this, her defense worked again and threw the insolent person far, far away. She threw him straight into the river water, but the girl looked at him calmly. When he swam out, Sam swore that he would make her heart beat faster, many times faster. But she indifferently told him that he could do whatever he wanted, but recommended that he give up. After a while, he decided to let off steam and go to the public baths to wash off the shame. On the sidelines, he was noticed by those same beauties who considered him incredibly handsome. And indeed, he was sent by God to them. 
They wasted no time in approaching him to tell him how lonely he looked, which was precisely the reason why they decided to campaign for him. He had no time for this. He apologized to them, calling them very beautiful, but he had to solve one problem. As soon as he resolves all the issues, he will definitely return and repay them for his debts for the necessary information. They sighed with delight, since he can reject such beauties when they approach him. Suddenly, he remembered something that he really wanted to know from them. They were very happy to see him here. If he wanted, he could always come to them. Sam said that they don't have to worry, he will definitely come again. But he needs to know when their master Rise takes a bath here. Several hours passed when our beloved fiery beauty came to the baths and slammed the doors. She tasted the water and immersed herself in the water. Spreading her arms wide, Rise began to take a bath. Today was the strangest day because water dripped on her and this guy touched her, although no one could do this before. He couldn't leave her head. She thought about him all the time, but she tried to forget him. As soon as she took her attention away from the hero, a silhouette appeared under the water and approached her. As expected, the only one who could be here was Sam, who met her here too. As soon as he got out of the water, she began to cover herself with her hands and ask how he got here, why he was underwater. He replied that he had been here from the very beginning and he was hiding underwater to get to her. She asked him if he always hides under the water with strangers and shows off naked in front of them. Sam believes that he has every right to be here, but he didn't expect that she would not only wash herself, but also try to forget about him. She was killed by these words. Rise asked him to shut up, since his words were not true. The handsome man in this form asks her why she is trying to drive him away from here. Is it really because his body excites her so much? Looking to the side, the fire princess said that he and his body are no different from a tree. Then why does he continue to mock her? If this is the case, then he can stay here and the owner of the villa will not be against it. She confirmed his words, saying that he could stay here until he got tired of swimming. Then he asked why Miss Rees did not look at him if she was not at all worried and excited. With all her might, she tried to look away from him and say that there was nothing to look at him. There was nothing like that in him. It was then that he came closer and cheekily asked a short question whether everything was exactly like that. He couldn't agree with her, since all the other girls said that he was a real handsome man. As soon as she looked up at him, she struck her first blow and threw him aside so that he would never come to her so quickly. Only someone managed to catch him, some girls who came to his aid. She was shocked. She saw someone she knew and was surprised that they were there too. Incredibly, it was Maya and Cindy who decided to help their friend achieve one unapproachable princess. So she doesn't think that the three of them will be able to pass her flawless aura, even if they unite. The one-eyed warrior believed that the girl was absolutely right. They believed her. And in fact, Rise is not their target. Their target is someone of a different gender. Their target was Sam, in front of whom they stood and began to pull off their towels. His eyes narrowed in surprise, or because he didn't call them, but they came to help. Cindy told him that only with their help could he destroy the wall to this lady's heart. And Maya was the most embarrassed of all and said that she was here only to complete the plan, nothing more. She was annoyed by the scenes they were playing out here, but she asked what they were going to do here. Cindy noted that the mistress understood everything correctly and they would do something shameful. Maya added whether Lady Fire had any objections to this. The flaming princess realized that no one would let her bathe in peace, but she still decided to ask them to go to another bath and do it there. The warrior, pulling off her towel, says that in Rise's eyes they are just dead trees and stubborn stones. Maya confirmed her words and asked if this sight somehow bothered the unconscious master. For her, this method of provoking the generals does not work in any way. Whatever they want, they can do it. Since everything is so, then she can open her eyes and take in this sight with all her eyes. Maya could no longer find a place for herself to start the process as quickly as possible. Then she asked who would be first. Sam replied that it was easy to handle too. He had no experience in this. Rise couldn't believe that this was possible, but it was true how he was going to do it. The handsome man replied that you should never underestimate human potential. She was very embarrassed. She looked at all this. Her face was constantly turning a little red, and the sounds in the background were heating up the situation. Then these sighs and gasps worsened. They sounded even more often, even more vulgar. Cindy and Maya began to scream louder, the mooing becoming a melody that turned her on like a machine. In the moment, she only felt worse. She heard it all. Her innocent heart could not allow herself to look at it. In the back of her mind, she was thinking about how her body felt strange. It was all because she was looking at it and could barely contain herself. But suddenly she remembered that entering a sleep state in music makes her equanimous to everything, which can save her. After these thoughts, she shook her head and sighed heavily. Still, she was able to enter a trance. Her eyes became empty. 
Her face did not blush for no reason. She became completely calm. Sam was worried that Sister Rise had become so imperturbable in a couple of moments. Would they really not succeed, he was afraid. Cindy kept telling him that he could be afraid of nothing. Just let him continue with it. Maya reminded him that they were only here for one thing. To break Rise's wall. To free her from the bars that kept her locked in alone. The warrior continued to flirt with him to make Miss Fire Princess feel really awkward. He started working on her, which made her very nervous and blush. Finally, the handsome man noticed that she had entered a trance. If they continued, she would not hear or see anything. Maya didn't understand how they could win then if she was under constant protection in her physical shell. Cindy was also lost in thought because she could not understand what to do in this situation. Sam guessed that in her physical state she doesn't feel anything and is protected by her energy. But what if she gets into a spiritual form? Will she also be inviolable? He put his hand to his face and began to use the technique, and his body was covered with an aura. She was actually hiding here to avoid them. Great move. In her heart, she told herself that this provoking trick was good, but by hiding here, it was completely in vain. As soon as Sam entered the spiritual space, he repeated her thoughts word for word. She was pleasantly surprised at how he got here, how he was able to get into her spiritual space. For him, this does not amount to any extra work, since there is nothing special about it. Yes, sometimes no one could break into her spiritual space, everything, as they say, is first. But he behaves too vainly, and in her space, he is not her opponent. He was surprised at her words, but obviously it didn't mean anything to him. She continued to say that here she is much stronger than in reality, and her defense is at its best. The hero noticed how pleased she became. With his impudent grin, he says that there will be no problems if he comes closer. She thought that this guy was always trying to trick her and ruin her mood, but he wouldn't succeed. Only now she saw much more complacency, as if a wild beast was standing in front of her, which would not let her win. Raising her hand, she began to read a spell to strengthen her protection and energy. A pinkish light began to flow from it, filling the entire space around. Rise began to warn him that he should run away, since under the influence of energy his consciousness could be damaged. But he didn't care about the words of the impudent beauty. He pointed his finger at her and as soon as he pulled the trigger, when a powerful shot occurred, it pierced through her defenses, leaving her no chance of winning. After the shot, the spiritual robes were torn from their hinges, her protection was destroyed, and she was completely defeated. She managed to accept reality with difficulty, but could not understand how he could defeat her in the spiritual space. He did not answer her questions. He simply reminded her of the conditions. If he approaches her, he can do whatever he wants. Ryes asked him what he would do with her. Her voice sounded abrupt, as if she was anticipating only one thing. With great reluctance, she nevertheless agreed. The hero began to approach her. He also abruptly reminded her that he just wanted to end everything, nothing more. There was a battle of contradictions in her head. She thought how he would do the same thing that he did with May and Cindy a minute earlier, that he would mock her. But he took her tighter and pressed her to his chest. All the rosy redness subsided, as if he had cured her of a fever. Suddenly, she began to tremble again. This redness on her cheeks made her cuter. She wanted to look at such a sight longer. Sam understood her like no one else, understood what it was like for her to look at those who were chatting nicely in the parks, and her protective aura did not allow her to even hug anyone. She just needed someone to hug her, just to warm her soul. She was grateful for this hug. She just needed to feel this warmth, the amplitude of temperatures. The fiery princess with an icy heart needed someone to melt it. But his hand spoiled all the beauty and romance of my story. Not a minute had passed, and this pervert was already reaching out for the charms. She was unhappy with this, but he explained everything by saying that he wanted to remove the protective aura. It became unclear to her how he was going to remove her aura, what he would do about it. Her feelings are a flower that needs warmth to bloom and no crust of ice, which is a protective aura, is needed. If the flower is enveloped in cold, it will be weak and the protection will hide it from danger. He just needs to remove this icy crust and warm the flower inside to free him from the cage of loneliness. The anticipation made her interested more exciting. She saw what was waiting for her in a couple of moments. With a snap of his finger, Sam conjured a bed in her mental space that would help in destroying the aura. Sam took off his robe in order to be fully prepared for the opening of the third seal. Her subconscious could not understand how he did this, how he was able to transform her spiritual space. He replied that he can do this because of her. She accepts his subconscious and the space changes. But for some reason, she felt everything as in reality. Everything as in reality, she said. He explained to her that they were in mental space. She could imagine everything like this, be it a dream. It's a dream, 
she says confidently. From now on, she believes it. Since everything was going so well, Sam realized he could begin completing the task. From pleasure, her hands grabbed the bedspread. Her hands shook from convulsions, as if she had been shocked by 220 volts. She held back a scream with difficulty. She felt everything as if she were in reality, as if in life she was losing her innocence. Lindsay suddenly appeared and wanted to say something to Sam. The goddess reminded him that she could use the new power to remove the aura and remove the protective energy. But why? What was she up to? Sam did not doubt her words and began the cleanse with his new learned ability from Lindsay. Ryaz didn't mind, since she could fly out of the cage covered with an ice crust. She managed to notice how the aura subsided, like a cold after raspberry tea. Sam is proud to say he was able to complete curing Rise of the curse that had plagued her for so long. Time passed. Morning came from last night and the birds sang outside the window, which served as an alarm clock in this world. Under the rays of the sun, with a heaviness in her head, the beautiful Rise raised her eyelids, feeling the summer breeze. She noticed how quickly everything brightened up around her. What new things our heroine felt. It felt like yesterday it definitely wasn't a dream, since that bastard Sam was lying next to her. Rise stretched her hand towards him to wake him up while he was sleeping so soundly and drooling. As soon as she touched his face, he started whining for her to let him rest and sleep for a while. She was surprised that her protective aura didn't work at all. Could last night really be real? And he was able to cure her curse. Getting out of bed, she decided to open the windows and the rays of the sun began to fill the room. She looked around at the beautiful view outside the window as birds flew and tree leaves were blown in the wind. One of the birds flew up to her and sat on her finger. Her protection did not prevent them from touching each other. Her eyes opened so wide with joy that she could not hide. As I said, her joy knew no bounds. Warmth filled her chest, like a newborn child who saw a chick on her hand. She left the room and met May in the corridor, who was walking without any purpose. The girl saw with what happiness in her eyes the mistress rise was running towards her. It seemed strange to her. At speed, she flew into her and hugged her tightly, wishing her good morning. This made her even more surprised. No one had seen Rise like this before, but here she was so happy. She began to throw herself at everyone she met. All the maids were hugged and each one said good morning. Maya still didn't understand anything, but she guessed that it was all Sam's fault who had brought her to this. After such thoughts, the culprit of the incident himself appeared behind him. He told her that she had lived for many years without the warmth of an embrace. Today was her holiday in which she would make up for lost time in one fell swoop. Rise didn't pay attention to what was in front of her nose. She ran to hug everyone in the heavenly villa. During the collision, the maid spilled water on her and began to worry about what she had done, for which she apologized to her. But Rise had no desire to scold the poor court servant for this. She was encouraged that her protection did not protect her from the water. While she was admiring, she didn't even notice how Sam pressed against her back and said that it would be difficult for her to get used to the new. These hugs began to excite her, but she asked to let her go, to stop pestering her. But he was not going to back down and reminded him that that night she gave him her word that he could do whatever he wanted with her. The maid collected all the water and asked them not to worry, since there was nothing strange in her mistress's joy. And here was that bird that was looking at the hero strangely, as if it was getting information. The bird looked with great interest, as if it were being controlled by an enemy. What was wrong with it? A strange bird took off into the sky and flew along the forest, rushing into nowhere. But not her. The bird flew up to Miss Garnet and began to chirp something to her. She was clearly listening with interest. The bird told her everything that she had seen, and that the fiery princess was no longer cursed by this monstrous power. From now on, the owner of the male brothel was not going to feel sorry for them. Meanwhile, in one of the rooms, Rise's sighs and gasps are heard. Our hero just can't get enough. She just woke up, and already in such a depraved position she is waiting for her saviour. He looked at her hungrily, saying that she had previously not let him near her. But now she was lying under him. She gave him a choice. He can get lost if he doesn't want to, or let him get on with the job in silence. The handsome man pressed her to him and began to speak tenderly in her ear. He will make up for her lost ten years of loneliness. When suddenly their pleasures were interrupted by Cindy, she apologised and wanted to tell them something. Out of shame, she was struck by lightning. She didn't understand whether it was really their tradition to enter a room without knocking. The warrior replied that half of the entire house could hear them, so why should they be embarrassed? This news left her completely unconscious. Shame and shame on our innocent Reza. Sam asked what else Cindy wanted to tell him, why she burst in so suddenly. She replied that those troublemakers from the Shawshank house, those same people from Miss Garnet, 
came and wanted to see the two of them. The hostess was indignant at how they dared to brazenly come to her villa and make their own rules here. Now she will definitely show them. The one-eyed warrior was not against Rise going to the showdown, but first she had better get dressed. These words embarrassed her greatly. She blushed all over but could not answer. At that time, there was a crowd of guards at the entrance to the villa who were clearly not here with good intentions. Garnet prepared herself for victory and ordered Reza to get out of here. Our fiery princess came out of the gate to meet them, accompanied by the clicking of her heels, reminding her that she had just recently spared her. Well, Lady Garnet hasn't learned anything since the last time, which means she came here to die. She decided to lay all her cards out that the owner of the villa no longer had a protective aura. Rise understood that she knew everything, but where she got such information from, no one could know. After thinking, she laughed at the girl and said that she could try to attack her, but this time no one would spare anyone. In the ranks, the girls have contradictions. Maybe Garnet's information is not true, or Rise is lying. She saw how her girls began to be afraid, and she decided to loudly declare that the girl was trying to scare them. If she could attack them, she would certainly do so and resolve the issue with them. The guards also attacked her. They did not even doubt her words, since Garnet promised to return all the men back. Reza felt terrible that the guards unquestioningly believed her and rushed at the beauty. Suddenly, Sam appeared from the shadows, blocking their path to the mistress of the villa, saying that Sam would not be able to attack them all, but could leave them without clothes. Garnet was angry with him and told him not to forget that men could never hurt a woman. Only he had no intention of fighting them, he was simply using his new ability on them. The opponents were already near him, but his attack with a protective aura completely took away the chance of victory. Their attack was completely repelled, and nothing was left of their clothes, just like last time they have no chance. With one wave of the hand, not a trace of their attack remained. Everyone dreams of such power to undress everyone around them. The naked warriors flew against the wind and screamed loudly in fear. This was the second time they were sent flying in the same place. This time no one is going to let them go, all because graceful ladies appeared above their heads, carrying a net with them. This network perfectly closed all the guards under it. They tried to escape, but something was wrong with it. The girl was very angry and gave her word that she could break the net. They'll see. But the network was not simple. It began to narrow and squeeze all the girls inside. They had no idea what was happening here, how this grid was getting smaller every time. Sam told them that the network is unusual. When they forcefully press on it, it narrows, and the more they force on it, the less space they have, so their only option is to give up and not fight. The network became narrower and narrower. The girls stopped resisting so as not to harm themselves. Garnet was furious. She said that she paid a lot of money for Sam. All the men were her property, so she orders the vile network to be removed. The guards were in a dire situation. They had nothing to say to them since they couldn't win anyway. But the heavenly man did not torment them. He snapped his finger, thereby removing the net from them. The girls flew out of the net in a swarm, screaming as if they had just been born. Sam didn't want to let them die. The whole world would suffer if such beauties died because of him. After these words, they realized that they were on the wrong side for which they were fighting, which made them make such sad faces. Garnet never stopped adding fuel to the fire. She pointed out to them that they were only capable of dirty tricks, and a man would never be able to defeat a woman. But one of them stood up and answered the impudent hostess that a woman was quite capable of injuring the same woman. These words scared her to the point of trembling in her knees. She wanted to know what she meant. One blow was enough to explain to her what her warrior meant. She was lying on the floor and asking if they really decided to make her a riot. Their duties were to look after the Shawshank house, not to hunt her servants. And besides, Miss Garnet had no way of taking into account their desire to fight for the boys. She began to intimidate them by saying that they would be in great trouble if she bullied their employer. Sam finally caught the perfect moment to take action. He asked the girls to stop temporarily, as he had come up with something to negotiate with them. Sam asked if they would mind if they taught their owner, Miss Garnet, a little lesson. The guards replied that there would be no problems for them, since they had long been thinking about leaving this employer. So what are they going to do after they stop working for Garnet? The girl replied that they would no longer be able to work as mercenaries due to the fact that they had now violated the employment contract. Since everything was so bad, he decided to give them an offer that he could hire them to protect the estate. Rise was pleasantly surprised that this guy specifically took the curse from her, then hired them to protect the estate. The warrior was also surprised, but said that it could cost them a lot. Hiring an army is not a cheap thing, but he guarantees them that he will pay them ten times more than Miss Garnet if they work well. In fact, Garnet promised them that the girls could spend the night with the men they captured. 
Cindy knew they would have to multiply everything tenfold. That means we'll have to spend ten nights with everyone, Maya said. In response to all of them, I am ready to go to hell so that such a wonderful place remains safe. Suddenly those same handsome men appeared and asked their old commander not to forget about them, since they too could help. He, like a real hero, like the savior of the world, like a heavenly man, decided not to involve the boys in such a serious task, since mercenaries, like wolves and tigers, are very dangerous in this matter. Warrior Cindy was puzzled by this, but is sure that this pervert just wants to have all the fun alone. Rise was afraid that he was unlikely to be able to cope with all of them in so many times. Maya stated that this is his only ability in which he will never lose to a woman. After a while, they gathered at the estate. He then asked them if their deal would work if he could serve them for ten days. The girls reminded him that during this test he could not leave the room or run away. And besides, he must survive by all means possible to complete the deal. She said that every three days she could take a break since he was a human and ten days might not be enough for him. This proposal seemed interesting to him, but how would they divide these days, something like installments? In any case, he and his sisters will use it for all ten days. He will not escape from this. He said that he did not have time to rest between this. He would do everything in these ten days. Since everything is so, the mercenary agreed to this with a strange grin on her face and was preparing to announce the beginning. The start was announced. She raised her hands and said that the girls could start rewarding. The girls could not find a place for themselves and began to take off their rags, showing off their charms. They began to argue. Everyone wanted to decide who would be first with him. The head reminded them that they would spend ten days with him. This time was quite enough for everyone. Only this cunning mercenary decided to be the first and attacked him while no one expected it. Standing outside were Maya and Rise, who heard all the shouting about how cunning their chapter was, why it had to be the first and the like. Rise had not yet stopped fearing that Sam would actually be able to cope with everyone. Cindy wasn't afraid for him because he was doing this not only for himself, but also for them, so they didn't have to worry. At this point, they can just wait and see what might happen to him. Three days passed. Maya carefully tried to listen to what was happening inside the room. She didn't hear anything. It seemed strange to her since earlier there had been constant screams. When suddenly Cindy came up to her and touched her, greeting her, which scared her so much. Rise was also with her. The warrior offered to go inside since everyone was so worried about their beloved Sam. Maya was embarrassed and thought that it was better for them not to go there since it was a bad idea. The fiery princess said that she herself was also very worried about the hero. Her heart was not at peace. She finally reached out to the door to push it open. The bandit queen looked around inside and wanted to see Sam, hoping he was okay. Inside there were a bunch of bodies of mercenaries lying like corpses unable to move. And here comes Sam, who was at the full peak of his strength, saying that, on the contrary, these guards were not enough to serve him. They could barely contain their delight. Maya wanted to say something, and her emotions were running wild. Rise and May walked towards the bed, and Cindy took a moment to push them towards him. The girls flew into Sam's arms, and behind them stood Cindy, pleased with herself. The handsome man began to wonder why they were here. What was the matter? What brought them here? The former queen explained that they thought something had happened to him, but since everything was fine, they were leaving. Sam was already getting bored, and they could make a campaign for him, so they better not leave. Cindy began happily taking off Rise's clothes in order to be ready for what was to come. Sam, however, gave the basic phrase that wild flowers will never be more fragrant than domestic ones. Cindy had said the same thing earlier. A lot of time passed. The day came when everything was supposed to end, and at that time a maid approached the room. She wanted to bring food. When she opened the door, a terrible hand reached out, asking what happened and with whom. The girl was very frightened by this. She already thought that she had fallen into a nightmare and someone would have pinched her. This monster turned out to be a completely exhausted Sam, who completely dried out while completing the deal. The maid was so scared that drops of sweat were already falling from her like Swarovski rhinestones from Kim's dress. His skinny arm reached towards the food tray to eat all he could. Then he began to greedily gobble up all the cooking she had brought. She would remember this day for a long time. The hero ate everything with such pleasure that there was no tray left. After all, he had spent too much energy. It must be restored. Rise approached him and told him to make a decoction of ginseng, deer antlers and tiger penises, all of which would give him a lot of energy. Maya and Cindy came after her, who with their chests wide open began to tell how he would suffer again. Suddenly a frightened beauty ran up to them shouting that everything was bad. She asked with great interest what had happened there while she was busy. She said that they had guests in the villa. Rees replied that there was nothing special about it. She would immediately meet the guests. But everything is not so simple, 
the guests were not looking for Master Rise. They wanted handsome Sam. Maya was almost not surprised and suggested that Sam probably had a new fan who was running after the beauty of her idol. Cindy wanted to teach her pursuer a lesson, since she had not fought with anyone for a long time. Sam decided to calm the girls down and ask them to go to his guest. He was wondering who was looking for him. Rise and Sam sat down in the living room and formally decided to welcome the guest, saying that she could speak. The Fire Princess initially asked the guest what she wanted, where she was from, and what her name was. She did not introduce herself, but said that she was from the House of Lightning. Her master wanted to talk to Mr. Sam. Ogonyok calmly asked, thereby pressing on her, what her master's name was. She stated that Miss Rise should know her owner well. Her name was Ding Dong. This name made the hero laugh very much. In part, he even considered it a little cute. Rise explained to him that this girl with a funny name is the last keeper of the seal. This greatly frightened him. The girl said that her master personally wanted to invite him to the banquet to meet him in person. The fire princess said that the banquet could be very dangerous and it was better for Sam to stay here. The girl asked the lady not to worry about him. If Master Ding Dong wanted to kill him, then she would have had enough strength to do it long ago. The guy said that he himself is not afraid of anything, but he doesn't want to move his ass. If the master wants, let him come here personally. His words greatly irritated the messenger, since she would not allow anyone to speak so badly about Ding Dong. She pointed her fists at him and asked him not to blame her for acting so arrogant. There was not a drop of fear on his face. He looked death into his eye sockets, but it never reached him. As soon as the student approached Sam, Cindy's halberd appeared out of nowhere. Maya came for her, and together they stopped the crazy fan of Master Ding Dong. The warrior said that she should not have attacked the master under their noses. Maya added that a hundred years would not be enough for her to achieve the same strength as theirs. She was not happy that the three great masters took the side of a man. This is a real shame for women. Cindy told her threateningly that she would only understand them when she felt herself in the shoes of these pathetic men. Sam asked them to be calm, to say that her master could come with him in person, but he himself would not go anywhere. She took a strange seal in her hand and began to read a spell to activate it. This seal was sent to her master Ding Dong and burned in her hands. The letter slowly smoldered, and the student said that Ding Dong agreed to a meeting, and they could wait for her for three hours. Rise asked how her teacher could be here in three hours when her home was thousands of miles away. The lady replied that with her strength it is impossible, but Ding Dong's cultivation is at the level of royal transformation, and this is head and shoulders above her. The handsome man was already completely desperate, since he had to sit here for three more hours. The rest could rest, and he would wait. Three hours have passed, not a cloud in the sky. Everything is still clear, but it's nice to look at these hills and peaks against a blue background. While he was waiting for Mrs. Ding Dong, he had already fallen asleep. Only she did not come to them for a personal meeting. But the messenger stood all this time and thought about the charm this guy exudes. Her interest prompted her to find out how much power this aura that oozes from him had. She put all her strength into the blow, but the terrifying power completely stopped her pressure. After repelling the damage, all her clothes were torn to shreds. Still, this power is amazing. Sam knew that she would try to attack him and put up a barrier just in case. Then he began to call her action very bad, since she attacked without warning. But he was not too angry, on the contrary. He offered her a cape so that she could put it on, since her master might not understand what was happening here. Suddenly, after his words, lightning struck the estate in the middle of a clear sky. This lightning was too sudden. Had the master already come to him, a beautiful woman with perfect shape appeared in front of them. Her curves and beautiful face, and she was also strong. In the distance, she saw a student who was lying all disheveled under this guy's cloak. She did not like this view. She did not understand what had become of her messenger, had she really come at the wrong time. The girl began to apologize to her master and say that it was not her fault, but that she did not understand everything correctly. Out of great excitement, she began to rise to her feet but began to fall. She came across Sam's arm, on whom she fell right on the bells. From hitting the steel balls, her head had to endure a lot of pain, which is what she complains about. Sam tried to hold back tears from the terrible pain, but asked her to get dressed first. The student stood up and began to explain herself for putting the master in an uncomfortable position. Ding Dong understood what power this guy could have. Otherwise, he would not have been able to defeat the three masters and remove their seals. But she herself would not allow him to take possession of her. The hero explained everything to her by saying that he had his own tricks to accomplish his goal, and he was used to being friends with girls and would ask her to help remove the seal. This interested her, but what would happen if she did not understand him and refused to cooperate? He doesn't see any problems in this, 
just as he himself can achieve cooperation, even if she doesn't agree. But she shouldn't complain about his rudeness later if he was so cruel to her. He began to create his first attack on her in order to remove all her clothes now. But this speed was surpassed by her. She was much faster and faster than the pervert. He couldn't believe his eyes that she was so easily evading every attack. So it wouldn't be that simple. Ding Dong analyzed him completely and revealed the secret of how he defeated the bandit Queen Mei, who was simply stripped in front of everyone. As soon as she realized his full power, she decided to pull off her already revealing dress to deprive him of his chance to win. She showed him all the charms with the words that he had previously seen a lot of women. He just had to say that she was taller than all of them. He no longer listened to her. His head was foggy. His drool was flowing like a waterfall. He was delighted with her beauty. Ding Dong noticed how he looked at her every curve, saying that she saw his flowing drool and asked her to surrender in order to give him more pleasure later. His face filled with redness that could not go away, and he was ready to voluntarily surrender to her beauty. The girls also felt strange. Cindy wanted to help the handsome guy, but Maya told her not to do anything. Meanwhile, Ding Dong began to attack with her beauty, charm, and charisma. But you can't take our handsome guy like that. He will never fall for a woman's body, especially in such a place. Immediately after this, he separated her soul from her body in order to fight on equal terms. The girls stopped worrying about him. They liked the way he outwitted her. The beauty was delighted that this guy did not fall for her charm and behaved so strangely. He asked her if she was joking that he would fall for her dirty tricks. Saying all this, he separated his soul. Again, everything became clear to her. He cannot hurt a woman in the physical body, but in the spiritual body, he is quite capable of this. This is precisely why he uses this ability, and this is how he defeated the reckless Cindy. He should not have delayed with her. For this very reason, he asks her to worry about herself and not about others. His blow hit her in the chest, but it had no effect. The girl did not seem to feel its power. In one fell swoop, his strength was reduced to zero, and before he could understand anything, he realized that there was no chance to defeat her. A drop of fear ran down his cheek. He felt the anticipation of what would be waiting for him in a moment. She had already heard about this method of winning over girls, so she was prepared for it in advance. Ding Dong threw him away and shouted that he had better return to his body. He should not have expected that his soul could be returned to his body on their own. She is much stronger than any idiots who cannot train physical strength, since it is useless against girls, and in a spiritual state she surpasses even him. The Lightning Princess decided to attack him with her instant strike. But Sam was ready for this and put up an energy barrier to repel the blow. The attack of terrifying power almost destroyed the protective aura that was barely holding on and protecting him. He was glad that he was able to defend himself against the monstrous attack of this lightning monster. Ding Dong was pleasantly surprised by this, but she considered it weak since he showed the last ace up his sleeve. With one wave of her hand, she destroyed the barrier so that it shattered into tiny pieces. The game was over. She grabbed him by the neck, lifted him up and told him to finally give up. In response, he only laughed and realized that even a protective aura could be destroyed by monstrous force. Because of his fault, three seals were broken. Worldwide respect for girls was weakened, which gave rise to many problems, and she is just here to solve them. The girls came through the door, clearly wanting to stop the cruel master Ding Dong. Maya and Cindy unanimously asked the girl to let the guy go, otherwise she might be in trouble. She didn't want to listen to them at all, since they had lost their seals. And with them, they lost a significant part of their power. The beauty arrogantly explained to them that they should not be so confident in themselves when they are no match for her. Right after that, she didn't want to see them. Using the wavy hand technique, she was going to throw everyone away. The attack was too unexpected, thereby sending them flying far, far away. The beautiful Rise entered the room and said that it was not nice to conduct such actions on her estate. She didn't know why they all took his side, why they liked this man. Wasn't the world better where women were taller than men? Lying on the floor, he explained that the equality of women and men, yin and yang, gives rise to justice, for which he fights. The Fire Princess was very pleased to hear this, but his little tricks would not work. Now he decided not to waste his time to agree that if someone wins, then the loser will fulfill any wish. She was especially interested in this, since she could make him a slave, and he would lose anyway. Only he had one more trick left, which in his opinion would definitely work. The living room was filled with a cloud of smoke, which caused the lady's dress to fly in different directions. She confidently stated that no trick would work on her. And here comes a new attack. Her confidence has disappeared somewhere, and for good reason, the blow looks very dangerous. 
It's incredible that Sam was able to harm the woman. What did he do? How did Ding Dong get injured? She couldn't stop herself. With every hit she hit the ground, she seemed to fly further. Wiping the abrasions on her cheeks, she tried to understand how he managed to do this. It occurred to him that in the body of a man, he could not harm a woman, but what would happen if he himself became one? And this was the result. The stunt brought the bandit many conflicting emotions. She thought that all his tricks were sophisticated, but this time he surpassed himself. Cindy is shocked by this. It was too much for the warrior when her favorite handsome man became a girl. Ding Dong herself recognized Sam as a strong opponent, and he would even be able to entertain her, and she would have a lot of fun. Two opposites meet, a fighter for justice and a warrior for the strength of women, both fighting for their foundations. Rise knew that the clash between the strongest man and the strongest girl would be very exciting. In fact, everything looked like the owner of the villa said. Each collision released a ton of energy. Under their feet, the ground was covered with a shining light, as if two gods had collided. Only something more interesting was waiting for Sam further on, but more on that later. Ding Dong was overcome with the desire to defeat him, as she was interested in him and wanted to see more from him. He said that he would show her much more, that he would make her beg for mercy after his victory. Sam began to throw a lot of punches. In just a couple of moments, a hundred fists flashed in front of Ding Dong's face. There is no way this attack would work for her. She confirms this with her words and flawless parries. Only the hero still had some trump cards up his sleeve, which he was not going to spend much of his time on. The next attack went under the skirt of the arrogant master Ding Dong, who was surprised by the dirty trick. She is very worried about what the scoundrel was going to do to her, while she did not expect this at all. He moved closer to her, all because she was weakened and the attack was not completed. Sam reached her hand deeper and began to massage it diligently to achieve greater effect. The effect was not long in coming. Her whole body was shaking in convulsions, as if there would soon be an eruption. Removing his fingers, he said that he was still able to find a weak spot even in such an unapproachable girl as Ding Dong. Only she was not at all happy with the way he was fighting and grabbed him by the hair, which Sam didn't like. She was outraged that he was acting like a jerk, so she wouldn't be able to fight, but she also had no right to lose. In response, the handsome man grabbed the lightning-fast princess by the hair just as she grabbed him. The fight became like a quarrel between children in a sandbox. They behaved like children. Together they continued to fight, but from the outside it looks like the girls are fooling around. Maya asked, and Rise calls this the battle of the strongest and the strongest. She had nothing to answer. Cindy was also disappointed, but it seemed to her that this is what normal girl fights should look like. They still didn't try to stop, as if they themselves didn't want to stop this horror. Sam thought only about one thing, how beautiful she is, and that's why he gives her the opportunity to use his services if she asks nicely. She looked forward to what would be waiting for her, but asked how he would treat her now. Instead of answering, he kissed her passionately, so much so that she began to forget herself, lying on the floor. The student was worried about the master, all because she saw who took her first kiss. She wanted to intervene in the battle, but Cindy stopped her due to the fact that this is a face-to-face -face fight and no one has the right to interfere. Reza felt uncomfortable watching how her beloved Sam wanted a real battle, but brought it all to one. Maya was not surprised at all, as if she knew him like the back of her hand, as if this was his fighting style. He wondered why she didn't resist him, did she really like it that way? She replied that in this position, she was not able to use her physical strength. Now she certainly could not do anything. Everything led to the fact that she must give up, says Sam in female form. She didn't break down for long and agreed that with his dirty tricks, he was able to defeat her. How quickly she accepted defeat surprised him greatly as she was very persistent in protecting her seal. The agreement of defeat made her agree to lose her seal, but she wanted to know how he would do it. Here he is surprised by all the girls, since none of them know that they will have to lose their virginity in order to remove the seal. To remove the seal, there is only one way out, to lose innocence, but she realized this only now. As soon as she understood everything, the handsome man decided to show her his hidden weapon, which only girls know about. She was shocked by this sight, as she did not understand whether he was a man or a woman. It doesn't matter to him what gender he is. In any case, he can deprive everyone around him of the innocence and she, our beloved Ding Dong, will help him in removing the last seal. He asks her to be prepared for anything. With him, you never know what to expect. The student ran out to him and asked him not to touch the teacher so that she could accept the punishment instead. Shame filled her, but she tried to stop the heiress from accepting the terms of defeat. The envoy wanted to repay the master for teaching her everything to finally pay off her endless debt. 
Cindy noticed the love between these two like that between a devoted teacher and servant. Maya saw this as they wanted to get Sam in any way possible. Here he and only he decides, the children do not choose anything, but the adult will choose both. This amazed the heroines, since both will get what they so want from him. He threw them on the bed in the most comfortable position to bring both of them to ecstasy. Miss Ding Dong asked the student to step back and bear the pain first. The messenger, who wanted to take Sam first, tried to convey the same thing. He was tired of listening to them, and decided that having fun with the two of them would be enough for everyone. This is difficult to imagine even in the wildest fantasies, since they do not believe that he can cope with two at once. He replied that he showed them the ability of transformation, and with it, everything is possible and even more. Their faces showed grimaces of fear and surprise, but really, this is too much. No one could wait for the start. Patience was running out. Sam confidently stated that he was on his way. They should be prepared for anything. The first to go was Ding Dong, who caught a complete Ding Dong. Her heart began to beat faster, and her face made a face of pleasure. The fourth seal was broken. A beam of light rushed out. This was the last beacon. The task must be completed. The energy beam rose higher and higher, like lightning in the middle of a clear sky. Maya was one of the first to see this lighthouse, which meant the last breaking of the seal. The rest of the girls were waiting to see what would happen after this. The fiery princess felt something strange. Here comes Lindsay. Her eternal sleep in chains has ended. The hero had to save her. The shackles from her hands fell apart. The moment had come when it was necessary to restore the balance of women and men. She was certainly glad that the heavenly man was able to remove the final seal. A full hour passed. Sam finished with the girls. He managed to complete his last mission. But something haunts him. He removed all the seals, but there was no notification about the completion of the task. Suddenly, Maya, who was frightened by something strange, screamed, What happened? This is how restoring balance works. In the divine space, Sam's avatar passionately kissed Maggie. Siri was nearby but looked tired, which bothered her as this illness was very strange. This avatar was gathering energy to fight a very powerful enemy as the main character fought the final boss. Maggie is shocked by these avatar abilities. The energy is also some kind of powerful enemy. The little sister didn't like that they were just a supply of energy for Sam. She wanted to fight herself. But the avatar reported that he only needed energy. The enemy was very dangerous, deadly. Meanwhile, in the world with Sam, Everything is not so calm. They should not expect a balance between a man and a woman. The main enemy turned out to be the one who helped them almost from the very beginning. Lindsay returned to him with new strength. She didn't just ask to destroy all the seals. She wanted to torture the most powerful and charismatic guy in the universe. He tried to attack her, but she easily pierced him with her blade. But he laughed at her, because soon more copies of himself would come to him to replenish his strength. In fact, he never fights alone, he said proudly drawing the sword from his chest. After the blood began to flow like a stream, he says that he will easily recover from each of her attacks. Goddess Yin, that's her name now, she knew that he crushed his soul to replenish himself with energy. He expected this from her. As it turned out, the most serious battle would be the battle of Yin and Yang, Lindsay and Sam. We already had suspicions about this girl. Yin was ready to fight him until his avatars ran out and his girls tired of giving energy. Since everything is so, then he is ready to look at all this although he is sure that everything will work out for him. Geneva and Irina were swimming on the beach when Siri suddenly called them, a voice that was painfully familiar. It was she who wanted to say that Sam needed help. They could follow her. Irina believed her and said that she would go soon, and finally she praised her swimsuit as it was very beautiful. It made her feel shy, but she was already accustomed to wearing it, just like they were on the beach. The beauties from the third task were sitting in one gazebo. They decided to hide there from the scorching sun. By the way, Excitement and love for big wins are alien to them. They just played cards, probably poker. Samantha looked at her cards with great pleasure as she hoped to win big, when suddenly she was stopped by the feminine hand of Maggie, who came to announce that Sam needed help. And so it turned out, she told her to finish the game and send for her. The hero was waiting for them in a complete ass of trouble. The sisters began to worry about the boy as soon as they heard about the bad news. Professor Lisa also jumped up to help her favorite student in trouble. Only Samantha was not happy that she was interrupted at such a good moment to win once. Meanwhile, with sweat and blood, Sam tries to win victory against an incredibly powerful enemy, this time a real god. He was already at his limit. Yin was incredibly strong. There was too much difference between them. The girl understood well that his trick was becoming not as useful as it had been before. But Sam still has a few tricks up his sleeve. He has a chance to win in this game. A crowd of beauties lined up at a lonely tent waiting for their turn, and their patience was running out. 
Suddenly, more clones arrived and came to their aid. They came here to speed up the replenishment of energy, so they should come closer. The devil was pleasantly surprised by the number of new copies. It could turn everything into chaos, she said. They asked her to stop talking nonsense and start extracting incredibly valuable energy for them. As he fought, he realized that all the clones were now gathering energy. He was grateful for their help. A certain magic appeared around him. He began to hope that he would not lose this ideal opportunity to win. Yin said that he can stop dreaming, since she is a true god in this world, even if she cannot deal with him, he still cannot defeat her. Thanks to her, he was able to come up with a way that didn't require defeating her. Pretending to be a ghost won't give him the chance to win, and he can't believe it all the time. He decided to create a protective barrier to save his life for a while. Maya did not understand what he was going to do. Immediately after her question, he grabbed her tightly and kissed her passionately. He asked them not to waste time with this and to come to him so that he would also kiss them. Yin was very pleased with herself, since she could easily win here, which is precisely the reason why she says that they can prolong the pleasure. Only she did not expect that the same seal that hid her in the place of the seal would appear on her leg. She was very surprised by what happened. Her seal returned to her. How did he do it? And he was able to understand that he could not only remove the seals, but also apply them to the evil goddess. She didn't like this and decided to attack his protective aura. He asked them to be quick, as the shield could save them from this monster for a while. Then they approached him and began to squeeze him tightly, beginning to kiss him to death. The first was Cindy, who began to suck the hero's lips with particular intensity. Rise did not go far from her partner, and she enjoyed this kiss very much. The girl continued to attack them, but this barrier did not give in to her, as if she became weaker with every kiss. Then she had to caress Ding Dong, while at the same time telling Yin that she would not be able to defeat him. They intertwined their tongues. This kiss was filled with sincerity that would imprison the damn Lindsay forever in chains. Bracelets began to appear on her arms, holding back her incredible strength. Steel enveloped her legs, she could not do anything about it. Sam almost completely imprisoned her in chains. The seals began to appear one by one, and her students imprisoned her back in chains. The last seal gave birth to the same column of energy and light, that appeared only when the seal was removed. It seems that she began to remember how she was chained for the first time, when she lost all her strength and wandered on a stone pillar bound in chains and seals. She saw a nightmare. Behind her was the very pillar that she did not want to see, since she could not be sealed again. Yin was ready to listen to him, but he could not leave her here or imprison her in chains, since she could be rescued from here. At that moment, she was ready for anything. She was ready to leave the world, just not to be sealed. Sam was ready to take her to a place she didn't even dare think about. A familiar circle appeared under her feet, leading to divine space, the very place for an evil goddess. The girl couldn't believe her eyes. There was a circle of movement under her feet. She was sent to the system space mansion, where she would not be so bored living. She was sent straight to her new room, straight to the bed. What awaited her? Yin looked around, trying to realize where the handsome man had sent her. And in this place, Sam's clones were waiting for her, who began to punish the bad goddess. Her screams could be heard throughout the entire estate that she did not want any punishment. He completed this mission after the imprisonment of the goddess Yin. The balance of men and women was restored, and he received a reward. But he did not understand that this was all. Then a fairy suddenly appeared and congratulated him on completing such a difficult task. She didn't even expect such a result from him, and he remembered her that she had deliberately chosen charisma instead of strength for him, and remembered the good news. He made an idiot face and began asking questions about what kind of good news awaited him. He completed this test perfectly and received the perfect reward. He can completely recreate the picture book. However, he realized that if he pressed the button, all his progress would disappear and he could return to reality. It looked tempting, but he didn't fall for it and destroyed the remote control so that she would never bring it to him again. The fairy was scared and did not understand why he did this with the button if he could return. He replied that this remote is like plugins. He values progress, not results. Why would he need a complete illustrated book when he could spend time creating it? However, there are still many beauties in other worlds who are waiting for him to win and capture their hearts. And how can he leave these beauties? Cindy and Maya, gorgeous girls who deserve a lot. What about the funny name Ding Dong and the fiery princess Rise? He has so many memories with everyone. However, she didn't understand that he was either a pervert or had ideal life principles but he would still receive the reward that she was holding in her hands. This is the first time he sees such a thing. What is this strange cube in his hands? asked the handsome man. 
It was a box with a legendary enhancement, a hypnotizing eye. With its help, with one glance, the victim falls under the control of the ruler. He decided to use his new skills on someone he met along the way. Now he decided to go to the beach to find someone in the gazebo. This time he was lucky to meet Samantha, who was cleaning up, and at the same time surprised Sam by asking him whether this body was real. This would be just right for him to use a spell on her. His eyes shone, it reminds me of someone. To the point, he ordered her to show her belly while she was talking to him. Not even a second had passed before she stopped reproaching him for anything and lifted her shirt. And she spoke as Sam ordered her, only she reminded him to keep the clones in line. Otherwise, they would cause chaos here. He noticed how she listened to him without any complaints and carried out the order, a strong thing. But suddenly the behavior of Sam, who was frozen in thought, seemed strange to her. It was then that he fulfilled Samantha's requests, returning all the clones to his body. Incredible energy began to return to him. This force filled him to the bottom. He might not be able to stand it. He received 2,000 points in total for returning all the clones. His body became very heavy. Samantha began to worry a lot about him. Deep down, he realized that often this power could not be used. Sweat dripping down his tired face, he asked her to help him rest. After a while, the hero found himself on his estate, where he rested after recharging. He only now managed to understand that he had been sleeping all this time. This skill made his body many times heavier. Two lovely girls met him during his sleep. They were clearly worried about him. One even helped him with her healing techniques. He laughed at this situation because he didn't have time to wake up, and they were already right there. But no one wanted to let him go, so they had to test him for clones in his body for his safety. He understood what they were hinting at. For this reason, he concluded that they behave like wild cats, which means he will behave the same with them. Some time has passed, and the whole room is filled with women's voices. The sound is completely enveloping. How many notes are in their voice, but with it they are not in tune. Samantha was immensely happy that everything was fine with the hero, and besides, he was so energetic. She didn't have time to notice how her friend fell asleep. Was she really that tired to death? He had long since distracted himself from his girlfriend and turned all his attention to the beautiful Samantha. After these words, they kissed so passionately that drops of sweat flowed down their cheeks from the internal heat. Some time passed and Sam was done with them in the bedroom. He finally at least opened the curtain. In between, he thought that after the new power, he became much more powerful, since he could cope with two too easily. Afterwards, he said that he would be in the hot springs. If she wanted, she could take revenge on him. At the hot springs, he wanted to spend time alone, singing melodious music. The moment of calm was interrupted by Freya, who thought Sam looked too happy. Anya was also with her, who wanted to do new stretching exercises with him. But the former brothel owner was afraid that he wanted to avoid and not see them. He replied that this could not be, since he was always happy to see them. He just went out to swim. The girls did not hesitate for long, thereby pulling off the towels from themselves. They entered the water. As soon as they got closer, they smelled a terribly strong masculine smell of sweat from Sam. Miss Freya offered to wash him, and Sam wanted to spend time with them after washing. Freya noticed his love for music and hustled to make his life better. He was grateful to her for that. But Anya didn't understand why. In front of two beauties, he was talking about other girls. It was better to let him look at them. The music lover thought that she was absolutely right, but they should lower the tone of their voice, since there were many other people in the bath besides them. Not far away, my friend Siri and Irina were swimming and chatting about something interesting, and they discussed how good the open-air hot springs are. This water, the ideal temperature, there is nothing better. Irina decided to have fun with her friend and began splashing water on her, which her younger sister did not like. Behind her, she suddenly heard the bushes moving and also rustling so strangely. Irina began to get scared by these strange outbursts. Then Siri asked who was there in other sources. Sam and Freya appeared there. The second one was hard to notice, but the hero stood at his full height and was surprised that they were swimming there. She said that she and Irina were here. They had been having fun here for a long time. He was surprised by how long they were swimming here. Only from the splashes of water, he almost didn't hear them. He was finally done with them, just as he was about to start with Siri and Irina. During this time, night has already fallen on the estate, and here it looks even stranger than just unusual. This time, he completed all his business. After all, two days passed. He improved the circles around him, dressed decently, and the hero can no longer tolerate meeting new beauties whom the world has never seen. The fairy noted that the child inside him was getting older and older. She raised her hand high and said that they could start a new level, love in all worlds. Start up, the fairy shouted loudly then began a new journey for our beloved hero. 